Yup. So what's up guys? This is your favorite channel. Wabi Sabi Fusion here. Today we are gonna see. What if Naruto heir of Ravenclaw? So let's move on to the video. It was a beautiful morning in Konoha. The merchants were setting their goods up so people could purchase. The Anbu were making their patrols, and Junin were walking to receive missions from the Sandame. Everything was peaceful until a shout was heard across the village. Some of the ninjas knew that somebody had just been pranked by their resident prank master and Jinchuriki. Others just didn't care and kept on doing their daily activities. Eleven years old Uzumaki Naruto was sleeping in his little apartment, dreaming about ramen and becoming Hokage when he heard something hitting his window, with great reluctance he got up to see a beautiful eagle owl pecking at his window waiting for Naruto to open it so he could deliver his package. Naruto confused by the bird decided to open and see what happened. Finally the owl hopped to his bed and extended his talon where Naruto saw an envelope with a seal he didn't recognize. He took it and saw the owl staring intently at him like expecting payment when a tiny mouse streaked by and he had jumped for it grabbing it in its sharp talons while hooting and landing in his bed again now enjoying breakfast, not knowing what to do after watching the owl kill and eat the mouse he stretched his arm and saw it fly and land on his arm and cooed a bit when Naruto stroked its wings and walked out of his apartment and decided to ask his, Gigi, what was going on. Here is Serutobi, also known as, the Sandame, the Professor, and, Shinobi no Kami, was battling the enemy of every leader the dreaded paperwork while cursing the Yandaimi for not letting him seal the Kiyubi no Kitsune in Naruto or not even telling him how to beat paperwork, all the time wishing something happened to distract him from it. While he was thinking this Naruto had arrived and asked to see his, Gigi, the secretary wanting nothing to do with the, demon brat, told him to just go in and to stop bothering her, Naruto just thanked her with a foxy grin and went to knock on the door, when he heard, oh thanks Kami for the interruption come in, he stifled a laugh and went in, Gigi look at this bird in my arm. He said with a smile and pointing towards the eagle owl, the Sandame was chuckling while he saw the happy expression in his grandson's face when he took a good look at the bird Naruto had with him, Naruto-kun that is an eagle owl, how did you got hold of one they are very rare here in the elemental nations, he asked trying to remember when was the last time he saw one. Well this morning he was standing in my windowsill and pecking to get into my room, and had this letter attached to his leg so I let him in, took the letter and came here to ask about it, Naruto told the Hokage while he stroked the owl's feather with care. Hiruzen was speechless with the story he just heard and asked to see the letter he got from the owl, when he opened it he started to read what it said. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Headmaster, Albus Dumbledore, Order of Merlin, First Class, Grand Sorcerer, Chief, Warlock, Supreme Mugwump, International Confed, of Wizards. Dear Mr. Uzumaki, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on the 1st of September. We await your owl by no later than the 31st of July. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall Deputy Headmistress. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Uniform. First year students will require, 1. Three sets of plain work robes, black. 2. One plain pointed hat, black, for day wear 3. One pair of protective gloves, dragon hide or similar. 4. One winter cloak, black, with silver fastenings. Please note that all pupils' clothes should carry name tags. Course books all students should have a copy of each of the following. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1, by Miranda Goshawk. A History of Magic by Bethilda Bagshot Magical Theory by Adelbert Waffling. A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch. 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Felita Spore. Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt's Commander. The Dark Forces. A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. Other Equipment 1 Wand 1 Cauldron, Pewter, Standard Size 2. 1 Set Glass or Crystal Files 1 Telescope 1 Set Brass Scales. Students may also bring, if they desire, an owl or a cat or a toad. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed their own broomstick. Yours sincerely, Lucinda Thompsonical Pocus Chief Attendant of Witchcraft Provisions. When the Sandame finished reading what the letter said he started to remember a certain red-headed that barged in the same way Naruto did with the same letter several years ago. Okashina your son already got his letter for Hogwarts and I think it would be for the better if we're to go so he could actually make some friends he thought while Naruto kept on petting the eagle owl that was preening under his care. Well Naruto-kun this is an acceptance letter for a school of witchcraft and wizard. You are what is known as a wizard, and you must attend this school so you can learn how to control your magic, and let me tell you a little secret, your mother was a witch, if I remember correctly she was excellent with what is called potions and charms, that is all I will tell you for now if you want to know more about her you could accept to go to this school and I will tell you more, and the professors there could tell you even more about her. Hiruzen told Naruto who was now bouncing of the walls with happiness and saying, yes 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 I'll go. He couldn't help but chuckle at the blonde, hook, line and sinker now he will go and be able to have a decent school without being held back by the teachers, but I will have to tell him about his tenant which is a small price compared to what he will get from that school, he thought and smiled while Naruto scribbled a thank you note saying he would be there but he would need a guide to get his school supplies and send his new friend away with the note. A week had come and gone since Naruto learned he was a wizard and also that he was the Jinchuriki of the Kiyubi no Kitsune. And he couldn't believe that the Yandaimi trusted him to carry such power, he made a promise to himself that day that he would become a great wizard and ninja, 
The Sandame was happy to see Naruto smile the way he did that day and prepared several scrolls so when he came back from his first year of school he could take the academy test to become a genin so he could keep his promise. That was a week ago and here he was dressing more casually so he would look less out of place in London. Two days after Naruto sent his reply they got another letter saying that he would be picked up at the Hokage Tower so he could buy his materials and uniforms. So here they were waiting for this McGonagall person. The Sandame was telling Naruto that he was expected to be in his best behavior today and when he left for school when they heard a pop sound when they turned to look they were treated to a rather strange sight a strict looking woman that was in her late 50s with her black hair in a tight bun with a rather odd looking dress robe and holding a stick in her hand, she made a rather imponent presence towards Naruto having felt his Gigi exude the same aura this woman was. Minerva was expecting something different after receiving word from Kashina's son and Lily's godson, not a blonde boy dressed in an orange jumpsuit looking like he wanted to shout at her entrance but was trying to stay in line from what she heard from the older person in the room. Good morning my name is Minerva McGonagall and I'll be taking you to Diagon Alley today so you can get your school supplies we have little time because we have to pick another student and her parents so if you both please step closer we can get ready to leave, she said all the while giving Naruto a questioning look to see if he would start asking her questions like his mother did when she came to pick her up for her first ever trip to Diagon Alley. When he didn't she was relieved but figured he would start asking questions later, Ambu, I'll be going with Naruto please tell Shikaku that I want him to take care of everything. Professor McGonagall just heard a set of, hi Sandame Sama, but she never saw anybody else in the room. She grabbed the portkey she brought, okay Naruto, here is an. Please grab onto the portkey so we can go, she said when Naruto just stared at her like she was crazy for asking him to touch an old dusty boot after a look from the sandame he complied and felt like he was being sucked through a small pipe when his feet touched ground and his face ate dirt where he groaned and rolled over when he saw a pair of shinny shoes he lifted his head to see a bushy haired brunette staring at him with a calculating gaze. He sheepishly laughed and got up, um, hi my name is Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto and yours, he said while dusting himself a little and offered her his hand. When Hermione heard that her parents and her would be accompanied by another future student she didn't know how to react so she waited, when they arrived she saw Professor McGonagall and an old man, hearing a groan from behind the two she saw a boy her age with blonde hair and three whisker marks on his face she stepped to take a closer look when he got up and introduced himself as Naruto. I'm Hermione Granger nice to meet you, she said shaking his hand, meanwhile Hiruzen walked up to Hermione's parents and introduced himself to them, Professor McGonagall cleared her throat and told them that if they were ready they could leave right now for Diagon Alley when she received a nod from everybody she repeated the process she did in the Hokage's office. When they arrived at the leaky cauldron Naruto couldn't help it and shouted. What the hell is that old man? It looks like an abandoned building why would she brings us here? He asked loudly when McGonagall told him to trust her and she entered the pub everybody followed her, Naruto growling a bit but paying attention to his surroundings like he was taught in the academy, Hermione looking curiously at everything. When they entered the back of the pub she told them to watch closely cause there would be times when they would have to come alone and tap a brick that was three up and two across from the dustbin, when she did the bricks started to separate creating an archway, when it finished she turned around to look at Naruto and told him like she told his mother many years before, never take everything to face value young one, things might surprise you if you look underneath the underneath. Naruto and Hermione were speechless at what they saw, okay first stop Gringotts wizarding bank, now Naruto Hermione I want you to promise me you will be in your best behavior and will be polite to the goblins. McGonagall told them that Gringotts was run by goblins and were a proud race of warriors. Naruto remember what we talked in my office, the Sandame said in what Naruto came to call, Hokage takes no shit, mode and stood straight just like Aruka sensei taught him when delivering a mission report or being debriefed for a mission, he was grateful for Aruka cause he didn't treated him different. Hermione saw how the Sandame told Naruto to remember something and he stood like a soldier and her father saw the same thing and decided to ask Hiruzen why would he talk to Naruto like that. Excuse me Hiruzen, why would you speak to your grandson like he was a soldier, he is barely 11 inches the Sandame looked back and saw that the Grangers wanted an explanation, how about we talk about that subject when we finish shopping we can go to my village if it's okay with you McGonagall san and I will explain everything, the Grangers were satisfied by the answer and were looking forward to the explanation. After arriving at Gringotts entrance everybody was in awe at the beautiful craftsmanship, McGonagall led them towards an empty booth, my name is Griphook how can I help you, he asked in a raspy voice, the goblin was about a head shorter than Naruto with a swarthy, clever face, a pointed beard and very long fingers and feet. Both Naruto and Hermione were surprised by his appearance but quickly answered that they were here to get money to buy their school supplies with their most polite tone and showing respect but no fear towards the goblin, Griphook not expecting this of both youngster had shock written all over his face, like most of the teller in the bank that heard it, McGonagall and Hiruzen were proud of the way the children heed their advice and didn't make a fool of themselves. Keys, can I see your vault keys please? McGonagall pulled a long silver key with a skull at the end of it for Hermione and gave it to Griphook, I'm sorry but we don't have the key for Naruto's trust vault nor family vault, may we speak with the manager? McGonagall said and gave an apologetic smile towards both Griphook and Naruto. Manager Shazer was the proud leader of the Goblin Nation and manager of Gringotts along with both the Uzumaki and Potter family vaults. He prided himself in that nobody ever tried to take from those vaults even if it were the school trust vault. When he heard that the last living Uzumaki wanted to speak to him he was shocked he thought that Kashina was dead and never had a child but nonetheless he let them pass and what he saw shocked him to the core. He could see Kashina in this kid and also could see his father in there as well, welcome I'm manager Shazer. 
I manage the Uzumaki in Potter vaults, Shazer said with an imposing voice that demanded respect, Naruto and Hirazan Bo in greeting and McGonagall stepped up, Manager Shazer there is an inconvenient I was not given Naruto's trust vault key and was wondering if there was anything we could do about it, she said with as much respect as she could muster, Hermione and her parents stood aside just listening not wanting to be a hindrance. Hem it's strange that you were not given the key let me see who is supposed to be his magical guardian meanwhile I need him to prove he is an Uzumaki so if you please just cut yourself a little and place your blood in this parchment please, he said looking towards Naruto who looked towards the Hokage he just gave him an encouraging push, Naruto was nervous so he bit his thumb till it bled and smeared the paper what happened next was a surprise to everybody in the room. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze heir to, Minato Namikaze and Kashina Namikaze ne Uzumaki. Salazar Slytherin Rowena Ravenclaw Magical Affinities. Potion. Prodigy Charms. Prodigy Care of Magical Creatures. Mastery. Battle. Mastery Magical Abilities. Parcel Tongue, Um Shazer Sama What does it mean where it says, Magical Affinities, and, Magical Abilities, I don't understand it, Naruto said looking between the Sandame and Shazer, Hiruzen was also confused Kashina never showed him this when they came here while Shazer was surprised by his heritage. Well Naruto the affinities are the subjects that say. Prodigy, are the ones that you will find easy to understand. Like potions and the ones that say, Mastery, are the ones you will find easy but will have to strive to be better, he explained in the easiest way he could for the sake of both children, the magical abilities are special traits that a wizard or witch can have that are hereditary, McGonagall stated with a tone that Naruto dubbed lecture time to pay attention, and was thinking that she would use that tone in class and he better pay attention. Hermione was soaking all the information like a sponge and was already filing it for later. So what is a parcel tongue? The Sandame asked and by the silence he got as an answer it was a bad ability to have. Well here is in the parcel tongue is the ability to speak with serpents, he who must not be named was a parcel tongue and if Naruto is listened he could be labeled a dark lord in the making, so Hermione I ask of you to keep this a secret, McGonagall said, Hermione nodded and stepped forwards and hugged her new friend promising him she wouldn't reveal his secrets. Naruto was scared when he heard Professor McGonagall explain his gift but after Hermione hugged him he relaxed and decided he would change the views of the people on parcel tongues. After a moment Shakzar returned looking grim. We have found that Kashina never left a magical guardian to take care of the vaults keys so we will have to give him a new key and we will need someone to be named guardian so we can give it to them, Shakzar said while lacing his fingers together making both Naruto and Hiruzen nod while Hiruzen said that he would keep the key safe. So if that is all you need from me today I have paperwork to catch up if you need anything just pop in whenever you can and I will deal with it and if you want advice I can try and help. Oh and your inheritance will be open for you in one week, we will send you an owl stating your possessions, Shakzar said and ended with a jovial tone, Hiruzen who knew the curse of all heads of state told him he sympathized with the goblin leader. After they went to their trust vaults and gave a polite goodbye to the goblins that helped them Naruto and Hermione were ready to start shopping. Robes were the first thing to get out of the way so they walked towards Madame Malkin's where they saw a silver blonde boy getting his robes for school he turned around and saw them. What house do you guys think you guys will be? He asked with an easy grin seeing Naruto. Naruto after picking McGonagall's brain of the house's information returned the grin. I'm not sure but maybe Slytherin. Names Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto and you. He replied with the cool gaze he had seen Sasuke use with the elders and sensei. Names Draco. Draco Malfoy and I know I will be in Slytherin, and you? He answered and asked turning towards Hermione. Um w well I'm not sure but if I had to guess I would say Ravenclaw, she replied a little bit nervous, hum well if you end up in a different house it won't matter to me we can still hang out, Naruto said while smiling. Draco grinned at this and said, well if you want we can hang out too, um I hope I'm not intruding or anything but are you a half-blood or muggle-born? He asked in a hushed tone and looking around for someone. Well I am a muggle-born, I hope that doesn't cause troubles in the future Draco I really want to be your friend, you look like a good guy. Hermione said with a small whisper towards both not wanting to lose the friends she started to make here. I am a half-blood my mom was a witch and my dad was a civilian. Naruto answered with a timid smile. Draco had a small feeling in his gut not to let his father view of the world screw up this friendship he could start not by money but because they liked him. Look I really don't care about that but my dad does. If you ever meet him please fake you are pure blood so we can be friends without him trying to ruin everything. Draco said not knowing that his mother was standing behind him with a proud smile now knowing he wouldn't follow his father's step. Oh my baby dragon has finally made his own friends and stopped thinking like a fool, Narcissa Malfoy a beautiful silver blonde woman that had aristocratic features said while hugging her son and smiling towards Naruto and Hermione. My name is Narcissa Malfoy and I am dragon's mother, she offered her hand to the parents while Draco was trying to fix his hair while Naruto was laughing, the adults started to chat with each other and when they saw the children interactions decided to shop together for the three to know each other better. They went around the alley entering different shops for quills, potions ingredients, books parchments, ink. They only needed to get the wands and pets, while they were walking Draco explained some costumes and some stuff that has happened in the last 11 years from the fall of the Dark Lord to the apparition of Harry Potter. The boy who lived, Naruto and Hermione were surprised by the fact a kid the same age as them was known all across the magical community but let it slide maybe they would meet him in the Hogwarts Express. Okay next stop Elop's Owl Emporium so you kids can get a familiar, McGonagall said while Draco. Naruto and Hermione ran inside the store to see the pets. Draco was looking at the owls when a Barney owl landed on his shoulder and started to hoot getting his attention and started to pet it and turned around to his smiling mother both walked to pay for the owl now names Rex, 
Hermione was looking at the cats when a small orange kitten jumped to her arms and started to rub its head against her hand and purring when she scratched behind its ears her parents walked with Professor McGonagall to pay for the newly dubbed Crookshanks. Naruto couldn't help but stare at two different animals, one was a small fox kit with two tails with a fiery red color and a viper that kept following his every movements. Who are you young one? The viper hissed trying to see if Naruto would react, when he turned around, I'm Naruto and I'm looking for a familiar, he hissed unconsciously while the sandam looked at him remembering that Naruto could speak with serpents. Well young SS speaker I would be honored if you choose me, the viper hissed back with a small smile seeing a speaker, what did the viper said Naruto-kun? The sandam asked wary of the snake, well he said he would be honored to be my familiar but I also feel a connection with this fox kid over there, he said with a frown. Well Naruto you could take both I'll make sure you don't get in troubles, McGonagall said with a thin smile. Naruto was excited so he went and opened the cage where the fox kit was staring at him, when he got the fox kit out of the cage he felt the viper slithering up his arm, he felt how both animals bit him a bit and saw their eyes glow to amethyst color getting a small part of Naruto's magic and chakra and in return the viper made Naruto immune to his venom, Hiruzen was happy to see Naruto smile and went to pay for both animals and their respective foods and treats. After Draco, Hermione and Naruto got everything for their familiars they walked towards Ollivander's wand shop but Naruto stopped in front of a small shop with different blocks of wood in display. Professor what is this shop for? He asked while Draco and Hermione came and stood by his side inspecting the shop with him, well young man this is a wand crafter shop, a shadow was cast in front of the three students and introduced himself, I'm Horst, and I'm the owner of this shop, you want a crafted wand? Naruto looked back at the Hokage with the dreaded jutsu that only women and small children were able to pull, puppy dog eyes no jutsu, he tried to resist or look away but Hermione and Draco joined in trying to get their parents to cave in, after a few moments they couldn't resist anymore and said yes, when they opened their eyes the kids were already inside the shop choosing the woods and core for their wands. After two hours they paid for the wands and left for the leaky cauldron, Professor McGonagall is it okay if you transport us back to Konoha so we may explain everything to young Hermione and her parents and maybe also the Malfoys should come to if they plan on being friends with Naruto, there's a lot of things to explain, the Sandame asked, McGonagall just nodded and everybody surrounded an old scroll and grabbed it. Izumo and Kotetsu were lazing around the gate not expecting the Sandame, Naruto and other oddly dressed people to walk towards them, Sandame sama, Naruto kun how was the trip, Izumo said with a smile that Naruto returned. Izumo. Kotetsu I hope the gates were safe and you weren't sleeping on the job, Hiruzen said with a smirk towards the pair while McGonagall, Narcissa, Draco and the Grangers were confused why they would speak to Hiruzen like that, so they just waved and walked towards the biggest building in the village. While walking through the village they saw several people smile and bow towards the Sandame. The group arrived at the tower and climbed to the top floor, Anbu please leave us, Naruto and I are in no danger, like last time McGonagall was here she didn't saw anybody else in the room except their group but a chorus of, hi Hokage-sama, and several blurs jumping out the window corrected her. Now that we are alone please ask whatever questions you have, he said with an inviting nod, where are we and why were the villagers bowing to you out in the streets? Hermione's mom asked first. We are in Konoha that is located in the elemental nations outside of the Japanese islands separated by a magic barrier from the rest of the world, we have a different source of energy and power and barely some people awaken their magical abilities like Naruto here. Why they bowed to me is because I am the leader of this village, we are a militaristic village and Naruto is part of the shinobi corps, well he will be when he turns 12 and he is ready to take the graduation exam, he answered them never hiding anything from them. So you were forcing Naruto here to be part of the army? Hermione's dad asked knowing what the army was like from his youth in it. No we never forced Naruto to join nor any youngsters to do so they all joined from their own free will, Hermione and Draco were surprised that their friend was a trained killer since he was little. Why would you join Naruto? McGonagall asked to Naruto wanting to know his reasons. To protect my precious people, and I was entrusted with that mission since I was a baby by the Yandaimi Hokage when he saved the village from a demon, that answer confused Hermione and Draco even more. What do you mean a demon? They asked at the same time, Naruto looked towards the Sandame and asked a silent question his answer came from an encouraging nod and a smile. The day I was born a demon attacked the village, the Yandaimi fought it, he couldn't kill it so he did the next big thing. Seal it in a newborn baby with his chakra coils barely developed so it could sink with the Yuki of the demon. I was that baby, he entrusted me the safety of the village, Naruto finished with his head down not wanting to see the rejection from his friends, when he felt a hug and a pat on the back he looked up to see Hermione hugging him and Draco with a smile. Same as Narcissa, McGonagall and the Grangers were smiling he got more precious people to protect he smiled at them and a few tears made their way down his cheek. Now Naruto why don't you give a tour of the village to Draco and Hermione and maybe introduce them to the Inoshika Cho trio the academy is getting out in 10 minutes, Hiruzen said with a warm smile Naruto gave a nod and grabbed Hermione hand and Draco followed. Inu please watch them for me I don't want troubles from the villagers, a man with silver defying gravity hair gave a nod and jumped after them. So now this is Konoha as a big place and a great place to live. Now the academy is where we learn the basics of being a ninja, Naruto said while he walked pointing to different things that either caught his friend's attention or were important to know, Hermione and Draco were looking around mesmerized by the colorful village, while they were walking Ino, Shikamaru and Choji were wondering why Naruto wasn't in class today but when they saw him walking towards the academy with a bushy haired girl and a silver blonde boy their confusion grew. 
Oi Naruto why weren't you in class today Iruka almost blew a gasket when you weren't there, Shikamaru said with a bored tone while he was giving a look at the two new guys. Hi Shika, Choji, Ino-chan. Well I wasn't in class cause I had to go buy some things for a boarding school and this are my new friends Draco and Hermione, they are from England. Naruto said with a foxy grin towards his twin when she saw Draco, all process stopped and couldn't keep the blush from erupting in her cheeks, Choji didn't said anything but offered some of his chips. TCH troublesome blonde what is this of a boarding school you will miss the last year to graduate, and we won't be able to advance without you baka, Shikamaru said, but new Naruto would give him a good explanation for that, he never lied to them, even when he found out of the Kyubi he told them. Well remember that letter that I received last week? At the nod from the three he continued, it was an acceptance letter to a school in England it's for wizards and witches, we found out I was a wizard thanks to my mom and so are Hermione and Draco, he finished with a smile to his first friends and his twin sister. Draco was staring with a small blush at the sight of Eno and hit Naruto on his ribs and told him to introduce them, oh right right. Draco Hermione this or Shikamaru Nara the genius in strategy games. Choji Akamichi the most loyal guy you will ever meet in the five nations and Ino Yamanaka the gossip queen of Konoha. And the future mindwalker of the INT department and my twin sister, and they are the clan heirs like you or Draco, Naruto stated while pointing at each one and smirking when he catch Draco blush when he pointed at Ino, guys this are Hermione Granger muggle born witch and a genius in her own academic fields and Draco Malfoy future head of the Malfoy family and a pure blood, Draco walked up to Ino grabbed her hand and kissed it with a smooth movement and a tiny blush while Ino had an atomic blush on her face and gave a smile at him, Shikamaru was snickering with Choji and Naruto and Hermione were speechless at Draco's boldness. Anyways why don't you guys join us and help me give them a tour of the village, Naruto said breaking the tension in the air, Ino just nodded and walked next to Draco, Shikamaru just muttered that it would be too troublesome to not do so and Choji just smiled while eating his chips. While this was going on the Sandame called for Inoichi, when he arrived and saw the silver blonde kissing his daughter's hand he started to see red and leaking killer intent. Well it seems my little dragon got his dad's charm and that blonde girl is pretty and will be gorgeous when she hits puberty don't you think Mr. Inoichi, he heard a woman speak and turned around to see an identical silver blonde hair in the person standing next to him, he just nodded. Well then I would like to make a marriage contract with you for your daughter's hand, but first I need to make a charm to see if they are soul mates if you would allow it, everybody was shocked when they heard Narcissa say that with a straight face, Mrs. Granger asked her if Draco would be comfortable with it, after Narcissa explained the customs that the pure bloods had they turned to see what Inoichi would say. Sandame Sama if it's for the benefit of the village I to accept the marriage contract between Malfoy Draco San and Yamanaka Ino. Inoichi answered as well hoping Ino could find the happiness he lost when his wife was murdered when she was still a baby. The Sandame nodded his head and called, Tora get Inu and the children he is watching over here right now please, a masked woman with her purple hair done in a tall ponytail appeared and bowed while she received the instructions and left to carry them, 30 minutes later Inu appeared with Naruto grinning, Draco and Ino talking about the magical world and Shikamaru and Shoji watching their little sister with a small smile. Mission to watch over Naruto Chan and friends accomplished Sandame Sama, Inu said while snickering at Naruto's outrage of being called Chan, and mutterings of grey defying gravity haired teams while the Sandame laughed at their sibling like relationship. Inu, please take your mask of everybody in the room turned around to see a man with another mask over his face but just covering from his neck to his nose, a headband with the symbol of Konoha slanted over his left eye and a lazy expression on his visible eye. Yo, Naruto Chan and friends, he said with its patented eye smile while waving at Naruto and his friends. Kakashi ni san, it was you all along. Naruto said while pointing dramatically towards Kakashi while the rest of the adults started to chuckle and giggle in the case of the women. So this is where you were hiding all along eh Gaki? Hanging out with new friends without saying hello to your Nei-chan. They heard the door swing open and a young woman with purple hair tied in a short spiky ponytail wearing a mesh shirt, a small skirt, shin guards and a brown trench coat entered and ruffled Naruto's hair. Hi ya squirt missed your Anko Nei-chan. There was one thing why nobody dared to do more than ignore and curse Naruto. Everybody knew that Anko was his sister and would kill, maim, torture, and all around drive insane anybody that tried that, when Naruto was 5 a drunk villager tried to kill Naruto when he was walking with Anko, he was in the hospital till 2 days ago when he was able to form a coherent speech and could move without aid. Oh damn who is going to break the news to Hanada that Naruto is leaving for a while, Ino said while Shikamaru's and Shoji's eyes bulged and stared at each other, while Naruto was thinking on how Hanada was weird always fainting when he talked or even looked at her, or how she would follow him everywhere like Sakura did for Sasuke. Who is this girl that you guys are talking about, Draco asked while fearing Naruto's safety. It's a girl in our class that has a massive crush for Naruto, Ino answered him, we have seen her follow us whenever we are with Naruto, Shikamaru said, and she faints when Naruto smiles in her general direction or whenever he talks to her, Choji finished between chips. She also follows me wherever I go when the academy ends, Naruto said, don't worry Gaki's Hanada can't do anything because of her standing in the village as princess of the Hyuga clan, her father would never allow Naruto to be with her even if he wanted to be with her, she said with a smile that made Hermione trust her more. Narcissa stepped up and said, okay Draco, Eno please hold hands, close your eyes and I'll do the rest, she said while performing some wand movements and chanting in Latin when a big green ball appeared and she clapped with glee and while Inoichi just smiled and walked towards Draco and kneeled. If you make her cry or you hurt her in any way or form, there will be nothing you can do to hide from my wrath or we clear, 
He whispered in his ear and Draco saw Shikamaru, Choji and Naruto nodding their heads and figured they were agreeing with Inoichi, he just nodded his head. I promise nothing bad will happen to her when I'm around, Inoichi smiled at this he liked the kid already. Okay Naru-chan you want to see what I got for you? Anko said changing the subject again while Kakashi was reading his Icha Icha with the Sandame doing the same everybody crowed around Anko who kneeled and unfurled and scroll with several seals on it and pushed chakra in the first one, when the smoke cleared they were staring at a guitar and several books on how to play it. This, Naru Chan is a guitar, it came with different books to learn how to play the different styles and it will help you relieve some stress I rather have you playing this than either drinking like me or reading porn out in the open like your niece and okay? She said with a grin towards Naruto who was staring at the guitar with awe just like his friends. Um, Nei Chan you do know that I already know how to play a guitar don't you? Naruto stated while he scratched the back of his head and sheepishly laughed at Anko's expression while Kakashi was chuckling remembering how he taught him that instrument so he wouldn't enter and try to burn his precious book collection. I taught him how to play a guitar because I didn't want him near my book collection knowing you would kill me if he turn up like me Anko Chan, he said with a eye smile while putting his book away. Okay Naruto let's see what you can play, Anko said wanting to see for herself if her Otudo could actually play. Play dirt by Florida Georgia line, you get your hands in it. Plant your roots in it dusty headlights dance with your boots in it, dirt. You write her name on it spin your tires on it build your cornfield, whiskey. Bonfires on it, dirt, you bet your life on it it's that elm shade. Red roads clay you grew up on that plowed up ground that your dad. Damned his luck on that post-game party field you circled up on. And when it rains you get stuck on drift a cloud back behind county roads. That you run up the mud on her jeans that she peeled off. And hung up her blue-eyed summertime smile looks so good that it hurts. Makes you want to build a 10% down white picket fence house on this dirt. You've mixed some sweat with it taken a shovel to it. You've stuck some crosses and some painted goalposts through it, dirt. You know you came from it, dirt, and someday you'll return to. It's that elm shade red roads clay you grew up on that plowed up ground that your dad. Damned his luck on that post game party field you circled up on. And when it rains you get stuck on drift a cloud back behind county roads. That you run up the mud on her jeans that she peeled off. And hung up her blue eyed summertime smile looks so good that it hurts. Makes you want to build a 10% down white picket fence house on this dirt. You know you came from it, and someday you'll return to. It's that elm shade red roads clay you grew up on that plowed up ground that your dad. Damned his luck on that post-game party field you circled up on. And when it rains you get stuck on drift a cloud back behind county roads. That you run up the mud on her jeans that she peeled off. And hung up her blue-eyed summertime smile looks so good that it hurts. Makes you want to build a 10% down white picket fence house on this dirt. Makes you want to build a 10% down white picket fence house on this dirt. You know you came from it, and someday you'll return to it. When Naruto finished Anko was shocked, her Otudo just played with the guitar she bought and he was a natural, Hermione recognized the style he played just like her parents knew he was playing, country, Draco was holding Ino in a hug while smiling and Shikamaru, Choji, Inoichi, the Sandame and Kakashi were clapping having heard Naruto play before. Did you write that song Naru-chan? Anko asked with a proud smile, well yeah he he one day I was walking by the park and heard two men discussing what happened to our souls when we die, one kept saying that we go to Kami's palace and that she would let us stay there for eternity while the other said that we go back to the earth and our spirits help the plant life to grow better and beautiful, he answered with a grin towards his sister. Narcissa saw her watch. Oh look at the time it's time to go Draco say goodbye to everybody we might come this weekend so you can hang with your friends, she exclaimed and remind Draco that they needed to be present for dinner so they could tell Lucius about somethings. The Grangers decided to take their leave also and Hermione gave small hug to Naruto and Draco, hugged Ino who became a great friend and she promised to steal a hawk to send her letters, she waved goodbye to the rest of the gathered people and along with Draco his mom and Professor McGonagall disappeared. Well Naru Chan time to go home you got school tomorrow and we will be going over both your new textbooks and some scrolls, Anko said and waved goodbye to everybody while Naruto picked up his guitar and books and said goodbye. Well Kakashi it seems Naruto will be able to have a normal teenage hood, don't you think? The Sandame said while lighting his pipe and taking a drag, Kakashi just smiled, nodded and left reading while giggling over his book. A month passed where Naruto literally didn't left his and Anko's house because he was studying some of the scrolls the Sandame prepared for him and studying his books and some history of the country and school he would be attending for the next seven years, he also kept on practicing with his guitar. Naruto was in his room packing his clothes and school materials and scrolls while Randy and Karama watched from the bed and having a conversation of their own of what would Hogwarts would be and if they would be able to hunt. While Naruto was packing he kept going back to the day he met the Kyubi in person. Naruto was reading about Occlumency and how to do it when he felt a pull in the back of his mind, when he opened his eyes he was in what he figured was his mindscape. Well, I'll be damned, my mindscape is a sewer, he said to himself while checking the pipes he saw running down the walls, come here, follow my voice kit, he heard something rasp out. I would follow the voice Naruto, Randy hissed to Naruto, both curious of what was calling him, he started walking towards the voice while Randy coiled around his shoulders and kept looking around for any signs of danger. When they reached the end of the hall they saw a huge cage with a paper seal keeping it close and a pair of red eyes looking down at them, wow that gate is huge don't ya think Randy? Naruto said while his familiar just nodded. 
Well kit you seem I-P-R-E-S-S-E-D by my cage, do you know W-H-O-I-A-M and W-H-O put me here? He heard the creature behind the bars say with a deep and malicious voice, Naruto started to think when he remembered the day he got his letter. You were the Kiyubi and were sealed in my by the Yandaimi to protect Konoha? He said while pointing a shaky finger and trembling a bit. Yes I am the great K-Y-U-B-I no Kitsune Kit. Bow to me mortal. The Kiyubi roared to both Naruto and Randy, who started snickering at the Kiyubi. Well I am Uzumaki Naruto and I'm your jailer so tell me why you would attack Konoha. Naruto asked with curiosity wanting to know the reason he ended up stuck in his gut. If you must know, I was being controlled by someone that ripped me out of my last container that was Kashina, she became my friend after some time, and while I was being controlled by a person with a Sharingan your father had no choice but to seal me inside you to protect the village. By the way I am sorry for what the stupid villagers did to you before Kit. The Kiyubi said while remembering that Fatidic day he was forced to kill his best friend and her mate, when he woke up in this sewer mindscape he made a promise to Kashina that he would protect her Kit like he was his own and he would be damned if he didn't try to do so. Naruto sat there contemplating this revelation about the day he was born, well then let's be friends alright just like you were with my mom, by the way don't you have a name you know a simpler name, he said with a foxy grin that the Kiyubi mirrored. Great now I'll be training you in the shinobi arts in your mindscape when you have changed it for Oklumensi and will tell about your parents, and yes I do my name is Karama, he said and started to think about the sadistic train he would put Naruto through like he did with Kashina and started to laugh maniacally. Hey do you mind if I call my nibi fox Karama? Naruto asked figuring that name would fit for the chibi fox, to the question Karama just nodded and told Naruto to leave so he could start planning the tour, training. After that crazy day and telling his siblings and Gigi about everything he talked with Karama they started to study for Hogwarts, Sarutobi was glad that the Kiyubi would train Naruto in the shinobi arts that way he could keep all the shinobi here in case of emergency, Anko and Kakashi were put off after they heard what happened but were happy that the Kiyubi would protect their Otuto when they couldn't do so. It was finally the day he would leave for London and then to Hogwarts two days ago an eagle owl arrived carrying a teapot with a letter attached to it saying that the teapot was a portkey and that it would activate September the 1st at 9am so Naruto should be holding his trunk and pet cages close to him when it was time. Right now it was 8.50 in the Ino Shikacho trio and their parents were there talking with Naruto in the children's case and Anko in the Sandame in the adult's case. So you ready for school Naruto? Choji asked while trying to smuggle some chips and assorted treats to Naruto's trunk so he could eat during the train ride without Ino finding out and chewing them about it. Yeah I am but I'm also nervous for it I hope it won't be too hard, Naruto said while he scratched Karama's ears. Don't worry Nisan I'm sure if you have troubles Hermione Chan can help you, she is really smart and has been studying just as much as you, Ino said with a smile when she heard Karama purr when she scratched under his muzzle and licked her hand, he came to see Ino as a good way to get treats and to get groomed and spoiled whenever he wanted much to Ino's delight. Besides I'm sure the professors will be more than happy to help you besides they won't know about Karama so they won't have prejudice like the senseis here but it's too troublesome to think about that right now, how is Draco doing Ino? Shikamaru said with a bored tone and a small grin at the end when he saw Ino blush at the mention of the silver blonde that she kept on writing letters and sighing dreamily about much to the chagrin of the three boys cause if she did in front of Sakura she would start screeching about her thinking of her, Sasuke-kun, and start ranting and screeching and started to hurt their ears. The boys started to snicker when they remembered Sakura started to screech in class Randy rose from Naruto's skin and hissed menacingly at Sakura. Naruto started to laugh and translated to his friends when asked what he said, he said that if the banshee didn't shut up he would bite her and make sure she couldn't bear the emo king babies with his dry bite which made everybody laugh and Aruka ask if Anko let him sign the snake summoning contract where Shikamaru answered that Naruto didn't need the summoning contract to understand snakes and left it at that he liked the viper, it was a great shogi player. When it was 8.59 Naruto put Karama and told Randy to sink in his skin in his tattoo form he grabbed the portkey and like the last two times he felt like being sucked through a slim pipe after a few seconds of spinning and using chakra to hold on to everything he landed in King's Cross right in front of the platform 9 with no one the wiser. He started to walk around a bit till he remembered what McGonagall told him to enter platform 9 and 3 quarters. He walked casually to the wall and looking around to see anybody he walked through and appeared next to a big scarlet train and a lot of people walking around holding children's hand or hugging and kissing son or daughters, hey Naruto over here mate, somebody called behind his back, when he turned he was greeted with Narcissa, Draco and another boy their age smiling he walked towards them smiling and waving. Yo Draco, Narcissa san how was the rest of your summer, he asked his friend and shaking Narcissa's hand. It was good, been writing to Eno a lot and Hermione also wrote me to ask if we could wait for her here. Oh by the way this is Theodore not he is one of my first friends and we literally grew up together, Draco said with a grin at the Eno part and a smile when he introduced Theo. It's a pleasure to meet you Theodore Senai Muzumaki Naruto hope we can be friends, Naruto said with a smile and extending his hand, Theo just smiled and said. Oh we will be friends if you can bring this new character of Draco out and I must thank this, Eno girl for mellowing him out, all the time laughing and shaking Naruto's hand, their laugh became twice as hard when they saw Draco pout at the ribbing he received from his best friends. Hey guys thanks for waiting for me, have you seen if Naruto arrived? They heard a voice from behind them and Draco turned with a smirk, well Hermione if you stop reading, Hogwarts, a history, you could see he has arrived and greet him, he said and moved to let Hermione see Naruto wave and grin at her. Guys I found a compartment where we can sit I already put my stuffs there, she said when she finished saying hello, 
Draco and Naruto said yes while Theo asked them to wait for he had to go get his trunk, after a few minutes Theo returned with a woman Naruto guess was his mother and was proven correct. Mum this are my new friends Naruto Uzumaki and Hermione Granger, he said while pointing at his new friends, a pleasure to meet you ma'am, they said in unison and blushed when Draco started to snicker when they said it, okay children go to your compartment and don't forget to write us, Narcissa said when she stopped giggling and everybody nodded and said their goodbyes. The group were walking down the train towards the compartment Hermione said when Naruto bumped into someone lighter than him. Oh sorry I wasn't looking where I was going, I'm just looking a place to sit, the kid said while picking up his trunk and owl cage with a beautiful snow owl. No worries man, just be careful next time by the way I'm Naruto, this are my friends Draco, Hermione, and Theo what's your name? Naruto said while pointing at each of his friends. My name is Harry, Harry Potter nice to meet you all, um may I sit with you? The newly introduced Harry asked. When Naruto turned to ask he saw Draco and Theo with their jaws hanging and Hermione trying to remember the name and scrunching her nose a bit, he saw Draco and Theo nod their heads and told him to follow them. When all were seated in the compartment Draco decided to break the ice. Sue, Naruto learned any new jutsu you want to show off like Ino-chan said in many of her letter, he asked while Naruto just cursed Ino and her love of gossips but he knew Draco was family in a manner of sense so he showed them. Well I did learn a few but I will just show you one, cage bush and no jutsu, he said while putting his middle fingers in a cross sign and in a puff of smoke there were two Naruto's smirking. Draco just smirked at Theo and Harry's faces when Naruto multiplied himself and both started to laugh, when they heard a hissing sound and a bark from one of the tunics when they saw a viper rise from Naruto's skin and a fox kit poke his head from one of the pockets in Naruto's jacket. W what are why you doing with a venomous snake mate? Theo stuttered while edging away a little while Hermione and Harry got closer. Oh this is one of my familiars Randy say, hi, this are my friends Draco and Hermione you remember from Diagon Alley and this are Harry and Theo, Naruto said with a smile and scratching under Randy's jaw. ITSS is a please sure to meet you both, Randy hissed and made a bowing motion with his head. Damn I must st be going crazy if I heard the SS snake talk, Harry hissed unconsciously which surprised everybody in the compartment. You can SS speak to SS snakes like me, Naruto hissed trying to see if he heard right. I don't know I mean a SS snake hissed at me in the zoo and I set it free when I understood when it wanted out, Harry hissed back, when he saw Naruto laugh and translate the everybody started to laugh. Harry mate you are a parcel mouth just like our resident ninja here, Draco said with a smile, Harry just looked around incredulous. Parcel mouth means you can understand snakes, speak to them and they will understand you and respect you nowadays being a parcel mouth is considered a sign of being a dark lord but don't believe that man, Naruto answered with an easy grin towards Harry. Naruto what is the name of the fox kit? Is he like a sign of having the tricking abilities of one? Theo said trying to remember Japanese folklore and mythology. Well, yes and no his name is Karama and yes if you see he has more than one tail but first I need both of you to swear on your life that you will not reveal what you hear from this okay? He said with a more serious tone when he received the promise he continued. The day I was born a demon attacked my village, my father fought against it when he saw he couldn't kill it he knew he would have to seal it in a baby no older than three weeks. He couldn't ask anybody for their baby if he had one so he sealed it in his son. Me, the demon that attacked was known as the Kiyubi no Kitsune and his real name is Karama we met a few days after I met this two in Diagon Alley and he explained everything to me from there that little Karama here was from his summoning plane and was captured when his family was murdered and I saved him, Naruto finished with a smile when he felt Karama's tongue against his cheek and recognized the hand on one of his shoulders and the head resting on the other. Theo just nodded and understood why he wanted to keep it under wraps for a while Harry understood his pain of not knowing his parents and having no one, Naruto didn't know he made two new friends and allies that day. They spent the rest of the train ride playing cards. Games and Theo swore he would never bet against Naruto. Ever again and Draco said that he would have to take. Naruto to a casino he heard Hermione's dad talk about to wipe them out of all the money and Naruto shared his snacks when Karama found them hidden in one of his school robes, thank you Choji for hiding this and Karama for distracting Ino-chan from finding them, he cried and everybody else started to snicker while Draco wrote a letter to Ino telling her that Choji smuggled snacks in Naruto's trunk and they used Karama's cuteness to divert her attention and send Rex to deliver his letter. They were interrupted by an announcement that they would be reaching Hogwarts in a few minutes and they should change into their robes, the guys left the compartment so Hermione had privacy, well they left when she kicked them out, when they returned they found her talking with another girl. Oh hey guys this is Cho she is in her second year, she was looking for a compartment to change because she was with only boys and they decided to change there so we started to talk when she asked to change here, Hermione said with a small smile. Hi name's Cho Chong and I'm from Ravenclaw nice to meet you. Cho said with a warm smile towards the boy who introduced themselves, well Draco had to do it for Harry who was blushing and stuttering at seeing Cho. Well I'm Draco Malfoy, this is Theodore Knott, Naruto Uzumaki over there and this bloke that is stuttering is Harry, he said with a smirk at the glare Harry threw his way. They heard a bark and a meow and turned to see Karama and Crookshanks sitting on top of Naruto's orange jacket. Who is the owner of this cute fox? Yes you are a really cute fox. Cho said while hugging Karama who looked to be smirking towards Harry, if foxes could grin, while the rest of the boys and Hermione laughed. That is Karama he is my nibby fox and he loves to be cuddled, just like you are doing right now, Naruto said while he put his hand behind his head and smiled sheepishly. When they arrived at the Hogsmeade they said their goodbyes to Cho and left to where they heard a booming voice. All first years over her, to see a giant of a man holding a lantern, they found his name was Hagrid thanks to Harry saying hi to him, 
They were led to some rowboats when they heard Hagrid shout, four person per boat. Everybody in yet. Good forward, and they felt the boats start to move Hermione grabbed Naruto's hand and he just squeezed a little to give her confidence. After a few minutes they were treated to their first sight of Hogwarts when the boats touched shore, Hagrid led them through a set of stairs when they were greeted with the sight of Professor McGonagall. Air there Professor Fur, years, Hagrid said while nodding his head towards McGonagall. Thanks Hagrid you may go in and take your seat, while you wait here to begin the sorting, McGonagall said and turned around and entered the Great Hall with Hagrid. Naruto, Draco, Theo, Hermione and Harry were talking when they were approached by Redhead Kid. I heard Harry Potter was in the train today you him? He asked, well demanded from Harry when Naruto interrupted. Mate you shouldn't be this rude he is just another student here like you and me, and besides who taught you manners? A monkey. He said with a smirk that made Draco and Theo also smirk and Hermione to shake her head at her best friend's antic. Leave him be Naruto he is a Weasley they are a pure blood family but lost a lot of their fortune in the war, Draco said knowing of the family feud, the Malfoys and Weasley had in turn to keep talking with his friends when he felt someone pulling on his robes. You stinking death eater bastard I'll teach, that's all he heard from the Weasley kid when everybody heard something hit against the wall, Draco turned and saw Naruto had Weasley by the scruff of his robes and was inching for a pouch he remember had his kunais. Oi mate you shouldn't be threatening my friends it will end up bad for you, do you understand me? Naruto growled and kept inching his hand towards his kunai pouch when he felt Hermione whisper, let him go, he is not worthy besides Draco is fine just got his robe a bit ruffled, while Kurama was also telling him that they should prank the weasel later, Naruto let go of the robes and walked back towards his friends. Thanks mate, I didn't knew you would react that quick but anyways thanks, Draco said while smiling towards him, don't worry mate what is family for right, you will marry my twin, Naruto said while laughing making the rest relax and wait to be led in. After a few minutes they heard a scream and saw some ghost glide through the students and talking, I tell you we should kick him out of the castle he is getting out of hand and only the bloody baron can control him, they heard one say. Oh look new students, well I hope a lot of you end up in my house, the house of loyalty Hufflepuff, the fat ghost said with a smile and went through the door which opened up again showing McGonagall hurting them inside and to the front where she set up a stool that had an old looking hat, when a crevice in it opened like a mouth, and started to sing. Oh you may not think I'm pretty, but don't judge on what you see. I'll eat myself if you can find a smarter hat than me. You can keep your bowlers black, your top hats sleek and tall. For I'm the Hogwarts sorting hat and I can cap them all. There's nothing hidden in your head the sorting hat can't see. So try me on and I will tell you where you ought to be. You might belong in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave at heart. Their daring, nerve, and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. You might belong in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Are yet in wise old Ravenclaw, if you've a ready mind. Where those of wit and learning, will always find their kind. Or perhaps in Slytherin you'll make your real friends. Those cunning folks use any means to achieve their ends. So put me on, don't be afraid, and don't get in a flap. You're in safe hands, though I have none, for I'm a thinking cap. When the hat ended his song the students started to clap when they heard McGonagall call forth the first student Abbott, Hannah, a girl walked up and put on the hat after a few seconds the hat shouted, Hufflepuff, and the sorting went like that putting Draco and Theodore in Slytherin and Hermione on Ravenclaw. Potter, Harry, at the name the Great Hall quieted down, when several seconds passed the hat shouted, Gryffindor, at that the table to the left of the hall exploded in cheers and Naruto saw one of his new friends be greeted by his new housemates. After several names being called his name finally came up, Uzumaki. Naruto, McGonagall said and Naruto saw the greasy haired professor straighten up and pay more attention to him, he sat down and let professor McGonagall put the hat on, hum another Uzumaki comes to his ancestral roots he heard inside his head, ah oh, you have a burden set on you to protect others and it is already helping you, good very good, you are as cunning as the most experienced shinobi, and you seek power but for selfless reasons, you are trying to bring pride to parcel mouths. Yes you will do well in, Slytherin, at that Draco and Theo gave a cry of joy while Hermione smiled proudly at his best friend while Harry clapped as loudly as he could. Naruto also saw the greasy haired professor clap loudly and gave him a big smile. He gave back the hat to professor McGonagall and gave her a sheepish smile when he saw her shocked face and walked towards the table that was situated by the right wall of the hall, the sorting continued and ended with him meeting a new boy named Blaze Zabini and the weasel going to Gryffindor and trying to coax Harry into being friends and from what Naruto got out of reading his lips, leaving those dirty rotten snakes because they would only bring troubles and he would be used. When the feast ended and the headmaster dismissed them he walked with Draco and Theo by his side towards the dungeon following Marcus Flint a the fifth year prefect. Okay guys I want you to remember the path to our common room and to memorize the password for it, he said with a grin, they arrived at the end of the hall and stood in front of a portrait of a snake charmer with different type of snakes coiling around him when Marcus spoke, Aliyah I act est, and the charmer played a few notes and moved to reveal a passage to the common room. When everybody was in the common room the prefects started to set them up by grades with the first years at the front and seventh at the back when the greasy haired professor entered and introduced himself. Welcome to the Slytherin house I'm your head of house and potions professor Severus Snape. Now that you are in this house several other students will either label you future dark lords or lying backstabbers. I ask that first through third years stick together for the first month. While a prefect will guide first years to their classes for a few weeks until you get the hang of the castle, I expect you to keep good grades at all times and to follow the rules, if you believe that the rules are beneath you at least try not to get caught, 
you are in the house of cunning now I will be meeting with the first years in the following weeks to tell them what I expect from them personally now off to bed you have classes tomorrow. Draco and Naruto were bunking together while Theo and Blaze were together. Naruto saw another door where two big guys with oaf faces walked in, he walked to his door and saw a room as big as his old apartment before he moved in with Anko and saw Draco pick the bed on the left of the room where he could see Rex with a scroll tied to one of his claws he didn't wonder what was in it but figured Draco would tell him in the morning so he just went to put on his pajamas and to sleep knowing tomorrow would be a long day. Naruto felt something slither around his bed and a furry thing brush against his cheek he tried to ignore it but the attempts became more forceful until he felt a small mouth bite his nose, that definitely would wake someone up, and when he opened his eyes he swore he could see smirks in both Karama's and Randy's faces, he turned to his alarm clock and saw it was 5 in the morning. One thing Anko and Kakashi taught both pets was to always wake Naruto up at 5 in the morning every day so he could exercise before the academy and it seemed they would keep on doing so at Hogwarts. Naruto just grumbled and went to get his clothes on when he pulled a scroll addressed to him with Eno's handwriting, curious he opened it and saw specific instructions for him to get Draco in his insane before school exercise, now Naruto could grin towards Draco's sleeping form and started to snicker quietly while slinking towards his friend's bed. Draco prided himself in being a light sleeper, so his first night at Hogwarts he decided to sleep in a bit when he felt his covers being drawn away from him so his hand tried to follow. When he felt something slither up his hand, reacting like any person feeling something slithering up his, her body when they are asleep he opened his eyes startled to receive a bucket full of water in the face. Courtesy of his best friend and future brother-in-law, he started to sputter curses at Naruto's prankster and cunning senses being better than his and swearing vengeance when a scroll was thrusted in his face, recognizing his fiancée's handwriting he started to read after finishing and rereading it just to be sure it was hers and not another prank he sighed and left the comfort of his bed to get some shorts and sneakers to train with Naruto. He met him at the common room eating an apple while holding another in his left hand, when Naruto saw him he threw the apple at Draco and told him to follow him outside. It was 6 in the morning when Naruto dragged a beaten Draco to the common room so they could shower and get ready for breakfast and classes, he was impressed with Draco when he could actually keep up with his routine, when they were ready they saw Theo and Blaze waiting for them at the common room. Holy shite mate, what happened to you it looks like a herd of hippogriffs ran you over, Theo said while checking a nasty bruise forming in Draco's arm. Well it was most definitely not a herd of hippogriffs but a blonde juggernaut following his twin's instructions, Draco answered while glaring at Naruto who was wistfully talking with Randy. What do you mean by that Drake? Blaze asked while they arrived at the Great Hall for breakfast. Well when my mum and I went to Diagon Alley we met Naruto and Hermione and we became friends. Naruto and his grandfather asked us if we wanted to see their home village and we accepted there my mum made a marriage contract with one of Naruto's best friend named Ino an alliance sort of thing between Naruto's homeland and England's magical world, at their understanding nod at the marriage contract. Draco continued, well this morning Naruto woke me up at 5 in the morning and gave me a letter for me saying I had to participate in his daily workout routine because by the way things are run over there I will need to learn self-defense. You saw how fast Naruto can move and from what I saw this morning that was his lowest speed and the people there will aim to kill so sometimes neither me nor Naruto will be able to use magic so here we are. Me getting pounded in the dirt every morning, he finished with a sight at Naruto's evil grin that changed when Hermione walked over to them to greet them, everybody in the Slytherin table watching Naruto's reaction some smirk others just didn't care and kept on eating breakfast and others were disgusted at someone from an inferior house get near their table. Hey guys how did you sleep? Hermione greeted her friends, they told her about their common room and she laughed at Draco's new morning rituals, she saw her head of house started to deliver the first year's schedule and left saying she would catch up to them later in the evening at the library, the guys saw Snape start to deliver their schedule and stopped eating. Morning Professor Snape, Naruto said while Draco waved a bit at his godfather. Morning children how was your first night at Hogwarts? Snape asked towards his godson and son of one of his last true friends in New Snakes. Before I forget here are your schedules I hope you do well in all your classes and bring pride to the snakes, he said with a sliver of a smile. They grabbed their schedule and saw they had potions and transfigurations with Gryffindor, charms and history of magic with Ravenclaw, herbology and astronomy with Hufflepuff and flying with the other houses. The first week of school was as always slow and boring filled with a lecture from every professor on what he expected to be done in his class, and how they were expected to work on the assignments, Draco found he was getting faster and Theo, Blaze and Hermione started to join in the morning workout to which Snape after finding out about Hermione joining gave 5 points each for interhouse cooperation. It was finally Friday and they had their first potions lesson, Draco and Blaze were talking about Quidditch while Theo explained some things about the magic world to Naruto when they were joined by Harry. Hey guys how you been? He said with a small smile at having another class with his friends, Blaze and Draco waved back before continuing their discussion on who was more important the seeker or the chaser, while Theo shook hands with him and Naruto smiled at him when they heard. Oi Potter I already told you that those snakes will just use you. You should stick to your own housemates, they heard an annoying voice shout to which Harry just sighed and ignored him while the whole first year of Slytherin glared at the weasel that was about to continue his rant against Slytherin when the door to the classroom opened and Snape walked by cape blowing around him when he heard Naruto whisper to his friends, I swear he must be using a windjutsu guys there is no draft here for his cape to blow like that, and damn was he right. This was the only jutsu he could gleam out of Kashina when they were in school that was not destructive nor taxing on him, but hell if he wasn't grateful it gave him a more menacing aura. Knowing that that evening he could finally talk to him he started his well-rehearsed speech. There will be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class. 
As such, I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art that is potion making. However, for those select few, he looked at Draco while saying this, who possess, the predisposition, and looking at Naruto paying attention to every word he said, he couldn't help but remember Kashina and Minato when he went to their wedding, I can teach you how to bewitch the mind and ensnare the senses. I can tell you how to bottle fame, brew glory, and even put a stopper in death. When he heard snickers coming from the front of the class, he searched and found the culprits, three Gryffindors, he ignored it for now and started to call roll when he heard the three Griffs laugh a bit louder and decided to call them out. Weasley. What would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? The weasel turned red and muttered, I dunno, speak up and clearly Mr. Weasley and it's, I don't know sir, not, I dunno, Mr. Malfoy same question, Draco smirked and answered, the draft of living death, sir, Snape, Harry and the rest of the Slytherins smirked. Mr. Thomas, where can I find a bazaar? A lanky looking kid trying to be funny cracked a grin and gave a cheeky smile, in your storage room, sir. This made the Gryffindors laugh and the weasel and his friends to grin at their ingenuity. Five points from Gryffindor, for your cheek, same question Mr. Uzumaki. Naruto smirked and thanked both Anko and Hermione that forced him to read ahead in the book and answered, in the stomach of a goat, sir, Snape smirked and said. Well it seems it's two wrong answers for Gryffindor, let's see if it's zero for three shall we. Potter. What is the difference between monkshood and wolfsbane? Harry was nervous until he remembered when Hermione explained to him and Naruto. They are the same, sir. He answered a little bit nervous. Snape smiled a bit at Harry. Correct Mr. Potter. It seems there are some people that are interested in this class. Today you will brew the potion that is in the board begin, Snape said and waved his wand at the board making the instructions write themselves. Ron and his friends were sneering a bit at Harry who was in a table with Draco and Naruto. When they had five minutes left Snape started to glide around the class checking the potions over. When he arrived at Naruto's station he was surprised he did it in his first try. Naruto is this the first time you brew any sort of potion? Snape asked which made Draco, Theo, Blaze and Harry get closer to here. Well in a sense no it is not. Back in my home I used to help my sister concoct some poisons to interrogate prisoners, she taught me a bit of how to treat the venoms we use and to always be careful with the ingredients we use, he finished to open his eyes at seeing both Harry and the rest of the class staring at him and thinking why would he be eleven and work on torturing and interrogate someone. Bollocks you must be lying mate there's no way you are allowed to do that in any part of the United Kingdom, he heard the Irish boy Seamus if he remember correctly state. I am not from the UK man. I'm from the elemental nations, and besides I just brew the poisons and antidotes I never deal with the prisoners directly, after he finished stating that everybody just stared at him not knowing where the elemental nations were and if he was saying the truth. Well even if you've been helping your sister, brew you also got your mother's talent just like Mr. Potter over here, his might not be perfect but with practice he might be able. 5 points for Gryffindor for being the only potion to exceed my expectations, and 5 points for Slytherin for a perfect potion, the rest of you bottle your attempts and leave them at my desk you were dismissed, everybody rushed to do as they were told so they could leave for the great hall to eat something before they either had to start homework or just explore the grounds. Naruto, Draco, Theo, Blaze and Harry were walking down the hall talking about the different classes and asking Naruto how was his life back in the elemental nations when they heard someone shout. Oh I, you slimy lying snake. They turned around and were not surprised to see the Gryffindor idiot staring them down, why don't you stop lying mate? Everybody knows that the elemental nations don't exist, the weasel said while his friends laughed at the four snakes and the lone Gryffindor stupidity. I bet his mum dropped him on his head several times when he was a baby, said the Irish boy while snickering and pointing at Naruto who had his bangs covering his eyes and his knuckles were turning white. What did you do you morons? Draco shouted knowing what they just said hurt Naruto deep down and he could feel the rage of Naruto from where he was standing. I dare you to repeat what you just said Teme, Naruto whispered but everybody in the hall heard him like if he was shouting. I said, I bet your mum you ck. That's all Seamus got to say before he felt a fist in his stomach, before he could do anything he felt a kick to his temple and his world went black. Ron and Dean were scared and tried to pull their wands out, when they finally managed Naruto turned to them and said in a low voice. I never even knew my mom, she died the day I was born along with my dad, I've been raised by my mom's and dad's students since I was five. Next time you insult either my friends or my family's memories I won't simply knock you out, I will break your bones. Do you understand? The boys simply nodded to scare to do anything else and ran towards their common room. When Naruto and his friends made it to the great hall for dinner that night several of the Gryffindor students were glaring at Naruto, he didn't care it was no different from Konoha. When they sat Professor McGonagall went over to him. Mr. Uzumaki may I know why did you attack one of my students unprovoked after potions class? She said with a stern look that demanded answers. Excuse me? I'm sorry but I attacked nobody unprovoked after class ma'am, he said. Oh really? And why Mr. Weasley and Mr. Thomas came to me with a knocked out Mr. Finnegan with a swelling cheek? Her pursed lip proved the disappointment she had towards Naruto attacking. Oh that guy, Draco what was it that he said to send me over the edge and attack him? Naruto answered while turning to look at his best friend. He said that your mom dropped you on your head several times when you were a baby, I didn't think somebody would be stupid enough to say that to you mate, Draco answered while paying attention to his food. McGonagall was appalled at what she heard. So you kicked him and then threatened three students because they insulted your mom? She asked while turning a sharp eye towards the stupid trio. Please refrain from doing it again, I'll leave you to your dinner have a good night, and with that McGonagall left to speak with her students. 
It was a beautiful morning at Hogwarts, well beautiful for those that were able to sleep in till it was breakfast time, not for three Slytherin first graders, a Ravenclaw girl, who were suffering by the daily morning routine that their best friend had started them on. Damn you Naruto, was the only thing that was heard on the lakeside by the young knot. His curse was backed up by the glares that Naruto received from Draco and Blaze but the one that actually made him cower a bit was Hermione Glare, he was glad that a glare couldn't kill him, hopefully. Well you were the ones that wanted to join, well Draco was forced by Eno but that doesn't matter. Naruto said while smirking and turning around to walk back to Slytherin common room. Come on guys remember that we have our first flying session today. Draco said with a smile, he longed to fly a broom, same with Naruto. Let's hurry up to get a shower and then some breakfast so we are able to pick the best brooms. Theo said while running after Naruto who was lazily walking towards the castle. Blaze and Hermione followed to a more sedated pace knowing that breakfast would still be there when they got to the mess hall. After a big breakfast Naruto, Draco, Theo, Blaze walked behind Marcus Flint and some other first graders to the Quidditch pitch where they would take their flying lessons. He showed them the best broom the school had, and then fled when he saw Madame Hooch walking towards the pitch with the Gryffindor students. Good morning students I'm Madame Hooch and will be your flying instructor. First I need you to stand next to a broom and extend your hand over the handle. Madame Hooch said and showed them how they were supposed to do so. Then you command it to your hand like this, up, she said and they saw how the broom shot to her hand. Naruto eager to do so was about to shout up, but he heard Kurama grumble about relaxing to let his magic flow easier. He listened to the fox and took a few breaths and tuned out the rest of the shouts from the class. Up, he said and felt the broom hit his hand, he grinned and turned to see his best friends do the same, with the same results he had. He grinned and put his thumb up making Theo and Blaze smile towards him and Draco to smirk and point in front of them where the weasel was trying, and failing miserable to get his broom to his hand, after a few tries he was able to get it up. Madame Hooch got the class attention again and explained how to mount and how to kick off the ground, she was about to let the class kick off when one of the clumsiest Gryffindors took off. She tried to get him to come down but he was panicking, after a few moments of him being airborne he fell to the ground. And there goes his wrist. Naruto said when they heard the crunch on the bone making his friends wince a bit more. Everybody stay where you are, if I find out that one of you left the ground I will make sure that you are expelled faster than you can say, Quidditch, let's go dear, Madame Hooch said while helping the fat kid up and towards the infirmary. Did you see how stupid he looked? Ron said with a mocking tone, and walked towards the spot where Neville fell, he saw the gift Neville's grandma sent him that morning, he even dropped his remember ball, what a dork. Give it here Weasley, it doesn't belong to you, Naruto said while extending his hand. Ron snorted and grabbed his broom, he kicked off and stabilized himself, you want it, come get it, and started to rise. Give me a broom, Naruto said towards his friends, Draco and Theo shrugged and got the best broom they could find. You know it is a bad idea what you plan on doing, Blaze said trying to be the voice of reason since Hermione wasn't there to beat some sense in Naruto. Yeah, and I don't care mate, Naruto said and kicked off towards Ron. Ron took off towards the school as fast as he could, he was thanking his older brothers that taught him how to ride a broom. Give it back Weasley, he heard from behind and saw that Naruto was closer than he thought. He decided to get rid of the ball and threw it as hard as he could towards the school wall, and descended. He was greeted by his friends and they were laughing at his stunt. Naruto sped towards the window he saw the ball would crash, he pushed the broom to the limit, a few feet before the ball was able to hit the window he caught it. He was about to crash when he pulled the broom from under him and let chakra flow to his feet, effectively stopping him before he crashed the class. Unfortunately McGonagall was in that classroom and saw what Naruto had done. He cut the flow and put the broom in between his legs again and descended to the ground where the rest of the class gathered. That was amazing mate, Theo shouted and patted Naruto's back, Harry and Draco were grinning. I won't deny that it was amazing what you did young man, but you disobeyed a rule from Madame Hooch, fortunately for you I'm not your head of house, was heard behind everybody, Naruto turned slowly towards the voice, to find a rather angry McGonagall. It was your class wasn't it? Naruto asked with a small voice, he dreaded the answer, and the punishment. He saw the nod and sighed, McGonagall told him to follow her, while Draco, Theo, Blaze and Harry were trying to explain what happened but McGonagall just ignored them and walked Naruto towards Snape's office. So what is your punishment? was the only question that was heard around the library table, they were gathered there so Hermione could hear what happened and to start on their homework. He wasn't as angry as I thought, he did tell me to meet him tomorrow after our daily exercise at the Quidditch pitch. Naruto answered while he looked for a charm to write a four-foot essay. Well, I bet he wants to see you fly, I heard Marcus was looking for a new seeker or chaser after the stunt you pulled, Draco said while twirling his quill in between his fingers while thinking. You flew like your mum, they heard from their only female friend across the table that was going over some texts. What do you mean by, flew like my mum? Naruto asked looking over a book. When I heard about your little stunt, I asked Professor Flitwick. Hermione said and took Draco's dad as essay. He told me that the way you leaned on the broom, the way you did everything was the same way your mum used to do when she was playing Seeker for Ravenclaw. She finished while correcting something on the essay. So, you were saying that Naruto could be one hell of a Seeker if he wants? Theo asked while he looked from Naruto to Hermione and back. Yep, same with Harry, from what Professor Flitwick said Naruto's mom and Harry's dad had one hell of a rivalry, not only in the pitch but on pranks and detentions, Hermione said making Naruto's and Harry's eyes to grow wide. Did Snape said if we could come with you? Draco asked, 
making everybody at the table turn their heads towards the blonde, who shrugged and said that it would be fine. My dad and his mum were rivals when they played Quidditch. Harry asked with wide eyes, this was a bit of information he had on his parents. Yeah, he told me that Kashina was amazing at charms and potions like your mum, but had also a mean streak when it came to pranking people. Her favorite targets were your father and his friends, who in turn would target her and Professor Snape who was always with Kashina. Hermione said getting her friends to stare at her. So a rivalry in the pitch and in pranks, are you up to keep it alive Harry? Or should I go against the twins? Naruto asked while smirking towards Harry. I'm, I'm not much of a prankster, sure in the pitch I will try to be better than you but at pranks no, Harry said while scratching the back of his head and laughing a bit, making Naruto and Draco to sigh. Well, it seems we will have to attack the twins, I can't let my title of KP be lost, Naruto said while focusing again on his essay. The next morning found Naruto, Draco, Theo, Harry, Hermione and Blaze waiting at the pitch, when a few minutes had gone they saw Snape, with his trademark cloak billowing and Marcus Flint with a huge chest floating behind him. Morning Naruto, and company that I thought would be enjoying to sleep in this Sunday. Marcus said while glancing to the gathered audience, he knew that soon the rest of the house would probably come running to see the tryout. Well, this is unexpected, Snape while taking a look to the Ravenclaw girl that was one of the best in his class, and the only Gryffindor he tried to stay neutral. Get on with the tryout Flint, before the rest of the castle finds out. Snape said and herded everybody but Naruto who stayed with a grinning Marcus that was explaining the rules to Naruto. So, you figured that it would be a tryout didn't you Miss Granger? Snape asked when they were in the bleachers and turned to Hermione who just nodded without meeting his gaze. Yes I asked Professor Flitwick about it, Hermione said with a small voice, he said that Naruto reminded him of the way his mom Kashina flew back when she was a seeker for Ravenclaw, she finished while their friends just smiled at her encouragingly. Well, he does resemble his mum, but his dad was also no slouch on a broom, even if he was a muggle, well a shinobi, Snape said while reminiscing about the time he met Minato on one of the trips he took on vacation with Kashina to the Leaf. He took us to one of the training grounds and we showed him how we flew, he wanted to give it a shot, practically bouncing around at being able to learn a new thing, just like Naruto does when he is about to learn something new. He continued while he saw Naruto grab the broom that Marcus provided and started doing some laps as warm up. I thought he would fall and break his arm the first time he kicked off, like Mr. Longbottom but he was good. Even if he was shaking a bit. Snape smiled a bit, how he missed two of his only friends. Kashina also taught Minato how to play as chaser, he had one hell of an arm, he could throw some pretty accurate and strong shots. He continued while watching how Naruto evaded a bludger to grab the quaffle when Flint threw at him. Kashina could also be a great chaser but she preferred to play seeker, but when she played chaser, she was great, and that is where her rivalry with Potter began. Snape finished with a smile remembering the good old times with his best friend. So Naruto could be the youngest chaser in Hogwarts history right? Draco said and winced when a bludger almost hit Naruto dead center in the chest when he focused too much on catching the quaffle to avoid the bludger. Yes, but next year if Mr. Potter wants the good old rivalry of the Potters and the Uzumaki could continue, and hopefully stay in the pitch this time, Snape said while throwing a glance towards Harry who was mesmerized by the game. There you are Mr. Potter, your tryout will be after the Slytherin team are done, was heard behind them and they turned to say Professor McGonagall walking with another young man carrying two brooms. Tryout? What do you mean by tryout Minerva? Snape asked shocked by the information. I saw Mr. Potter fly too, fortunately he didn't pull of a stunt like Naruto over there but he did impress both me and Professor Dumbledore to let him try. McGonagall said while smiling towards Harry who was speechless that he was found out when he got his hands on a broom and went for a few laps before curfew last night. You thought you got away with it didn't you? McGonagall said with mirth on her eyes at the nod she got from Harry. But this time it seems the positions are invert dear Severus, Naruto is chaser while Harry is a seeker. McGonagall said with a smile to the potions master. Well it seems the age old rivalry between the Potters and Uzumakis will restart earlier than I thought. Snape said with a challenging look towards McGonagall. He turned to look towards Harry and put on a menacing aura. It better stay in the pitch and not move on to pranks or I will make sure to have you both cleaning cauldrons for the rest of your six years of schooling. He finished with a smirk at the flabbergasted look he got from all the students. After a few hours of Marcus having Naruto run several drills from endurance to speed and hand-eye coordination he proclaimed the tryout over and that he would tell him the results tomorrow at dinner. Naruto saw Harry walk behind another guy towards the pitch with two brooms, when they crossed paths Marcus and the now identified Oliver Wood exchanged sneers and a few scathing remarks while Naruto and Harry talked about the rush of being up there. Finally, Naruto got back to Slytherin common room where his friends were talking and waiting for him, he saw a pair of girls sitting and talking to them so he made his way towards them. So how did you guys think I performed? Naruto asked and sat on Draco's left while he saw that Draco and Theo were playing magical chess. Well, you were one tough bastard I got to give you that, two bludgers to the stomach and you managed to stay on the broom. Blaze said while going over some text that Snape recommended so he could improve his potions. And the way you moved, that is something instinctual, you can't teach that. Draco said while taking another piece of Theo's. That we also have to take into account the training you have going on with your sister, back home. Theo said while thinking of his next move carefully, he could lose the match, again. She must be a sadist to get your reflexes that high. He smirked and moved, and rested against the couch. Yeah, she is a bit bloodthirsty, if not she wouldn't be the second best interrogator, you know that. Naruto bragged and got up of the couch. I'm going to bring my guitar out, 
and walked towards his room. Randy, Kura let's go you guys have been cooped on the room all day go stretch on the common room Kura. Randy you can rest on my shoulders. Naruto said while grabbing his guitar and let Randy slithered up his shoulders while Kura yipped and dashed out of the room. He knew that Kura loved to torture some of the girls and some of the upperclassmen, and Randy liked to lounge on his shoulders or in front of the fire. He came out a few seconds later and he saw Kura being coddled by the two girls that were sitting and talking with Blaze, he recognized them as Tracy Davis and Daphne Greengrass two of the first graders. When he sat down, Tracy and Daphne turned to look at him, and screamed when they saw Randy. Naruto what are you doing you have a huge snake across your shoulders, Tracy shouted, making Randy stick his tongue out and taste the air. Ah, uh, this is Randy, one of my two familiars, the other one is a two-tailed fox kit, Naruto said with a small smile and scratching under Randy's jaw. But it is dangerous, it is a venomous snake, Daphne said a bit more calm but still on edge. When they heard snickering besides them, they turned to see Blaze, Theo, and Draco laughing as quietly as they could. Randy is pretty lazy to be honest, of course when he gets annoyed he tends to throw threats around but rarely he goes through with them, and when Naruto is in danger, he does attack. Draco said while getting near Randy who let him scratch under his jaw, and slithered on his shoulders. See, harmless, unless you annoy him, he finished and came close to Tracy and Daphne. Relax girls, trust me Randy just wants to meet you, Naruto said with a small smile, while translating the hisses Randy said. Do not be afraid of me young one, I do not hurt Thasi that are Naruto's friends ss, Randy said and Naruto translated. Daphne steeled her nerves and let Randy's tongue flicker against her palm, she giggled at the sensation and encouraged Tracy to do the same. After a few moments the girls got comfortable with Randy they saw Naruto strumming his guitar, with a small fox curled next to his leg. And that is the fox kit you were talking about, Tracy said while scratching the mewling kit behind the ears. Yeah. And if you keep petting him like that and giving him treats he won't pester you or torture you, he has quite the mischievous streak of stealing clothes," Naruto said without looking from the chords of the guitar. Can you play us something, like you did back at the Hokage office? Draco asked while playing against Blaze now, and trashing him, again. Sure, I got one. Naruto said and strummed a few chords, cleared his throat making the common room to quiet down a bit. Play. Blood Brothers by Luke Bryan. We were as young as we were dumb. When we piled in an old pile of junk it was one for all, and all for one. A bunch of outlaws without a gun shoot and bad booze out of Dixie cups. Chasing every girl that wasn't fast enough no matter how bad the break or how bad the luck. Or how bad the day you still had his blood brothers closer than your next to kin. Thick as thieves and the best of friends take a bullet for each other. Yay brothers a light that don't come cheap you fight you cry you lie you bleed. And you lean on one another blood brothers I got a scar on my cheek from a barroom brawl. Wasn't meant for me but I took the fall it's a cowboy code it's an unwrote law. When you mess with one you gotta take us all. Blood brothers closer than your next to kin. Thick as these and the best of friends take a bullet for each other. Yea brothers a light that don't come cheap you fight, you cry, you lie, you bleed. And you lean on one another blood brothers time can fly on by. Everything can change until the day we die we'll always remain. We'll remain yea 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 blood brothers closer than you next of kin. Thick as these and the best of friends take a bullet for each other. Yea brothers a light that don't come cheap you fight, you cry, you lie, you bleed. And you lean on one another blood brothers yea yea. Oh oh blood brothers Naruto finished and saw that the ones that were in the common room were staring at him, he laughed sheepishly and turned to see his friends clapping. You got better with that thing mate, Draco said with a grin and clapped Naruto on the back. Yeah man your songs sound way better than what the weird sisters sing right now, Blaze said who knew both muggle songs and magical songs, and he preferred the muggle. That was beautiful Naruto, I didn't know you were that talented, Daphne said with a grin. Yeah, now help me with my damn potions essay, Theo said and started pulling at his hair, making his friends laugh. Naruto was glad that his friends didn't reject him for being different and for having a mass of chakras sealed inside him. Well what did you expected Kit? Here they got to know the real you, not the one the council made you out to be, Kurama said from inside his head, and I have to tell you if you ever get bored from Konoha you could move here, if I remember correctly you should have a property, your mom must have left one, I don't remember that well, he finished with a yawn. I bet you don't remember because you spend all your time sleeping you lazy ass, Naruto said while smirking at the growl he got from Kurama. True but I do remember the Uzumaki Manor was moved to Uzushigakure and then it was destroyed in the Second Shinobi War, but I think she bought an apartment in London, right to the goblins and to your sister, maybe both of you could move here, and begin anew, Kurama said after a moment of thinking and remembering. Yeah, I might do that. Thanks Kurama for helping me out and teaching me, maybe we can do two years back in Konoha if they don't change we just leave what do you think? Naruto asked and got a rumble that he understood that Kurama agreed with the plan. Naruto moved to help Theo with his homework after that laughing at him a bit. Monday came fast for the Slytherin group, last night Marcus announced that Naruto would be the new chaser this year, the whole house cheered, some because they knew Naruto was good to them and always kept the house alive with his pranks and had won several points for them in the first few weeks. The rest cheered because they thought they had a chance this year. Mate we have to get you a broom, Draco said while they made their way to the Great Hall, Theo nodded, while Blaze was talking with Tracy over history's homework. I thought they would let me borrow one this year, 
since no first year student is allowed their own broom. Naruto answered and sat down and grabbed some eggs and bacon to start. Professor Snape said that he had a talk with Dumbledore and McGonagall, you and Harry are allowed to get brooms. Draco answered back with a smirk. Don't worry I can have my father send me the broom catalog by tomorrow morning. He answered when they sat down and started to eat breakfast. The day went slow, history of magic was boring as hell, as always, he fought to stay conscious but to no avail, same with the rest of the class, except Tracy and Blaze, which surprised the gang when they left the classroom. I can't understand how you guys do it to stay awake with the monotonous droning of Professor Bins. Naruto complained to Blaze and Tracy. Tracy just giggled at her new friends complaining. My family owns a small history shop in Diagon Alley. And my mom majored in history of magic. And since I was little I have always liked history. She answered getting wide eyes from Naruto, Draco and Theo who didn't know about her parents. You know how my family is from Italy and well both muggle and magic history is interesting. Blaze answered with a shrug of his shoulders. What are your favorite subjects Naruto? Daphne asked while turning to look to the blonde on her right. Potions and charms. When I went first to Gringotts I didn't have my vault's key. Well my mom never appointed a magical guardian before she died, and the head manager had to check if I was truly in Uzumaki. We found that I had a knack for potions and charms thanks to my mom, and according to Hokage Gigi I have my dad's talent for ninjutsu and fuinjutsu. Naruto answered, making his friend's eyes widen. Wait. Wait what do you mean by ninjutsu and fuin whatever? Blaze asked when they made it to the library. Right you guys don't know about the elemental nations. Well, according to Professor McGonagall, where I am from is hidden even from the magical communities, it's a continent of the coast of Japan. Naruto answered getting nods from Blaze, Daphne and Tracy. We don't use magic per se, we have something more potent, known as chakra. It's the combination of physical and mental energy that let us do different things, from walking on water and other surfaces. Naruto continued his explanation getting wide eyes from his friends, that didn't understand what chakra was. And also different attacks. The elemental nations are in constant war. Naruto said getting gasps from all his friends. So we start training from the age of 6 to become ninjas, we protect the village and do missions to gain money for the village. Naruto continued. You guys remember that I said that I knew how to make poisons and antidotes to use against prisoners right? He said and continued when he received the nod. My older sister works as a torturer and interrogator for the village. That's where I learned how to treat ingredients and all that. Naruto finished. So you joined the military of your own free will, or did they force you? Blaze suddenly asked. I joined to become powerful enough to protect my precious people, besides my dad thought that a bigger war would come, he died the night I was born, along with my mother, but they entrusted me with a huge power to be able to defend my home and precious people. Naruto said getting nods from his friends. And what about you Draco, you explained that you had a marriage contract with one of Naruto's friends is that why you train with Naruto every morning? Tracy asked getting a nod from Draco. Yup, hopefully I will be able to convince Ino and this knucklehead to move here, Draco said while writing a letter to Ino. Well I'm sure that Naruto has an estate same as you, Theo said, if I remember correctly from one of the books I read back home of the old families, the Uzumaki and the Potters were one of the oldest and wealthiest, he finished with a smirk when Naruto looked towards him, and if he does, well we can throw a party there. You should write to Gringotts, to see if you do have an ancestral home, it would be easier to stay communicated during breaks. Blaze said grinning making the rest gathered at the table to laugh, until they were told to be silent. I will, this Saturday. Well I do know that the Uzumaki Manor was destroyed in the second great shinobi war along with the rest of the clan, my mum was already in the leaf so she survived. Naruto said grinning at his friends, he was happy to be here, surrounded by friends that liked him for who he was. Let's go Naruto, fly faster. Marcus Flint the captain for the Quidditch team of Slytherin yelled to his newest player. He was a fan of Kashina Uzumaki, one of the toughest seekers in Hogwarts history, and one hell of a chaser along with James Potter. Keep the bludgers away from him, he yelled again when a bludger came barreling towards Naruto because one of the beaters wasn't paying attention. Fortunately Naruto was able to pull off a move to avoid being hit by the crazy ball as he liked to call them. Come down, Marcus called the team down when they finished the drills. Good practice, but I need you guys to stay focused on the balls okay? Marcus called. Miles I need you to keep your eyes on the quaffle all the time okay, and stop leaving the right ring unprotected, half of the points were through that ring. Marcus told the keeper Miles Bletchley, who simply nodded. Naruto, we need to coordinate the attacks, we can't allow fumbling the quaffle if we have a break, or make a bad pass so the opposing chasers can intercept it alright. Marcus turned to Naruto who nodded, same with you Adrian, we have to bring Naruto into our game style, he has been adapting well but this is just the first week, we have one more month before the first game against Gryffindor and we will need him in sync with us to stop those girls. He turned to the other chaser who just smirked a bit and nodded towards Naruto, they had the same style of playing, rough but clean, even though Naruto seemed to fancy flashier moves. Derek, Bo will keep on practicing your swings, the twins are more in sync than both of you, you will have to make do with strength. Marcus told the two beaters who simply nodded. Terence keep your eyes open for the snitch at all times okay, later on we will see if we start using you to disrupt plays to gain back the quaffle. He finished with the seeker who just smiled and nodded. You got it Marcus, this year we will bring the Quidditch cup home. Terence shouted making the rest of the team cheer with him and chuckle when they left the locker room. Okay Harry your essay is pretty good, I think McGonagall will give you full marks for it, Hermione said while handing back the transfiguration essay the Saturday afternoon. 
Draco, Blaze, and Theo were working on their charms homework, while Tracy was helping Naruto understand some of the history of magic. Harry had just finished his transfiguration essay and was done for the day, he was glad that his friends had been helping both him and Naruto to keep up with homework since they joined their respective house teams, from what Harry heard from Naruto, Flint and Wood were the same slave drivers to their respective teams. So Naruto what broom did you plan on buying? Draco asked when he finally finished working on his homework. A Nimbus 2000 for the moment if a better broom comes out I might buy it too, Anko Nei Chan said that it was fine if I did that, she got hold of my vault key, and contacted the goblins to get a look at how much I had to spend, I got enough to live for a long time. Naruto said while going through Quidditch through the ages. From what I remember the Uzumaki family was both ancient and noble, they were quite powerful wizards and warders, and from some rumors they were able to live for a long time. Tracy answered while looking through a book of ancient houses. Same with the Potters both families were powerful but because of the longevity of the Uzumakis they were more experienced. She finished while looking towards Naruto and Harry. Well fortunately Anko will accept to move here to London with Naruto so we can visit him easier, and I can convince Eno to come live with me. Draco said when they saw a brown owl swoop down and land in front of him with a letter with his family crest on it in a Quidditch broom catalogue. Thanks Athena take a rest. Draco said while untying the letter from the owl's claw, while Daphne pet her making the owl preen under the attention. Tracy was laughing when Kura launched from her lap to sit on Daphne's and stare at the owl. Everybody saw that and Naruto laughed along with Draco. When Tracy and Daphne asked what was so funny Naruto tried to control his laughter. Kura is jealous that you were petting the Malfoy's family owl, he is defending his territory. Either you appease him or he will start stealing your clothes for revenge until you apologize. He did that with Eno for about a week when she was petting a cat, it was quite funny seeing Eno chase after Kura all over the village after he stole her sandal of her favorite dress. Naruto said after he finally controlled his laugh. But it came back hard when everybody started laughing, and Daphne started petting Kura and hugging him saying that she was so sorry for ignoring him. The weeks went by fast for Naruto and his friends. In charms they learned the levitation charm, Wingardium Leviosa, and in transfiguration they learned how to change a matchstick to a needle and back. They continued to brew small potions making Ron and his friends fume in anger when Naruto and Draco kept brewing perfect potions and winning points. Harry was brewing acceptable potions and gaining some points for Gryffindor but that only enraged Ron more. In History of Magic Naruto was still unable to stay awake for more than 5 minutes, while his friends managed 10, except Blaze, Tracy and Hermione. They learned about Devil Snare in Herbology, about its properties and environment, there they saw how some girls were staring at Naruto or more accurately his arms. The girls are staring at your arms again mate, Theo said when they were repotting some plants. Naruto had decided to take his robe and shirt fortunately he was wearing his Under Armour sports shirt. They could see some scars that Draco told them were form kunais and shurikens from training with his big sister. Naruto looked up and saw that Daphne and Tracy were blushing a bit but were stealing glances at his arms, while focusing more on their work. Unfortunately they were the only ones capable of doing that. Pansy Parkinson was staring at his arms with a blush that reminded him of Hanada, same with the Hufflepuff girls. Jealous mate that they are staring at me and not you. Naruto asked and snickered making Theo grumble something akin to, damn blondes with buff arms getting all the birds in the class. Making Naruto and Draco to laugh loudly. Everything alright over there Mr. Not. Professor Sprout asked to Theo who just shook his head and went back to work. Did you enjoy the show ladies? Naruto asked Daphne and Tracy when they left the greenhouse and he was putting on his school shirt again. Daphne giggled when Naruto asked that while Tracy swatted him on the back of his head. Daphne grabbed his arm in a hug and said, I know I did, and while Tracy prefers the way Blaze looks I liked yours more. She finished whispering in his ears making Naruto blush like a tomato making his friends laugh all the way back to the Great Hall. Oh poor Naruto can't keep up with your own witty banter. Daphne teased her friend, who just scowled a bit, they sat down and started to eat lunch when they saw several of the older Slytherin students yelp and see what was under their feet. They saw Kura the fox and Naruto's snake running towards Naruto. Hey guys did you like running around the forbidden forest? Naruto asked while he and Daphne scratched Kura's ears and Randy's mouth. Naruto broke some of his meat for both of them and Randy slithered up his arm and sank onto his skin making it look like a tattoo. Mr. Uzumaki please button up your shirt and put on your tie again. Snape said in a drawl voice making Naruto nod and start buttoning his shirt again. The rest of classes were boring for Naruto, he could barely understand what the Dada professor was stuttering about. They were again in the library just talking a bit about their lives at home, Draco, Theo and Daphne explained to Naruto, Harry and Hermione about customs and traditions and about the house elves, Hermione was inquiring about them to Daphne who decided to prove to Hermione that the elves wanted to work for them. Hey Naruto when is your birthday? Tracy asked from the other side of the table where she was playing chess against Blaze. Uh, October 10th why? Naruto asked a bit nervous, he used to hate his birthday, the glares and insults would become harsher and more, they never beat him, just chased him out of the festival. That is next week. Why did you never told us? Daphne asked, everybody knew everybody's birthday except Naruto's, she saw that Draco, Hermione and Naruto to exchange glances, and then saw Naruto's eyes roll to the back of his head, she was about to jump to wake him up when Draco stopped her. Don't, don't move him or do anything, he is meditating, his instincts are to an all-time high, any movement and he will respond as if he was being attacked. He explained and everybody stared at the sun-kissed boy. Why? 
Tracy asked, sure I understand that he has been training since he was six to join the army of his village but why would he never tell us his birthday? Because it is the date my parents died. They heard and turned around so fast to see that Naruto was looking more somber than ever. Wh what? Blaze stuttered. My dad, gave his life to save my village from a madman and a force of nature. The day I was born a madman that we thought was dead for some hundred years, came back and kidnapped me, my father had to leave my mum behind to save me, that was what he wanted, he took my mum and extracted from her the Kyubi no Kitsune, a fox with nine tails, capable of creating tsunamis with but a swish of his tail. When he was out of my mum the man put an illusion on him and set him loose on my village, my father attacked the man and was able to break the connection between him and the Kyubi, but the Kyubi was enraged he kept on attacking the shinobi of the village. He knew he could not destroy it so he did the second best thing reseal it, unfortunately my mum would not be able to survive the sealing, he knew that I was the only hope for the survival of the village. With his experience in Fuenjutsu he managed to stop him long enough to put the seal on me, using an Uzumaki Fuenjutsu he called upon the death god to take one half of the Kyubi, seal it on himself and then seal the other half on me. When the other half was sealed on me the death god took his payment, my dad's life and the Kiyubi's half that was sealed inside him. At the age of five I was kicked out of the orphanage I was staying, spent a year on the streets learning to survive, until my Nei Chan Anko found me, and took me in. After that I started training to be a shinobi. When I received my Hogwarts letter the Sandame Hokage, he is the village leader after he first left the job to my dad he took it back, told me about the Kiyubi sealed inside me. And I saw my blood test where they told me that I was son of Minato Namikaze and Kashina Uzumaki, an heir of Slytherin and heir of Ravenclaw. Naruto finished telling his tale, he knew he could trust them, they were his friends. He closed his eyes, waiting to be shunned by them except by Hermione and Draco who already knew about Kurama. Relax Kit they won't be like those bastards back in Konoha, they accept you I can feel it. Kurama said while watching with Naruto's eyes the reaction to the news of who he was and why Naruto never talked about his birthday. He could sense that the kits wouldn't turn their back to Naruto. Well, alright so you have a weapon of mass destruction sealed inside you by your father were shunned by your village except a few people from what Draco and Hermione told us about the time they went to your village, and don't like to talk about your birthday. Theo summarized his explanation. Naruto nodded and waited. Daphne and Tracy got up from the table and walked towards him. Naruto closed his eyes and waited for the slap. He never expected the kiss on his cheek and hear someone sobbing on his shoulder he opened his eyes and saw Daphne crying and hugging him, saying that she didn't care about that and even if he was a mercenary or parcel tongue, she cared about him. He hugged her back and smiled fondly. Daphne, can I hug him now? Tracy said with a small smile in her face. When Daphne got up from the embrace he had Naruto and Tracy launch herself towards him in the same manner Daphne did and repeated the actions Daphne did making everybody laugh. Blaze just shrugged his shoulders and told him that he didn't care, and that his mother was thought to kill her previous six husbands and that they always left her all of their money and possessions. Well my father, was a Death Eater, he supported the Dark Lord, he was in the inner circle and managed to escape jail bribing the minister and claiming being imperialist, Theo said to Naruto. So you see we all are fucked in some ways, but don't worry if he comes back as my father claims I will side with you and Naruto he finished telling both Harry and Naruto. Fortunately my father wasn't a Death Eater, but he does believe in blood supremacy. Draco said. That was why I asked if you were pure bloods, muggleborns or half bloods, and why my mum said what she said back at Madame Malkin's, and why I asked you to tell my father that you were pure bloods if you ever met him. Draco told Hermione about the way some pure bloods would look down upon muggleborns. So what did the letter that came with the catalogue for our brooms said Draco? Harry asked when they finished telling their lives to the others. Oh, I almost forgot about it. Draco said while laughing sheepishly. Come on Drake tell us. Blaze started to push Draco a bit. Fine fine I will tell you. My father heard from the board of governors that both you and Harry were allowed to try out for the Quidditch team. That he was proud of Naruto, because he remembered your mum, and that to be careful if we ever annoyed you because if you were like you mum that you would either prank the living hell out of me or beat me up, I think that happened to him once. He also told me that he approved of the marriage contract between me and Eno, and that he went to talk to Mr. Inoichi, and that mother told him about Hermione being a muggleborn. He said that he went to talk to them, with my mum to see how they were and to prove to father that the muggles were advancing, from what I understand they spend a full day with your parents talking and explaining both worlds. I think he likes them. Draco said while he was going through the letter making all those around the table to widen their eyes, they knew that Lucius Malfoy was blood purist and thought that the muggles were a waste of space same with the muggleborns. And that he approved of our friendship with Harry, said something about not being seen as dark anymore, and that you three were invited to spend Christmas halls with us this year and not to worry about your family that he already got their permission to take you in this halls, and if you had any questions about traditions to send him a letter. Draco finished making both Harry and Naruto to drop their jaws at the news. Well that proves that everybody can change, and if a man can change his views then that means that the woman behind him is twice as great, Theo said with a smile making everybody laugh. The week before Naruto's birthday was the same as the last month, boring in certain classes and exciting in others, he also started to prank people. He started slow, pranking the Hufflepuffs changing their shampoos so their hair either fell off or changed colors randomly, then with Draco's help he went after the Ravenclaws sticking to the color changes they convinced the house elves that made the laundry to put the powder to the Ravenclaws robes to change colors after walking into a room. The one house they were unable to prank was the Gryffindor house, they couldn't prank Harry because he would know who did it, 
So Naruto went after the stupid trio, and started to send Jinx and Hexes to them along with Draco and Theo. They stopped their assault on the Griffins when the Weasley twins started to prank them back. They knew they had to plan something to get back at the twins but they couldn't think of anything to do, fortunately they had cleaned their fingerprints so they could not be traced back to them. Well mates it's time to decide if we raise the white flag against the twins or we come up with something. Draco said from his side of the table with notes on different pranks he had thought of over the years. I will not give up. Naruto yelled and slammed his hands on the table. My title as the king of pranks is on the line I will not let the twins take it, he said and got the attention of the rest of the common room. So it was you that pranked the puffs, said Daphne who looked up to the blonde. Uh, no? Naruto tried to divert the attention towards something else. Im I'm sure you didn't, tell me now. Daphne said with a tone every man was taught to fear. I changed their shampoos with some things I had in my prank kit Anko Ne Chan sent me last month. Naruto broke down making Draco and Theo to shake their heads. At how easy he gave himself up. And what did you two help him with? She turned her attention to Draco and Theo who were trying to sneak back to their dorms before Daphne could question them. Um, we were with the Ravenclaw's robe changes, Theo and Naruto put some stuff on the doors that reacted to the powder that the elves used to wash their robes so they would change every time they walked through a door. Draco also broke down to the might of Daphne's ice glare. And? We started to jinx and hex the stupid trio, and Theo was broken. So the twins decided to attack the Slytherin because of you three showing them up just a month into the school year. Asked Miles to Naruto who just nodded. Well you guys have given us a few good laughs, Marcus said in between laughs making the rest of the Slytherin to laugh a bit. Just don't get caught and lose points. The whole room shouted making the three to shrink on themselves. Finally October 10th came around fortunately they didn't have class that Saturday. Naruto woke up to see both Randy and Kura sprawled on his bed sleeping, he was glad to have them as his familiar. He got off his bed and walked to the bathroom, today his friends agreed to not do exercise so Naruto could enjoy the day. After taking a shower he saw that Draco wasn't on his bed sleeping, so he simply shrugged and walked to the common room, he saw some fifth and seventh years studying for their OWLs and NEWTs he bade them good morning and left for the great hall to grab some breakfast. When he got there he couldn't find any of his friends in either of the houses, he simply let it be, so he sat down and started to pile some eggs and bacon. He ate in silence when the post owls arrived. He saw six owls flying with a parcel in between them towards him, and several three more owls behind them. When they all landed in front of him he cut the strings that tied the owls to the parcels and offered them a bit of bacon and juice for their long trips. He did the same for the two owls that had boxes tied to them and saw the last one had a scroll. Thanks, here eat a bit before you have to return. He said and saw how they gobbled up some of the bacon and drank from his orange juice, he laughed a bit until another owl landed in front of him, he recognized it as Harry's owl. Hey Hedwig, is that for me? He asked and when he saw the owl nod he took it and petted Hedwig who preened under his care a bit, nipped his finger affectionately and flew to the owlery. He took the biggest parcel and felt it around, he recognized it as the broom he ordered, he took the tag and he saw he was correct, it was sent from the company itself. Nimbus 2000 number 0002. Thanks for buying the second broom of this broom type, we hope you enjoy it and that it helps you outfly the rest. It read making Naruto chuckle at the letter and he remembered that the catalog that Harry and him ordered the brooms was sent directly to the Nimbus company thanks to Mr. Malfoy, he decided to write to both the owner and Mr. Malfoy for it. The second box he saw was from the Malfoys he opened it and saw Quidditch gloves for chasers. This are Hungarian horntail dragon hide chasers gloves, Draco told us that you would be chaser this year, so we thought that I would be a great present besides the broom that Lucius bought you. Love Narcissa and Lucius Malfoy PS call us, uncle, and, aunt Sissa, we hope to see you this Christmas little maelstrom. Naruto chuckled a bit of the letter and saw that he was crying a bit at the way Narcissa addressed him, and re-read it when he saw that the broom was a gift from Mr. Malfoy, he smiled. The third box he opened was from Professor Snape, he peered inside and saw that was an advanced potions kit and two books, one on pranking potions and a journal, he took the letter that was inside and read it. The following kit is the one I started using on 6th grade with your mother and Potter's mother, it comes with the essential for 6th grade potions with one or two rare ingredients and an extra kit specifically for pranking potions. The book is on potions more commonly used for pranks, hopefully you can use it back in the leaf, or here but make sure to not leave traces and that you are not caught. The smaller book is a prank journal that your mother kept, she would write every prank she used and was used against her on the prank war marauders vs whirlpool. S. Snape P.S. make sure to get back to those twins. Naruto's smile grew even bigger when he saw that the small book was from his mum, and now had another weapon against the Weasley twins. The scroll he knew was from home, Hiya Naru Chan. I hope that you have a great day today and that you are having a blast at school, Ino, Shikamaru, Choji and their parents send their regards and presents. Kakabaka also sends his present but won't tell me what he sent you, hopefully not some Icha Icha. Iruka kun and Sandame Gigi also sent their regards and their presents hope you like them. My present is double the one you get today and the one when you go to Malfoy Manor for break, so I hope you like them. Love Anko Ne Chan and the rest. Naruto saw that at the end of the scroll there was a chibi Anko giving a peace sign with a dango stick hanging from her mouth. He laughed when he saw it and couldn't help but miss his friends back in Konoha. He finally took the letter Hedwig brought and opened it. Meet us in the second floor third door on the left. He just stared at the letter, he knew it was from his friends, he would recognize the way that Daphne would write. 
He grabbed the packages and saw that the scroll had three more spaces to store so he put his presents in the spaces quickly and sealed them, he walked to the classroom that Daphne instructed. He is coming quick. Hide. Tracy whispered harshly when she spotted Naruto coming to the door. When they saw him enter the classroom with just a scroll in hand they jumped from their hiding spot. Surprise. They all shouted making Naruto jump a bit and make his eyes go wide when he saw the banner. Happy birthday Naruto. He smiled when he saw all the friends he made in the school. Hermione and Draco were the first ones to reach him and pull him into a hug, Theo Blaze and Harry with Hedwig on his shoulder were next congratulating him, then came Tracy and Daphne who each gave him a hug and a kiss on the cheek, and at the end he saw the Quidditch team with a smile and they went around giving him congratulations and everything. Guys, this is, it's amazing. Thanks. Really thank you. Naruto said with some tears on his eyes. Well we have been organizing this since you told us. Blaze told him, Hermione, Tracy, and Daphne put everything together. Making the girls blush a bit but smile nonetheless. First the presents, then we can get to the cake. Marcus said with a smile and motioning forward to Derek and Bowl who came lumbering with a case in between them. This is from the Slytherin Quidditch team. Marcus waved his wand towards the case, which opened and they saw a brand new set of Quidditch and its own copy of Quidditch through the ages, we know that you don't own your own set, so we all pitched in some and bought it for you. Marcus finished with a grin. Thanks guys it is amazing, Naruto said and shook all of the team's hands. You were one of us know both in the house and in the pitch we have your backmate. Terence said with a huge smile, making the rest of the team smile. Okay Daphne, Tracy your turn, Marcus said and stepped back. We also pitched in, well more like our mums went and got it for us. Tracy said and walked forward with a big box, same with Daphne. The box that Daphne has is full of wizard's clothing, you know robes and the like, and also comes with a replica of the ENQT robe. While this one is full of muggle clothes so you can use them to blend in, I bet you will go in between, my mum and dad do that all the time. Tracy said while hugging Naruto, when she let go he was glomped by Daphne who had a megawatt smile on her face. Theo, Blaze, Harry your turn. Tracy said when Daphne and her walked back to the table. Well, I knew you would need a book on traditions so I got you a copy that explains in great detail each tradition since Merlin's time. Theo said and handed him a book that Naruto smiled graciously, he created a clone surprising the Quidditch team and the girls. My mum sent me a book on the ancient families for you so you could see what your ancestors were like, she also sends her regards and says that you all are welcome to our house whenever you need it. Blaze said making Naruto smile and man hug him thanking him. I didn't know what to get you, so I got you some sweets that I know you loved eating back in the train. Harry said and gave Naruto a basket filled with his favorite magical sweets, Naruto thanked him and his smile got bigger when he spotted the Bertie box of all flavors. Hermione, Draco your turn guys, Harry said with a smile, he hoped that Naruto liked his gift and by the look he was giving some of the sweets he was right. I got you a book, Hermione said while pulling said book from the bag, while everybody snickered at the way she acted with the books. Well actually there are two books one is a planner so you can keep track of homework and projects. The other one is one I remembered seeing in Flourish and Bots, she handed him the two books. It was written by your mom, I got it when you guys weren't looking it is about self-defense. I haven't read it yet, I left my copy and Draco's copy back home, Hermione said while Naruto was staring at the book. She saw in the back cover a photo of a redhead woman that looked to be in her twenties, she looks beautiful don't you think Naruto? Hermione whispered when everybody saw that he was staring at the photo of the woman. That she was, she also had a temperament when teased about her beautiful hair, I wish I had red hair like hers. Naruto whispered, some didn't understood what he was talking about, but Harry just nodded. Thanks my own Chan, Naruto said and hugged the bushy-haired girl, who just smiled and returned the hug. Draco your turn. Hermione said and backed off. Mother, father and Severus along with Professor McGonagall and Professor Flitwick cooperated to get you this. Draco said and handed him a photo album, Mum sends her love along with this. He finished handing Naruto a paper that everybody recognized. Thanks Drake. Thanks for the wonderful gifts and all that you guys have done for me this past month, from training me in Quidditch, to help me understand this new world, to help me with my homework, to simply being my friends. Naruto said with choked words. He saw in the paper that Narcissa and Lucius were wanting to be his magical guardian and godparents. Drake, tell Aunt Sissa that I would love to be their godson, Naruto said showing everybody what the letter said. Dear Maelstrom Lucius and I have talked about this for over a month now, Lucius and Severus were good friends with your mother. So Lucius decided that we would become your magical guardians, if you need anything you write to us and we will let Hiruzen or Anko know. We also are able to take you out of school if needed or if you have an accident. We also know that you might already have a godparent but since nobody can reach him, we talked to Hiruzen and Anko and told them what we planned, Anko accepted immediately, while Hiruzen thought it over but at the end he accepted. We hope that you have a great semester and that you are doing good on your classes. We will see you this Christmas love Aunt Sissa. They all cheered, the Quidditch team knew a bit of Naruto's past from what he had told them from time to time. While the rest already knew his story, everybody was glad that he was having a great day. So what did the rest send you? Blaze asked making everybody laugh. Naruto opened the scroll and unsealed all his gifts. From the potions kit that made Draco and Theo smirk and Daphne to frown towards them. To the Hungarian horntail dragon hide chaser gloves that Marcus and Adrian admired. To the shogi and go board that Shikamaru sent along with instructions on how to play. To the new books that Kakashi sent him so he could learn new styles to play on his guitar. 
to the care package that Choji sent with several bowls of ramen and dango that Naruto started to drool, thanking Choji. To a pair of earring studs from Ino and a letter, Dear Nisan. I miss you a lot, I know that you have been following my orders of getting Draco Kun in shape, thanks for that. Now me and daddy send you this pair of earring studs to represent the friendship you have with Choji, Shika and I, hopefully they don't tell you anything about them in school, but knowing you, you won't care and neither will I. I hope you have a great day, we miss you back here, and can't wait to see you. Love Ino Ne Chan your lovable and sexy twin. Naruto was speechless, he knew that those studs were special for the Akamichi, Nara, and Yamanaka, if you had been gifted you were recognized as part of their family. Daphne took the case that the studs were in. Marcus is there any rule that says that male students can't wear earrings, she asked, and smiled when Marcus shook his head no after thinking a bit. But, I would ask Professor Snape too just in case and to see if he can charm them along with Professor Flitwick, he said after thinking it a bit more. Daphne just nodded and returned the studs to Naruto who smiled to Marcus thanking him. He went back to the scroll and pumped chakra in the seal that said Uruka, when the smoke cleared he saw, homework and a letter. Dear Naruto-kun you might have escaped my perfectly aimed erasers when you slept during lectures and might be good at escaping the ambu, congrats. However you won't be able to escape this year review test, I need you to read the books I sent you, and that you answer the test before you see Anko, she will make sure that I receive them, I know you will think it is pointless but this is to see if you will be able to graduate with your friends. I also sent you a scroll with some control exercises. I know you are thinking that this is homework, the only homework I sent you is the review exam. The scroll is for you to practice more. With your huge chakra reserves you will need it to perform lower tire jutsu. Iruka. Naruto groaned when he finished the letter, and he groaned again when he heard that Daphne, Tracy and Hermione would help him study. Great more work, he tugged at his hair making his friends laugh. He went back to the scroll and saw that his Gigi had sent him something. He pumped chakra again and saw three scrolls pop out, he opened them and saw that it was three jutsus. He saw that one was the Shunsha no Jutsu. The other one was the famous technique that his father created the Rasengan. And the final scroll was several books on Fuenjutsu. The letter told him that he needed to learn from them so he could be able to recreate his father's most famous technique the Hiroshin no Jutsu. He also said that he would make both his parents proud, even if he was able to only master one technique. Naruto was determined to be able to use both in tandem like his father and then improve them. The last one was from Anko. Naruchan this time Kakabaka won't be able to beat me to give you a guitar I made sure of that. Anyways after Lucia San and Narcissa San came to talk to Hokage-sama I went with them to the bank where both your parents' wills and inheritance were stashed. After getting to talk to your account manager and him telling me you were filthy rich from both what your dad made from all his missions. Your mom did from her missions, and your family's made for over the years, I decided that if things don't change in two years for both of us here in Konoha that we will cut all ties with them, no we will not be nuke nins we will just quit, and move to London, so in that case I asked the goblins, nice creatures them lot, I like their bloodthirsty attitude, to get us a nice big flat, with a potions lab so I can keep making poisons and all the good stuff. It is near the bar that is the entrance from London to the alley as Lucia San said. They hooked it up with everything, both magical and mundane as they put it, don't ask me how they did that. I will also be there to pick you from the train and then we will go with the Malfoy clan to their manor to spend the vacation with them. I miss you Otudo hope you are having a great time at school. Love Anko Ne Chan. Naruto unsealed what Hermione's dad said was an electric guitar, he loved the design and saw the different seals and saw other stuff that he didn't recognize. That is a wicked thing mate. Do you know how to play it? Blaze said recognizing the guitar same with Hermione. I can play an acoustic guitar, but I plan on learning to play this one too. Naruto said with a huge smile making everybody in the room smile. It is great to be here, I am happy here, I might try to convince Anko to move earlier and not go back this summer to Konoha. Keep it up people. Flint shouted to the Slytherin team that was running some endurance drills. Good everybody down, we are done for the day, he said when the Gryffindor team came onto the pitch. Naruto nodded to the twins who were grinning and had their hair dyed pink, along with the three chasers. We admit, one of the twins began saying, that what you did, the other followed. Was clever but, repeated the first one, Naruto thought that was Fred. This prank demands retaliation, finished the other who Naruto thought was George. So be wary from, the wrath of the magnificent. Dashing, handsome, clever, twins Gred and Forge, they finished together. You also forgot to say annoying, and stupid, one of the chasers said with a smirk at hurt looks the twins sent her. They also forgot to ask how in the seven circles of hell he was able to sneak the dye on our shampoos since we have been warding against him, the other chaser asked while eyeing Naruto who was smiling innocently next to Harry who was shaking his head. Yeah I want to know how you did it, the last chaser said with a glare towards Naruto. Well, Naruto began and motioned everybody to get closer, both teams leaned into the blonde who was smirking, that is trade secret see ya, and with a hand sign he disappeared with a poof. You will never get it out from me be wa ha 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 ha, they turned and saw another Naruto near the entrance of the locker room. By the way you might want to take some extra soap to the showers tonight, and with that he fled towards the Slytherin common room before anybody could say anything. What did he means by extra soap to the showers, Wood asked while staring where the mischievous blonde fled. Um Wood you might want to take a look at us and yourself, he heard Angelina his best chaser say while trying to hold a laugh. 
Wood turned around and saw everybody had literally swapped house colors. He looked down and saw he was also a victim of said change. That damn brat. Katie Bell his youngest and newest chaser shouted. This is the second time he gets me with something, she continued to shout. What was the first time? Alicia Spinnett his last chaser asked while trying to hold a laugh and failing same with the twins, Harry and the Slytherin team. He slipped something into your breakfast goblet didn't he? Asked Terence while in between laughs, at the nod he bursted into a newer set of laughs and pointed. He did the same with me, making our voices swap for the day. He finished making some laugh and Katie fume. Ah relax Bell, he has gotten all of us at least once Miles said when he controlled his laughs. He has? Harry asked to the older keeper. He was about to ask when both Flint and Wood told their respective teams to go, onto the showers the other to start a warm up. The twins were talking about how they planned on getting back at the Slytherin blonde, while Alicia and Angelina kept on laughing and poking fun at a still fuming Katie. Finally I get the damn spell, was heard around the Slytherin common room, several older students chuckled at the shouts remembering their experience with first year transfiguration. See I told you, well Karama told me to tell you to relax to let your magic flow better. Naruto said after he showed Tracy the wand movements, he went back to strumming his new guitar, he was going over a book that explained how to play rock and roll. Naruto. What is your wand made of? Tracy asked when she saw Naruto was about to put away his wand. Uh? Oh it is made of elder wood, basilisk skin and it's 11 inches. The crafter said that normally basilisk skin cores are more suited for dark magic, but said that with my determination I could break that misconception, besides it is more suited for offensive magic. Naruto explained to his friends and showed them the crafted wand, the pommel was crafted as the head of a viper lunging to strike its prey, the wood gave it an ancient coloring. Tracy, Blaze and Daphne stared at the beautiful wand and processed the information that Naruto's wand was a rather strange combination, but yet it was a powerful one. Draco was chuckling while Daphne was focusing on their shogi game, after reading the rules and playing several times against Naruto and being trounced with no sense she thought she could beat Draco, unfortunately she was still unable to do so. No no if I move that here he has an open field to attack and capture more pieces, damn it why is it so complicated, she gripped and glare at the silver blonde who was smirking towards her. Naruto can you help me with this part of the potions essay? Theo asked his best friend who just nodded and sat near him to see what he was doing. You forgot to put in why the clockwise and counterclockwise are important to the potion, Naruto said after going over the parchment. Yes, I do remember when Kashina would fly, it gave both her and me a sense of freedom, nobody to hold us down, we were free of any attachment, Karama said while relieving one of his memories of flying when Kashina let him see through her eyes, making Naruto smile. You two got along pretty good didn't you? Naruto asked Karama. When I was first sealed inside her, I would roar at her and tell her that I would eat her and all her friends then burn the village down, after she exploded and started shouting stuff and d-a-t-e-b-a-n-e, -E, she punched me in the muzzle, we butted heads for five years, the only time we were friends was when she was flying, then she sat down and came to her mindscape, she sat in front of me and told me she was sorry and wanted to be my friend, so she could protect everybody she loved. I was stunned at her attitude, so I told her to let me be for a week, when said week was up she came back in and said the same thing, after the sixth week that she did the same I finally accepted her offer, we worked better together, and she became a powerful witch and kunoichi, while I got a better reputation when they found out about me. Karama said while remembering his friend, so full of life, passion, love, it was so intoxicating that made everybody be drawn by her. She was a great person, and a great friend wasn't she? Naruto asked, he only got a grunt and a snore making him chuckle. He opened his eyes to see Tracy close to him, poking his cheek. Can I help you? Naruto asked after a few seconds. I have to ask, are those whisker marks, sensitive? Tracy asked while she poked his cheeks making his friends turn around with expectant looks. Um, air, Duno Anko Nei Chan would always pat me on the head, but nobody not even Eno Chan would go near my whisker marks, he answered while looking away with a blush. Great was the last thing he heard, until he felt someone rubbing a hand over his whiskers, he never saw what happened next. A few seconds later he opened his eyes when the hand stopped, he opened his eyes and saw all his friends staring at him with wide eyes. What? Do I have something in my face? He asked with confusion. Draco, Theo and Blaze were snorting while trying not to laugh, they were failing miserably. Tracy and Daphne on the other hand were staring with a twinkle on their eyes, which meant one thing, they were going to torture him. You, you just purred when Tracy ran her fingers over your whiskers, Draco said and broke into laughing like a maniac, Theo and Blaze were not too far. WH, what? Naruto asked and saw both Daphne and Tracy advance towards him. Girls, girls, stay back, stay back I'm warning you. Naruto was shouting frantically trying to move away but saw that Theo had sandwiched him against the arm of the couch. Back off Datbeo, he shouted and managed to put his guitar on Theo's hand before he was plowed of the couch by two of his friends. Daphne and Tracy started to run their fingers over his whiskers, Naruto couldn't help it and leaned into their touch and purred. After a few minutes of doing that they got of him, he stirred from his limbo and sat up. Well, that was unexpected, Naruto said while taking his guitar from a laughing Theo. He smacked him upside the head for good measure. Well, was your little experiment fruitful Trace? He asked with a small glare. He huffed and looked away when Tracy just smiled innocently and nodded. Good, you ain't going to do that again, he said with a small glare and strummed his guitar. 
Daphne smirked and draped herself over Naruto's shoulder, do I get to do it again Naruto, kun? She asked and batted her eyelashes at Naruto lovingly, she giggled when she saw Naruto stammered around for an answer. Naruto play something, they heard from the other side of the common room, they all looked up and saw the other first years. Pansy Parkinson, a pug-faced girl that always had her nose stuck up the air, except when she was ogling at Naruto's arms, which was almost all the time when Naruto was on the common room. Millicent Bullstrode another girl that was tall for her age and looked quite menacing, always was wearing a frown on her face. Jenna Moon a brunette that had a cold glare, and whenever Theo looked her way she would blush, and would glare at Daphne whenever she saw her talking to Theo. Rose Johnson a petite blonde that would always glare at Tracy when she would walk or talk with Blaze, which was almost daily. Vincent Crabb and Gregory Goyle were the last two male students, they looked like small gorillas. Uh, alright, give me a sec okay Pansy? Naruto answered, making Pansy smile at him and bat her eyelashes in what she thought was pretty. Play. Anthem for the underdog by Twelve Stones, you say you know just who I am. But you can't imagine what waits for you across the line. You thought you had me but I'm still here standing. And I'm tired of backing down and I'm here now feeling the pain. Of a thousand hearts been to hell and back again I won't take this. You try so hard to bring me down you can't break the broken. You still don't seem to understand it's your turn to see just. How it feels to be me how it feels to be knocked down. And you're here now feeling the pain of a thousand hearts. You've been to hell and back again you can't take this. Remember this feeling how it feels to be alive now you see me through my eyes. And we're here now feeling the beat of a thousand hearts. Coming back to life again we can make it remember this feeling. Remember Naruto finished playing on his new guitar, the students that were lounging around the room clapped. Thank you. Thank you I am here every day from 8 to 10, donations are appreciated but not necessary. Naruto said and created a clone that went around the room with a hat on his hands receiving nuts, sickles, and galleons. After a month of seeing Naruto creating clones to study, and help his friends the Slytherin house was used to it, some asked about it and Naruto explained where he was from it was a common occurrence. So how much did you gather? Draco asked when the clone returned and gave the hat back to the original. Not much, 10 galleons, 40 sickles, and 30 nuts. A bit more than last time. Naruto answered after he finished counting the money. Well look at it this way, you get to have some pocket money for the train ride back to London. Blaze said while chuckling. Halloween came faster than they anticipated. Naruto gathered everybody in the library and just sat with Harry helping him with his homework. Everybody knew what that day meant. The day the Dark Lord was vanquished thanks by the sacrifice of Lily Potter. You know. I understand how you feel. Naruto just said when he caught Harry's eyes that seemed to be trying to hold back tears. Hey where is Hermione? Theo asked suddenly. Dunno, didn't see her after charms, we were practicing the levitating charm, and she was partnered with Weasley, she was trying to help him and he just snapped at her. Harry answered while shrugging his shoulders. Well hopefully we will see her at the feast. Let's go. Blaze said while putting his quill and ink bottle away. The great hall was decorated magnificently, they could see bats fluttering around the tables, while jack-o-lanterns were floating around. The house ghosts were milling around their house tables, and there were food, and sweets everywhere. This is really good, Blaze said in between bites, making Naruto and Theo nod along him. Draco, Daphne and Tracy were discussing about traditions, and why some were being forgotten. Draco theorized that it was because some Muggleborns were trying to change the wizarding world's view, trying to accommodate their festivities and forget the old traditions. Troll. Troll in the dungeons. Thought you ought to know, Quirrell came in running through the huge double doors getting everybody's attention. Suddenly he collapsed and the panic started. Students were shouting and getting into massive hysteria, until they heard three loud bangs. Silence. Prefects please escort your houses to your common rooms, Dumbledore said and swept out of the Great Hall without a second glance. Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff's prefects started to bark orders to the younger years while the Gryffindor prefects started to push their housemates to their tower. Does he even care that out common room is on the dungeons? Right where said troll is supposed to be? Blaze suddenly said, getting Marcus Flint to stop on his tracks. Fuck. Fuck fuck fuck. He started cursing. Terence, Aoife get them to the library. He shouted to the older two prefects. They just nodded and started to herd them to the library. Guys, Hermione wasn't with the Ravenclaws and she wasn't at the feast, we have to find her and get her to safety. Draco, Theo, Blaze, and Naruto turned and saw Harry running towards them. Shit, girls, go with them. Do not argue with me right now, she is in danger go. I will not let any of my friends get hurt. Just go damn it. Naruto said looking to Tracy and Daphne who were about to protest that they wanted to help. Tracy stared into Naruto's slitted and red eyes making her shiver a bit. Daphne just glared defiantly until Tracy pulled her towards the library. Cage Bush and no jutsu, find Hermione right now. Naruto ordered to his ten clones who just nodded and left to find her. Three minutes later he received a memory of a bathroom where clone heard some sniffling, said clone was the only one to find any sign of any leftovers. Let's go, he said and started running to the bathroom where he hoped Hermione was. Moment later Naruto, a barely winded Draco, and a panting Harry, Theo and Blaze arrived at the girls' bathroom. Hermione Chan are you there? Naruto called when the crying stopped he smiled. What are you doing here Naruto, this is a girl's bathroom, Hermione said and opened the door of the loo she was in, she stared at all her male best friends questioningly. 
Let's go somehow a troll got into the castle, we came to warn you, we haven't seen you since you had charms last. Theo said trying to explain why they came running into the girl's loo. R-A-A-A-A-R-G-H-H, -h, was heard right outside the door, second later it was demolished and the group saw a troll. Well, fuck me, Naruto summarized it perfectly the feelings and thinking of the rest of his friends. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto said while forming the hand seals creating 15 clones. Distract him. He commanded his clones, some pulled kanais and started to throw them towards the troll, some tried to cast some jinx or curses to beat the troll. Getting help from Theo, Harry, and Draco. You morons. Troll skin is magic resistant, Blaze and Hermione hollered at the same time. Shit. I didn't want to do this. Guys back off, clones hold him down for a SEC. Naruto hollered to everyone. He started to focus his chakra to his right hand. Easy kit, let your chakra flow like you let your magic flow, start rotating your chakra in every direction. Good now add the power but keep the rotations, that's it kit you are doing M-A-R-V-E-L-L-O-U-S-E. -L -L -E. Now the shape, I know you can do this you have had hundreds of clones doing this for hours since you got the scroll. I trust you, your friends count on you and trust you, now let that troll feel the power of the single most dangerous a ranked assassination technique ever created. Kurama started to tell Naruto, thanking that a few seconds inside Naruto's mindscape was but a second outside. Everybody in the bathroom stared at Naruto, more specifically his hand, where they saw a blue sphere form over it. Rasengan, Naruto ran towards the troll that was being held down by his clones. Take this you piece of shit. Naruto bellowed when he reached the troll and rammed the Rasengan into its gut. All of his friends were speechless at what Naruto just did. The troll was sent flying towards one of the walls, unconscious with a huge burn mark on its belly. Naruto are you okay? Blaze was the first one to get out of his shock, to see Naruto cradling his hand towards his chest. Yeah, this has happened regularly for two weeks. Just some chakra burns, Naruto tried to explain. They heard the footsteps coming towards the bathroom, a few moments later they saw the professor staring at the unconscious troll, then towards the first year students that were in the bathroom. What happened here? McGonagall asked with her mouth in a thin line and staring pointedly to Naruto asking for an explanation. We found the troll and beat it, Theo said trying to not stare directly at the glare that Snape was shooting all of his favorite students. Mind explaining more in detail. Dumbledore asked with a twinkle in his eyes, projecting a grandfatherly aura. Well, Naruto was about to explain when he stifled a shout and fell to his knees. Easy there kit, I can't heal your hand right now, you wasted more chakra than I predicted when you created that Rasengan to knock out that beast. Kurama rumbled inside his mind, making Naruto sigh and nod. It was all my fault professor, I had read about the trolls, and thought I would be able to beat one all on my own, the boys just came in time to see me pinned down by it, and they interfered. Hermione suddenly said, getting wide eyes from her friends. Oh my, Mrs. Granger that was reckless of you. 50 points from Ravenclaw for your poor thinking, Professor Flitwick, Hermione's head of house piped in with his squeaky voice, making Hermione look down and nod her head. Of to your common rooms, you will finish the feast there. Dumbledore just said with that twinkle in his eye, and swept out of the room, after seeing the burn mark on the troll's belly. Snape guided his snakes to the dungeons, while McGonagall guided Harry and Hermione to their common rooms. Mind explaining what really happened back there. Snape asked in his silky voice making Theo and Blaze sweat a bit, while Draco didn't show any outside reaction while inside he was freaking out. We found Hermione crying in the bathroom, after Blaze pointed out to Marcus about how we were heading towards the troll's location, Aoife and Terence guided the rest of the house and left to the library. I sent some clones to look for Hermione, so we could get her away into the library where we would be with the rest of the house. She was explaining to us, how Ron Weasley told her off and called her a know-it-all when she was only trying to help him at charms. When we were about to get out, the troll busted the door down, we tried several of the jinxes, hexes, and curses we have been practicing on the side, when Blaze and Hermione reminded us of how troll skin was magical resistant, I sent more clones to hold it down for a few seconds so I could pull of a jutsu that Hokage Gigi sent me for my birthday. When I had it I rushed to the troll and slammed it on his belly and sent him crashing to the wall knocked out, and with burn marks on its belly, unfortunately my healing factor hasn't kicked in because of my low reserve of chakra right now. Hopefully by tomorrow morning it will be healed. Naruto finished explaining towards a gaping Snape. Well, that is quite the adventure, 25 points for thinking of the safety of your peers, and another 25 points for incapacitating a fully grown mountain troll, Snape said after a few seconds. Now I recommend you get a good night's sleep, tomorrow you have a long day of classes, he finished and said the password for the portrait to let them in. When they finally were in they walked towards Tracy and Daphne, when they saw them they ran and hugged everybody but Naruto. When Tracy had let go of Draco she walked towards Naruto, she stared at him for a second, and slapped him hard on the cheek, she turned and walked away. Daphne did the same, but for the other cheek. You do not order me around Uzumaki. I am my own person, not your subordinate to command me in that way. Daphne hissed and turned around, she left the whole common room gaping at what just had happened. Naruto, mate are you okay? Theo asked when he saw that Naruto still had his face turned from the slap. I'm fine Theodore. Naruto said numbly and walked towards his room. Are you okay Naruto? He heard Randy hiss at him with concern. I am, just confused. He hissed back and got under his covers where Kura and Randy lie down and curled around respectively and the three fell asleep. 
The next morning Naruto got up at his usual time, he was about to go wake up Draco, Theo and Blaze but thought differently and he left to do his morning exercise. When he finished he saw that Draco was still sleeping, he just went ahead and took a shower, put on his robes, and left for the great hall to get breakfast. When he got there he saw Daphne, Tracy, Theo and Blaze already eating, he just walked past them without a glance, he never saw the hurt looks from his friends. You know, you two should apologize for what you did last night, Theo said while he ate some fruit. Excuse me. He ordered us to leave with the rest of the house as if we were dogs, just to go on an adventure. I don't think so, Tracy said while glaring towards Theo who just sighed and let the matter drop. Whatever, I don't care about him, anymore. I thought he considered us his friends. Daphne said after taking a sip from her pumpkin juice. He told you that so you wouldn't be hurt. Blaze said from behind the Daily Prophet. The girls just snorted and kept on eating. Morning guys, did Naruto woke you up so we could go work out? Draco said while he sat down. No, I think he let us sleep in after we fought that troll. I still wonder how he burned both the troll's belly and his hand, Theo answered. Hum, he didn't wake me up either, and when that happens Kura or Randy normally do it for him. Draco said while thinking, have you seen him? He asked after he ended looking for the sun-kissed blonde. He walked by without telling us anything, Daphne answered bitterly. I don't see him, he isn't near the older Slytherin, nor is he with Hermione or Harry, Blaze said after looking all over the Great Hall. Whatever just forget about him, if he wants to act all high and mighty let him be, I don't care anymore. Let's go we have double potions next. Tracy said and they got up from the table never seeing a brunette boy let a tear slip down his cheek. Look there he is, Draco said when they walked into the potions class, they got near and saw that he was sitting by a solo station. Hey mate what happened didn't see you at breakfast, nor did you wake us up for our morning exercise, Theo said when they got near Naruto. I'm sorry, we will have to cut our friendship short, I don't want any of you getting hurt because of me. Naruto answered dully, and turned his attention back to his potions book. Congratulations girls, Draco suddenly said from his station. What do you mean Draco? Tracy asked after staring at the back of the head of the blonde. You just broke him. Draco whispered when Snape entered the class. Mr. Uzumaki please do not send another clone to this class ever or you will be serving detention, you have five minutes to get here, before you get a week of detention. Snape said while he called roll. Everybody was staring between the professor and the blonde student. TCH whatever we don't care either way, boss will be here in four. And with that they saw the blonde vanish in a poof of smoke. Exactly four minutes later they saw Naruto enter the potions lab, with his tie on his hand and his shirt unbuttoned. He sat at the solo station and started to brew the potion that Snape ordered. May I inquire why you felt the need to send a clone instead of yourself to this class? Snape asked while he checked over the half-finished potion. I thought it would be better, I just planned to practice chakra control all day before heading back in to get lunch and then continue to do strength exercise before Quidditch practice. Naruto answered softly. I never thought you would be able to see through my clones, they are perfect copies. You forget Mr. Uzumaki that I was best friend of your mother, and she used the same clone to escape classes. So I became quite good at telling differences between the original and his clone. Snape said with a smirk at the glare Naruto sent his way. I ask that you refrain from sending a clone to potions class, if you want to send one to the other classes I don't care, and if you don't want to talk to your friends face to face, well that is your problem, but to my class you will be here always. Snape said silkily and glared back, he left when he received a nod from the blonde. Fill a file of your finished potion, and I want a foot of the difference in importance between clockwise stirring and counterclockwise for next Monday. Dismissed. Snape said at the end of the class. Naruto made a beeline to the door, before Draco or Harry could stop him. What is wrong with Naruto today? Harry asked the Slytherin at the end of the day when they gathered at the library. What happened to Naruto, he has been avoiding me all day, and I can't find him. They heard and saw Hermione walked in and sat down with her friends. Well, Theo began trying to find the right words to tell them what had happened. When we got back to the common room after we rescued you from the troll, Tracy and Daphne rushed to hug us three, when they finished they walked towards Naruto and, they slapped him one on each cheek. He said getting surprised looks from the Gryffindor and the Ravenclaw. Then Daphne told him something about not being his inferior or something like that and that he would never order her around like that. When I asked him if he was okay, he just droned to me, I am fine Theodore, and left, then this morning he didn't wake any of us so we could go do our morning exercise, so we went with the girls to the great hall to get breakfast, we saw him walk by us and then he disappeared, we tried to get Trace and Daph to apologize and they glared at us. And then when we got to potions he was sitting at the solo station, we tried to talk to him there, and he told us that we had to cut our friendship short because he didn't want any of us to get hurt because of his profession or something like that. And Snape said that the original Naruto had always be present to his potions class, four minutes after another Naruto arrives, with his tie on his hand, sweating and his shirt unbuttoned. We tried to talk to him but he avoided us, he must be a master at stealth. Theo finished telling Hermione and Harry. Oh no, what have they done? Hermione rounded on Tracy and Daphne that had just arrived from getting the books for transfiguration. What have you done? You broke Naruto, you knew his psyche was fragile from his treatment back home, we were his friends, he would always play his guitar for you too. From what Anko told me it took her at least a year of her coaxing and talking and caring of Naruto for him to simply accept her as an acquaintance, three years to see her as a friend, and two more years so he would finally open to her and call her big sister. He opened to us, to you and you slapped him because he decided to put both your safety and mine before his. 
Hermione started to rant to the other two girls on the group. Congratulations, and yes Theodore. Naruto is an expert at trap making, stealth, espionage, and if Anko was being truthful assassination. Hermione huffed and picked her books. Good luck trying to find him. She threw over her shoulder and walked away from them and sat at another table where another Ravenclaw was studying. She is right you know, I'm out of here, see you guys later, Draco said and got from the table. Harry didn't say anything he just picked his bag and walked over to Hermione and he sat with her to start his transfigurations homework. Well I know that he has Quidditch practice tonight so we might be able to talk to him before or after it, Blaze said with a hopeful look towards Theo who just nodded and both pulled their astronomy charts to finish. Alright, we have prepared as good as we could for the first match against Gryffindor this Saturday. I want you all to stay focused don't fall into taunting, Flint said to his teammates. We will fly with Naruto on my left and Adrian on the right, since only Naruto might be able to beat the girls on speed you and me Adrian will have to play strong but clean okay. Derek, bowl those bludgers must be carefully aimed to distract their seeker, and to clear paths in between their chasers. Terrence keep your eyes on the snitch, Miles, try to not stray away from the right ring. Flint finished explaining what moves they would be using. Dismissed, Flint waved them away and kept on muttering plays he could us against Gryffindor. Naruto left the locker rooms and started to walk towards the castle, he would always take a shower in his room, he still had scars from scraps he got in when he lived on the street before Anko took him in. Naruto. Mate wait up. Naruto heard from behind him, he turned around and saw Theo, Blaze, Daphne, and Tracy came running towards. Thanks for waiting, we wanted to talk to you about what happened at the common room, Theo said while panting a bit. It's okay Theo, Blaze, you don't have to worry about what I said today or back at the common room that night. Naruto said with a small smile, he knew he had exaggerated with Theo, Blaze, and Draco. Girls, is there anything you want to tell to Naruto? Blaze said while turning to see Daphne and Tracy. We, we are sorry for the way we have been acting to you since Halloween. Tracy mumbled, she could meet his eyes, she was sure that he would hate her and Daphne, but she was worried, and she got more worried when she saw his hand was burned. It's alright Trace, Karama talked to me before practice, he could feel your emotions were raging about, more importantly I should be the one apologizing about the way I talked to you, I let my rage cloud me, I simply slipped into what Nei-chan calls mission mode. Naruto tried to explain to Tracy who was smiling a bit but had tears in her eyes. Naruto couldn't understand if they were of happiness or sorrow. I will not apologize for what I told you, I will always stand by that, but I am also sorry for how I reacted, I was out of line, Daphne started to stammer around. And I was so scared when I saw the cuts and bruises on you for, and then your hand was burned, and she kept on rambling. Daph, Daph. Daphne. Naruto shouted getting Daphne to stop rambling about what she felt. What? Don't you see I am ranting here, you have to stop ranting. I most certainly do not, you most certainly do. Guys, what? Don't you see we are talking over here? It is good to have you back, Naruto just smiled, and hugged both Tracy and Daphne. Well, I am glad that you guys fixed your differences, they heard behind them, Naruto turned and saw his first friends staring at him with a smile. Sorry for ignoring you guys, I just needed to think, Naruto said while Draco and Hermione just laughed and hugged him. It's alright, Eno said that if something happened, and we just had to let you relax, Draco said while smirking. Let's go I found an abandoned classroom that we could transform to be like our common room, Harry shouted from the entrance hall. They just smiled and followed Harry to the second floor. This was the medium point, I think, Harry said while pushing open the door. They entered the room and saw that it was quite spacious, enough space to practice spells and charms. Naruto saw that in the corner near the window they could set up a small potion station. Hermione saw that there were some bookcases that they could is, and bring in some of their own books, in case anybody forgot theirs, they could take one they had here. Draco found a warm corner where they could lounge around and play chess, shogi, or gobstones. Theo spied another corner where they could set up a table to work on homework, with more comfortable chairs than those in the library. Blaze, Daphne and Tracy just walked around the room checking it out and thinking what and where could they get furniture for it. So we only have to decide on furniture, and see how we are going to get them in here, Tracy said after they finished their inspection of the room. And also to make sure only us can get in, Harry said, that way this will be our safe haven, where we can run away from the pranks, he finished when he saw the looks from his friends. You don't want your fangirls to get to you, Theo laughed while pointing to a fuming Harry. Well at least he has a good point. I'm sure that I can find a seal to place on the door to only recognize us, but I'm pretty sure that I will need a bit of your blood so I can key you all in," Naruto said while going through a few of his sealing books. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that my father can send us some comfortable furniture from the house, we have several rooms with comfy furniture that we never use. Daphne smiled while she thought a way to tell her father. Call one of your house elf, and send a letter to your father asking for some furniture that they know will be comfortable for us to study in lounge," Tracy told Daphne, while thinking that her mum could send some books to fill the bookshelves. And you have a corner where Naruto can practice with his guitar, and we can keep Harry's, Naruto's, and I'm pretty sure that Draco will try out for the team next year, brooms. And our brooms for when we just want to fly around, Theo said while he thought of next year that he would bring his broom. That is a great idea. Let's go to the library, we write the letters and call the house elves to deliver them and to bring the stuff to the classroom. Daphne said and led the group out towards the library. 
They didn't have to wait long for an answer from their parents. The next day when their owls arrived with letters from their parents telling them that they had sent everything they had asked to the room they had claimed they smiled and left the great hall to the classroom, to see it furnished and comfortable looking, Naruto saw that his guitars were in a corner along with his and Harry's broom. They stayed there until they had to leave for class, and returned after they had finished classes to start on their homework. The rest of the week went fast for both Naruto and Harry, the pressure of their first Quidditch match of their career in school was getting to Harry. How do you do it? Harry asked two days before the game, when they were resting in their classroom. Uh? What do you mean? Naruto answered while he polished his broom. How do you manage to stay calm with all the pressure the houses are putting on us? Harry clarified. There are times that I feel like I will break down, he finished explaining to his friends. Easy. I don't let what they think about me get to me, the pressure, the animosity, the rivalry, I don't care about it, I play because I like it, I might try to go pro when I leave school, anyways, I don't let it get to me, besides even if I wanted to get nervous and let the pressure get to me Karama would force me to work it all out till I relaxed and then force me to meditate. Naruto explained to his friends, you just have to relax, trust me, once we are in the air and you leave your worries on the ground you will play great, he finished with a grin. That relaxed Harry a bit but he was still unsure if he would do well on the game. You will do fine Harry, you have it in your blood to make it big time, same as Naruto. Tracy said remembering the trophies she had seen when Snape told Draco about Naruto's mum. Saturday came fast for the school, the first match of the season between Slytherin and Gryffindor was that day, both teams were at the Great Hall having breakfast, while 13 out of the 14 players were. Harry come on, you have to eat, some toast at least. The Weasley twins tried to get their new seeker something in his belly so he could play, they knew it was a bad idea to play with an empty stomach. I'm just nervous, I don't know if I will do fine today. Harry answered in a low voice. Relax Harry, you will do just fine. Angelina said from the other side of the table where she had a few toast, Alicia nodded along her. Don't worry Harry it will also be my first match, I know you and I will do fine, although I hope your blonde friend dies of nerves, I will get vengeance for the pranks. Katie Bell said with a smile. Uh Katie, I don't think your arch nemesis is nervous, at all. Oliver pointed out towards the Slytherin table. Naruto was sitting cross-legged on the table, surrounded by Draco, Theo, and Blaze, Daphne and Tracy were chatting towards Naruto who seemed oblivious. How the hell is he not breaking down? Katie fumed a bit. Doesn't matter Katie, relax, inhale peace, exhale love, you will beat him on the pitch, damn he is good looking. Katie ranted to herself, not so quietly. Katie, are you, okay? The twins asked when they heard what Katie was saying. Yeah Kate, I know he has buff arms and he is not that bad looking, but still, Angelina said with a smirk to the youngest chaser. I think Katie wants to beat Naruto both at the pitch and in a broom closet. Alicia said with a smirk towards her friend, making the twins, Angelina and Oliver to chuckle and to help break some of the tension Harry had on himself. Shut it. Katie snapped to her friends. I do not, I repeat I do not have a crush on that idiotic blonde, even if he does look cute and has buff arms. She finished with a huff. That is enough, let's go. Oliver said and got up from the table and made his way towards the entrance hall. The rest of the Gryffindor team followed. Gred and Forge were talking about some prank or other, Angelina and Alicia were talking strategy and how to deal with the foul play that Slytherin preferred, and Katie and Harry were talking about anything else to keep the nerves from getting to them. You were friends with the blonde aren't you? Katie asked when they made it halfway to the pitch. Yeah, met all of them except the girls on the express, we got to know each other, he is quite cunning and ambitious but selfless. Harry said with a smile, but he is also loyal to a fault to his friends and those he consider family. I heard from the rumor mill from the common room that he comes from the elemental nations, is that true? Katie asked getting a surprised look from Harry. Don't be surprised, it was the twins youngest brother and his friends that kept spouting stuff about that when the Irish imp came in with a swelling cheek. She answered to his surprised look with a chuckle. He is, from what he told us he is from Konoha. I don't know if you know more of the continent he is from. Harry said with a shrug of his shoulders. Well, I have family there actually, not in Konoha though, an uncle thrice removed or something like that as a shinobi from Kumo. Mum explained to me since I was young about the elemental nations, she hated that they were always at wars, her cousin, told us when he came here for vacation that he barely survived the third war. Katie told him getting Harry to drop his jaw. Anyways I don't have a connection to the man so I don't care he is supposed enemy from him, but he pranked me and I want revenge. Help me prank him, please, Katie finished with a pout and quivering lip. I I, I don't, I can't, Harry was spluttering, thankfully they made it to the locker rooms, where they would change to the team's robes. Well, if you can't because you are a lousy prankster that is cool, that is right the twins will help me. Katie punched her palm and went to the girls' locker room to change leaving a still spluttering Harry. Focus Harry. Get changed and relax. Wood barked towards him, making Harry snap out of it and get ready to put his robes on. Derek. Bowl remember what we practiced keep the bludgers away from both Terence and Is, and keep the pressure on their chasers. Adrian, we have worked hard to bring Naruto into our game style, but we ended developing a better game, stick to it, same with you Naruto stick to the style, hopefully we will be able to call the pace of the game. Terence looked for the snitch at all times. Miles the right ring. Marcus was telling his team what they had to do that day. We play hard but we will play clean. Flint said getting nods from the rest of the team. Bring it in guys, Slytherin on three. Slytherin. They shouted when they broke the circle. 
Naruto walked through the tunnel where he could see the Gryffindor team on the other side of the wall, when he saw Harry at the back he flashed him a nice guy pose, and wished him luck. Harry just nodded back and tried to focus back on trying to control his nerves. The right side of the double doors opened and Wood called for the Griffs to mount their brooms. And here comes the Gryffindor team, Captain and Keeper Oliver Wood, Beaters the magnificent Weasley twins Gred and Forge, Chasers the beautiful Angelina Johnson, Alicia Spinnett and Katie Bell, and at Seeker, the one, the only, youngest Seeker of the century H-A-R-R-Y-Y-Y-P-O-T-T-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E-E
Shit Quirrell is doing the same, and we know that Snape tolerates Harry, Daphne pointed out. We have to break their concentration. Theo shouted and ran towards the back of the stands, where he sprinted to the professor's box. A few moments later he arrived and saw a metal flask, he smirked and nicked it. He found Quirrell's and Snape's robe he poured some fire whiskey and pointed his wand, incendio, and shot a small flame that ignited a fire on both robes, his job done he sprinted back to his seat, pocketing his new fire whiskey flask where he knew Daphne wouldn't find it. Fire. Your robes are on fire. Someone shouted next to Quirrell who broke his concentration and looked down to see his robes and Snape's on fire, both jumped a bit and started to swat at the flames, Snape hit a smirk when he saw from the corner of his eye that Harry managed to climb back on his broom and was chasing the snitch with Terence by his side. They saw the snitch. Blaze shouted when they saw Harry climb back on his broom and a few seconds later he started to chase something with Terence closing in. What did I miss? Theo asked when he finally got back to his seat. Come on Terence get it before Harry, come on. Draco started to chant under his breath. It seems that the snitch has finally made its upper ants. Both Harry and Higgs are chasing it. They go on a dive. Ouch. One of the twins sent a bludger towards Higgs. WHO was focused on the snitch, never saw it coming. Come on Harry you got it all for yourself. Lee was shouting getting everybody shouting. Harry saw the snitch pull up a few feet over the pitch, he did the same and decided to do the same his friend did, he jumped towards the snitch. The rookies must be insane. Insane I tell you both have jumped from their brooms on their debuts. Lee said while the crowd held their breath in. Harry dove from his broom, and managed to close his hand around the golden snitch. He curled into a ball and rolled with his fall, fortunately he was just a few feet above and didn't get hurt by his fall. He got up and raised his hand with the snitch flapping its tiny wings feebly. Madam Hooch flew down and confirmed the catch. He caught it. Harry caught the snitch the game is over 250-120, Gryffindor, wins, Gryffindor wins. Lee shouted making the Gryffindor and Hufflepuff houses to get up and start cheering, the Slytherin and Ravenclaw houses just clapped politely and started to move to the exits to go back to the school for lunch. Both teams touched down, while the Gryffindors cheered and hugged Harry, the Slytherins moved to their locker rooms. Congrats Harry, that was one hell of a catch, Naruto said with a smile and shook Harry's hand. Thanks mate, that shot you did after jumping over Katie was insane, Harry said with a smile towards the blonde. Thanks, you three are three great chasers I'm looking forward to play against you next year, and hopefully you girls make it into the pros. Would a pleasure to go head to head against you today, you are a shoe into the pros. Twins, vicious but great, pleasure to play against you guys. Naruto shook the whole team's hand and smiled to them. It was a pleasure, hopefully when you get older some scouts will look for your signature. Wood said and left, the chasers just smiled and shook his hand, Katie smirked at him and told him that next time he wouldn't be able to beat her. You are insane, but also a great chaser, we hope. We didn't break, something when we, smacked the bludger. To your side. The twins said on their own speechway, Naruto just smiled and told them that he was fine, they waved and moved to their locker room. After a hot shower and lunch Naruto made his way to the common room, he gave the password and walked in. The whole house was talking about the game, Draco, Blaze, Theo, Tracy and Daphne walked towards him with a smile, he saw that Randy was perched on Theo's shoulder and Kura was being cuddled by a fourth year girl. You were amazing, you and Harry, Draco shouted when he got to him with a smirk. Yes you were amazing out there but that move you pulled. Daphne started with a glare making Naruto cower a bit. That was reckless, stupid, dangerous, idiotic. She started to rant for a moment while Theo, Blaze, and Tracy congratulated him. I am so glad that you were okay and that you managed to call your broom to you before you fell. Daphne finished and hugged him. You guys know that I love to do those kind of moves, Flynn tried to talk me out of it, but me and Adrian practiced it, normally he would throw the ball from his side to mine, I would jump from the broom and I would smack it with it, or would pluck it out of the air and cross the keeper, I just modified it a bit. Naruto said, and Draco understood the silent message. I used chakra to score that one but nobody needs to know or will care, they will simply think that I work out like crazy, and he smirked and winked at Naruto who smirked back. The rest of the evening they spent talking about professional quidditch or homework, or the way Quirrell was jinxing Harry's broom. Naruto was congratulated by the older years, and he smiled and nodded. They told him that he would beat the Hufflepuffs next game and that he was amazing. That night Naruto was congratulated by Kurama and wrote two letters, one for his friends back in Konoha, and one for his godparents, telling them what happened since the feast to the game. He went to sleep with a smile, next day they planned on finishing the essays for charms and Dada. Okay, name the two clans that founded the village. Daphne asked Naruto who was sitting at the library, with a bit of parchment in front of him. Ah, the Senju and the Uchiha, he answered and wrote down his answer when Daphne smiled. Name three prominent clans of the village, Hermione asked behind one of the books of history of the village. The Hyuga, the Abarame, and the Inazuka, he answered and wrote it down on. Name three historic moments of the village, Tracy asked the blonde. The Kiyubi incident, the Hyuga Kumo issue, and the Uchiha massacre. Naruto answered after remembering the some of the recent events. The Uchiha massacre? Hermione asked a bit appalled at the thought. Yeah, from what Gigi told me the prodigy of the Uchiha clan Itachi, went crazy one night and massacred all his clan in a single night, except one boy, his little brother Sasuke he is in my class back home. Naruto explained to all his friends. Well, 
Draco tried to break the tension they were feeling. How is Quidditch practice being going on for you guys? Making Harry start talking how Wood was pushing them to be able to score more points before he had to catch the snitch. Well Naruto you are done enough reviewing I bet that we can have either McGonagall or Flitwick to check on you so you can answer the exam before we even leave and you won't have to worry about it later. Hermione said getting Naruto to smile and agree. The rest of November went fast for Naruto and his friends, McGonagall chaperoned Naruto one Saturday afternoon. They learned the petrification charm, and kept on going over goblin rebellions on History of Magic, where Tracy, Hermione and Blaze were still the only ones able to stay awake. In potions Naruto managed to still brew outstanding potions while Harry managed to improve them thanks to having Daphne or Hermione helping him. Theo, Naruto and Draco managed to pull pranks on the rest of the students, making the Weasley twins to reignite the pranking feud, fortunately the Slytherin trio managed to not be caught and lose points while the twins were caught two times. Daphne tried to keep Naruto and his pranks on a tight leash, unfortunately she was unable to do so. Harry managed to wander one night down the Forbidden Corridor where he found a Cerberus. I'm telling you guys, there is a Cerberus in a classroom on the third floor corridor. Harry said the next day when they were at their common room, he explained to three displeased females what he was doing wandering around, he was able to quell their angry looks by saying that the stairs moved when he was walking to the Gryffindor common room. Maybe we should explore it, see what's up, Draco said never taking his eyes away from the chess game against Blaze, he never saw the dark looks the girls were sending his way. Theo was with Naruto in the couches with his old acoustic guitar, he finally convinced Naruto to teach him how to play a guitar. Naruto why did you learn to play the guitar? He asked the question that had been bugging him since they first met and saw that Naruto played. Anko Ne Chan wanted me to have a hobby, or well as it is known back home a copying mechanism. Naruto said after he showed Theo how to place his fingers. You know that as shinobis we go out on missions for the village and we are also the military, we have to kill, either on orders of the client or to protect those that we love, Anko Ne Chan drinks almost all the time but she is no alcoholic she knows how to control it, Kakashi Nisan reads porn out in the open, one of their friends trains all the time and wears an obnoxious green suit, another friend smokes, they found a way to cope with all the things they have done on their carrier. So she taught you how to play so you could cope with the things you will have to do, that makes sense, Theo said getting Naruto to smile and keep on teaching him, Theo was sure that if he kept on practicing for the rest of the year, by the time they came back for second year he would be able to play half as good as Naruto, he just had to make sure that his dad didn't found out that he was learning something muggle. I think that Draco is right, Cerberus are supposed to be quite dangerous what if it got out and attacked someone, remember that Snape was bitten back in Halloween. Blaze answered the unasked question. We should wait to check it out after the break, Naruto said without looking up from his guitar. Yeah Naruto is right we should wait after break, Daphne said with a smile towards her fellow blonde who just smiled back. Where are you guys going to spend the holidays? Tracy asked her friends. I'm going to France to spend it with my grandmother, Hermione answered. Back to Italy to see mum and grandfather, Blaze said. To Draco's apparently, Harry said with a smile. We go back home and we will see Draco, Harry and Naruto at their annual ball that his mum throws every year. Daphne answered pointing to herself and to Tracy. Wait ball? The hell is that? Naruto asked looking up from his guitar for the first time since they arrived. It's a party Naruto to celebrate Yule. Draco answered. The family allies and friends get together, the heirs and children go to mingle and to see who the allies will be when they take over for their parents. You have to dress in dress robes, dance and entertain the guest. He finished with a smirk at the paling faces of both Harry and Naruto. I can't dance. Harry and Naruto shouted at the same time, making Daphne and Tracy to giggle, while Draco, Blaze, and Theo chuckled. Don't worry, we have a whole month before the ball, I'm sure that Daphne and Tracy can help you guys, Draco said omitting that them as heirs wouldn't have to dance. Naruto turned and saw that Daphne and Tracy smiling a bit evilly, he felt a shudder go up his spine. Harry was still speechless and he only nodded. What is wrong mate? Blaze asked Harry who was touching gingerly his forehead. My scar has been hurting the whole time we were in Dada, it's annoying. Harry answered while they walked to the Great Hall. Don't worry I'm sure it will pass Theo said from his other side. Harry was glad that Dada was the last class of the day, and he went to sit at the Gryffindor table, where he saw the Quidditch team sitting together, when they saw him walk in they waved him over so he could sit with them. We know that your friends are in the other houses so we figured we should start sitting with you at the Great Hall, and help you when you are in the house. Wood said with a grin mimicked by the chasers. Yes Ickel Herakians, we will be your mentors, friends. Family, teammates, anything you need of us, we will gladly help you. From pranking advice, to help you get revenge, the twins said from his sides in their own special speech. We can also help you understand our culture, I'm sure your friends have already explained some things to you, but we also know more of the world. Angelina said while she piled some meat on his plate. And you were also quite skinny so we have to fatten you up. Katie said while piling some vegetables on his plate and then on the twins' plates. Yeah, and if anybody gives you trouble we have your back, Alicia said with a smile. Harry smiled and turned around for a bit seeing Daphne, Tracy, Theo, Blaze, Draco, and Naruto wave at him and smile. He started to eat until something landed in front of him, he looked up and saw it was a knife impaled on the table with a note attached to the handle. What the hell? Wood shouted making several people turn to look at him, while Alicia and Angelina that was on his side pulled him down and shushed him. Hey this is from Naruto. Harry said recognizing the knife, 
he called this knife a kanai, he explained to his teammates. Well, he has some luck or he has a wicked aim, Katie said while eyeballing Naruto who smiled cheekily to her and waved. It's a note. Fred stated. Read it Harakians, George handed the note to Harry. Harry it is quite good to see you eating with other people in your house, they will help you if you get in trouble, tell the twins that they should worry, the maelstrom will strike when they least expect it, along with the dragon and the coyote. Harry read the note out loud for the team, making the chasers to smile and wave towards Harry's friends at Slytherin, while Wood chuckled at the small drawing at the bottom of the paper, while George, Fred and Lee were eyeing them warily. Let's go I have reserved the pitch to practice, Wood said and got up being followed by the team. The rain got heavier as November went, while Draco, Blaze, Theo, Daphne, Tracy, Harry and Hermione weren't affected that much by the climate change, Naruto was. I hate this climate, Naruto shouted while rubbing his hands together to warm them a bit. The rest chuckled and went back to their potions essay. It will get worse when snow starts to fall, Draco said while checking a book for an ingredient. Doesn't it snow back in your village? Tracy asked. Hell no. Why do you think the country is called Fire Country? Our overabundance of fire natured chakra users. Naruto sulked near the fire they had a house elf get started in a chimney. Uh, yeah? Daphne answered while watching her fellow blonde sulk a bit. She liked having Naruto around she hoped that he would come back to them every year and stay in the magical world instead of doing missions for his village. She had contacted her parents when she first met him about what they knew of the elemental nations, what her parents explained to her terrified her, some of the ninjas never made it past their thirties. Nope. Well yes most of our shinobis does have fire nature, but it is also warm all the time, except when there is a funeral, then rain comes pouring down mourning the death. From what Aruka sensei has told us, when the Shodai, Nidai and Yandaimi died, huge storms settled over the village for two or three days. Naruto explained, also when a war is over rainfalls. That is an interesting concept right, Hermione said getting everybody's attention. I mean when the past three leaders died rainstorms settled over the village as if it was mourning their passing, also when a war is finished it rains maybe mourning the fallen of both sides or to heal the land, she finished explaining. She looked up from her book to meet her friends with their eyes wide open. You figured all that out of just what Naruto explained of their leader's funerals? Harry asked after a few seconds. Forget that. She figured it all out for a comment of the aftermath of wars. Blaze said gawking at the bushy-haired bookworm, he was liking her more and more. Well you just had to look at the pattern. From what Naruto's teacher told him whenever a major battle or important person to the village dies a rainstorm drifts in and settles in the village, Hermione said with a smile. She is right Hermione will you help me study for the written portion of the genin exam next summer? Naruto said while on his knees begging to Hermione. She smiled and sent Naruto to write a letter to Anko to send him the material he will need to learn so she could devise a study plan for maximum efficiency. The rest of the month went and with it the first snows of the seasons came, and Naruto was huddled up against the fireplace again, last week he received a letter and package from Anko and Aruka telling him what he should study. He spent half the time he wasn't at Quidditch practice or doing homework studying from the books Aruka sent. Who will be staying at Hogwarts this holidays? They heard behind them the silky voice of their head of house when they were eating breakfast. No, Naruto is coming to my mansion, he already showed you the permission slip from his sister. Draco answered for a distracted Naruto, who had his nose shoved into a potions book. We are also going home, Professor Snape, Daphne answered for her friends. At the other tables Hermione and Harry told their head of house that they were leaving for the holidays while Harry showed McGonagall the Dursley's note saying that he could go to wherever the Malfoys lived, McGonagall nodded and put his name down. So who is staying? Harry asked the Quidditch team. We are, Fred started, staying, Mum, Dad, and Ginny, George followed. We'll be going to Romania, to visit Charlie, our older. Dragon Tamer, brother, the twins explained. We three are leaving, we always spend the holiday with our families. Angelina explained for her two best friends. I'm also going home. Oliver said after a few minutes of going over some plays he wanted to implement on their game plan. Harry nodded and smiled to his friends. The week leading up to the departure of the students who were leaving to be with their families went fairly quickly for Naruto, thankfully Hermione gave him the break so he could enjoy it. So they were at the entrance hall with their trunks by their sides, while Harry had his broom on his hand not willing to part with it, Naruto created clones to carry the trunks of his friends while he had his guitar and broom on each hand. So we wait two days to see each other again right? Harry asked feeling nervous of his friends forgetting about him. Relax Harry we will see each other in two days, and we will hang out the whole holidays alright, and you will be able to see all of us fly. Tracy put a soothing hand on his shoulder. The carriage is here boss. They heard one of the clones shout and they made their way to it while the clones with the trunks ran to the Hogsmeade station. The train ride back to London they played several wizard games, or cards. Hermione even tried to explain to Theo and Blaze that what her parents did for a living wasn't a new way of torturing legally. I'm sure it is a torture form. Why in the bloody hell would anyone let some of the stuffs you have told us about near them? Theo was ranting and shaking his head making Hermione laugh a bit. Theo is right. I remember a time when Anko Ne Chan decided to start pulling stuffs of the prisoner, she told me she pulled his fingernails, and his teeth so he would start talking, I think he bleed out after telling Ne Chan everything. Naruto explained without looking from his shogi game against Daphne, he never saw his friends shudder. See we are right. Blaze pointed his finger towards Naruto dramatically while telling Hermione that it was illegal torture. 
Would you believe me if I told you my parents tried to do it as painless as possible? Hermione asked without looking from her book. Uh, maybe? Theo and Blaze answered at the same time. They laughed and talked about anything that came to mind, but Draco's Harry's and Hermione's mind always went back to what was that Cerberus hiding. They arrived at King's Cross and Naruto created clones again, they walked out and Daphne and Tracy immediately spotted their parents standing side by side with Daphne's youngest sister standing in the middle. Come Naruto I want you to meet my parents and sister. Daphne said and grabbed the real Naruto who just let himself be dragged, he knew from experience not to resist. Those two are so into each other, I bet they end up together by the end of fourth year, after Naruto does something really dangerous or stupid, Blaze said with a smirk and pulled his notebook where he wrote down all the bets he took. Ten galleons say by the middle of fifth year, Draco said pulling said golden coins. Ten galleons go with the house, end of fourth year after he does something stupid, Theo also pulled his money. Middle of fourth year, after Naruto does his special shot, ten galleons, Harry said also smirking at the happy face Daphne had while dragging Naruto around. Hermione you will keep the money, oh come on don't give me that look you are the only unbiased one of the group. Blaze said handing the sack where he always collected the money to Hermione who only took it and turned to look for her family. Mum, Dad, a story of this is Naruto Uzumaki, he is in Slytherin with me and we are great friends, he is the one I wrote about. Daphne said to her parents and whispered the end to her mother who just widened her eyes for a second and then went back to smile. Naruto this are my parents Cyrus and Anne Greengrass. Daphne said while Naruto bowed to the waist to Daphne's father and then shook his hand, while he also bowed to Daphne's mother he kissed the back of her hand. Such good manners dear, you have him well trained in the customs of the old purebloods, Cyrus said with a grin. A pleasure to finally meet the last Uzumaki, I remember the times I saw your mother prank a poor lion, or the occasional snake. Fortunately, I was always out of her reach. He said with mirth on his eyes, his smile got bigger when he saw Naruto's smile widen at the mention of his mother. You were quite the gentleman, and Daphne wasn't kidding when you have some alluring eyes, if I remember well from the pictures Kashina sent me from her summers and wedding you have your father's looks. Anne said with a soft smile, true she could see a lot of Kashina's husband on Naruto but she could see the intelligence, cunning, and drive to be the best in his eyes same as Kashina. And this little spitfire that hasn't taken her eyes from you is my little sister, Astoria. Astoria say hi to Naruto. Daphne said while she pushed Astoria a bit towards Naruto, she knew that they would recognize the prankster in the other. Without thinking, Astoria began the secret handshake that every prankster should know. Naruto reacted accordingly, they both got into the handshake stance and began, getting weird looks from every parent that was picking up their children from the Hogwarts Express. Daph, what the hell are they doing? Tracy asked while they walked to the green grass while the Malfoys, Theo's mum along with Blaze's mum and two bodyguards came behind them. From what little Tori has told me they are doing a special secret handshake, supposedly every prankster should be taught from their mentor or parent, according to her. Daphne explained to her friends and their parents. You are a true prankster, yet you have only began setting your signature, you have much to learn young one, Naruto said while bowing towards Astoria. Teach me the ways of the pranks master. Astoria cried while kneeling making her mother shake her head in embarrassment while her father chuckled a bit at seeing another prank master. In a year when you were at Hogwarts, I will take you under my wing, but first you must find your signature, yet don't rush it. Naruto said with a smirk, he thought that the twins were the only prank masters, they already had their apprentice in their sister, who had yet to find her signature. And here he had a golden opportunity, he had found his apprentice. There you were Gaki. Do you have your exam? Naruto heard a creepy voice right by his ear. He also felt extra weight and started to fall towards Daphne who moved in front of him with a smile, they never expected that to happen. Peefed. Be wahahahaha Gaki you were late as man. Anko started to laugh like a maniac, while Naruto's and Daphne's friends and families were trying to contain, and failing miserably, they're laughing. Both Naruto and Daphne were beat red while still lip locked, finally Naruto's brain with a bit of help from Kurama managed to reboot and he pulled away stuttering. I, I'm, I'm truly sorry Daph, Nei-chan's weight took me by surprise, and I couldn't manage to send chakra to my feet to stay upright, and I'm truly sorry. Naruto continued to stutter and looked away while Daphne just blushed and looked away. Do, don't worry Naruto, Kun, Daphne managed to stutter while her mum took her hand laughing and waved goodbye to everybody and said that they would see them at the Yule Ball at the Malfoys. Haha <laughs> anyways Gaki, the test. Anko took control of her laughter and demanded his homework, which he produced from his scroll and handed to Anko. Alright well after that little show we must say goodbye and we will see you soon at the ball, Naruto, Harry it was a pleasure to meet you. Blaze's mother said with an Italian accent and waved goodbye while walking with a grinning Blaze who was waving to his friends. We must also be on our way, Lucius, Narcissa we will see you at the ball also. Naruto always a pleasure to see you, and Mr. Potter a pleasure to meet you finally, you too Mrs. Granger. Theo's mum said after kissing everybody in the cheek and both knots made their way to the flows. Let us be on our way, today we will give you two a tour of the mansion and grounds, at dinner you will tell us everything you did during the semester. Without leaving anything out. Narcissa said with a tone that made both Harry and Naruto to nod their heads in fear. The three boys walked behind the three adults, where they got to the flow network and they traveled to the mansion. I got to admit you guys have a pretty nice mansion, Anko said when she stepped off, more like fell flat on her face, and saw the foyer. Thanks Anko, Dobby will show you to your room, while Draco can lead the boys to theirs. Same floor the two rooms besides yours Draco. 
Lucia said and swept of the foyer leaving Narcissa to give the tour, as she liked to do. First they made their ways to their rooms where they saw they were as big as their dorm back at Hogwarts. After they left their trunks and possessions, Narcissa called a house elf to take Harry's and Naruto's broom to their broom storage, while they took the grounds tour Narcissa explained what Anko had to do as she was the legal guardian of Naruto, and how they should set up a plan where he could take some money of his bank account to buy things he wanted. I don't think that will be necessary he will take the exams with his friends this summer, the test we sent him was the actually written part, he just has to attend and pass the practical, and he will finally start working, all that he wins will be pocket change, the Hokage pays half of our bills, and from what the goblins explained to me of the exchange rate, a measly D rank is quite the big money over here. We could leave right now and live to old age from what I have amassed from my missions and his inheritance, and I could always find some work over here. Maybe get a potions degree. Anko explained with a bit of a heavy voice, she had been thinking of handing her resignation to the Sandame, move to the house the goblins had found that accommodated to their necessities and move on with her life, she hated the way they were treated. Hell the goblins and the Malfoys had treated her even better after they found out their past, but she promised the Sandame that after Naruto's first Chunin exam, even if he failed them, both could be discharged from the forces and leave the village and country. Well at least you have a plan. I am sure Severus could take you on as his apprentice and teach you. Narcissa said with a smile, plans of getting the bad of the dungeon and the snake mistress together. They would make a lovely couple she thought. Meanwhile Draco was explaining about the Quidditch League and that several teams would always send scouts to school games, and sometimes they would send some invitations to the teams. I'm sure by our fourth year that you will receive an invitation to the U17 English team. Draco said with a smile, both of you. Hey Drake, has anybody ever thought of trying to recreate the Muggles telly to transmit the Quidditch games? Harry asked, getting Draco to think about it. Now that you mention it, no, they only transmit really important games by the wizarding radio, and the rest you either have to go to the stadium or see the results in the paper the next day. Draco answered still thinking. What if we managed to get either a charm, or rune to omniculars or muggle tele cameras and set it to transmit as if it was a muggle football game? Naruto gave his input on the subject. We would have to set up several charms to make the cameras impervious to all the magic that oozes from the game and the crowd, while also getting the wizards to get muggle tele on their homes, Draco started to think. We would also need to set runes on every telly in the stadium to transmit it from the cameras to the telly, Naruto said. How about we ask father at dinner, he goes to the ministry all the time, he might be able to talk to the head of the department of magical games, and see what we can do. Draco said making his friends nod and they continued the tour. That night Draco, Naruto and Harry told their idea to Lucius who looked thoughtful about it and told them to write the idea down and he would take it in the morning to the ministry, and see what they thought about it. That made the boys smile, until Narcissa changed the subject to school. Draco and Harry explained how they were doing in class and explained the way Harry made the Quidditch team along with Naruto. Naruto was busy feeding Randy and Kura, to pay much attention, until Anko threw him a blunted kanai which made him come back from his talk with Kurama. He explained everything he did, obviously he got two earfuls for the troll incident along with both Harry and Draco, and another for the reckless play in his first match, even if it was successful and he landed on his broom. Don't do that move again Otudo, what if something happened and your broom didn't respond and you fell to the floor, I don't think Kurama will be able to keep you alive. Anko said with a bit of worry in her voice. Well, I could always create a bunch of shadow clones to stop my fall gradually. Naruto said gaining a stinging hex and a blunt kanai to his butt and head respectively. Alright okay, I swear I will not do that shot again. Naruto relented to the glares his sister and godmother sent his way. Good now we will discuss the schedule for this holidays, you will get up at 6 o'clock where you will join Anko outside to do exercise, Draco, you will follow the routine she sets for you. Harry she will get you to get some muscle mass and to gain weight while the potions we will give you will help you will need the exercise, Naruto you will continue your chakra control exercise. That is for 2 hours all the time, then you will come in to breakfast at 8 o'clock, after breakfast we will have basic social behavior for 2 hours with me, after you had the basics we will move on to more complex behavior, after you finish your lesson for the day in behavior Lucius will teach you languages, from gobbledygook, the goblin language, French, and Spanish. After 2 hour of languages we will go over the courses in magic, we will go over every subject you have in school. After two hours you have free the rest of the day, where your friends will come over and you can play, and Naruto I don't want a repeat of what you did with Daphne at the station. Narcissa explained the schedule the boys would follow, and smirked along with Anko and Lucius when Naruto started to choke on the fish he was eating and was turning red with embarrassment. They nodded and went back to talk about anything that came to their minds until Lucius sent them to sleep. And their routine started, Anko would always have a clone throw either cold water on Harry and Draco, and blunted kunais to Naruto, Randy and Kura to help them develop awareness and to help Naruto and his familiars to be able to fight side by side. After the first few days of doing the same routine Harry managed to not collapse at the end, while Anko explained that he should keep the routine while at school so that all the muscle mass he got from eating right and exercising would help him even more both at Quidditch and at casting. Narcissus' social behavior class were also tough, both Harry learned how to properly dance and how to behave and greet people they were hosting and how to answer politely but still with an air of power. Languages was a class the three of them looked forward to, because even though Lucius demanded perfection he would always help point their mistakes and how to correct them. The magical courses were more book reading than anything at school they would have to practice. Two weeks went by and finally the ball was that night, Anko and Narcissa disappeared at two in the afternoon to start getting ready, 
while Lucius took care of the final details having the elves move chairs and tables to their spots and set their finest sets. Draco, Harry and Naruto were going over their idea to transmit the Quidditch games by telly, after Lucius presented the idea, the head of magical sports was ecstatic but first they would need to set everything up, and also set up a company to provide everything so it would take a couple of years. Hopefully they would have it by the World Cup in four years. An hour before the guests were scheduled to arrive Lucius and the boys went to shower and change. They would all wear traditional dress robes, what Naruto didn't know was that his dress robe would match Daphne's, Draco and Theo decided to prank Naruto with this for all the comments he made about Parkinson and Jenna Moon stared at them and followed them like lost puppies. At 7 o'clock the first guests started to arrive, first the kiss ass families that only wanted to suck up to the Malfoys like the Parkinsons that still tried to get a marriage contract between Draco and their daughter Pansy. Lucius hadn't made the engagement between Eno and Draco official so only those that were present when Narcissa and Inoichi made and Lucius later on signed, and those that Draco had told nobody else knew. At half past seven the allies started to arrive the dark families like the knots arrived, where Theo and Draco smirked when they greeted each other while Theodore Sr. greeted Lucius, Theo moved on after greeting his two other friends he grabbed a spot where he could see both Daphne's and Naruto's face when they saw each other. The Zabinis were next to greet Lucius and Narcissa, Naruto and Harry saw Blaze next to his mother and a man that they knew from pictures that Miss Zabini sent to Blaze, was the new husband, who was soon to be dead ex-husband. Blaze went and stood next to Theo, he recognized the smirk Theo had on his face, when he pulled a prank and he had a vague idea of who was the target. You do know that he will get you back when you least expect it right? Blaze said to his friend who only nodded and dismissed the thought. Tracy and her parents arrived after a few minutes and she moved towards her friends, she knew that something was up when she saw that Naruto's robes matched Daphne's dress, and she wanted to have a good laugh before the boring stuff happened. Finally after what felt an eternity to Naruto and Draco the Greengrass arrived, first came Cyrus and Anne came in holding hands, Anne was wearing a beautiful silvery dress that matched her husband's dress robes. Astoria came bouncing up to Naruto and Draco after greeting Lucius and Narcissa, she hugged Draco and bowed and hugged Naruto, he really liked the feeling of having a little sister in Astoria, he turned and saw Daphne, and his jaw fell to the floor, she was wearing a simple purple dress, that matched his robes. Daphne was staring at Naruto, she wasn't aware that Naruto would match her dress but she was pleasantly surprised, she smiled a soft sweet smile and walked to the whiskered blonde, and she hugged him, she felt his arms snake through her waist, she could feel muscles that had been developed over the course of his training since he was six. Naruto and Daphne separated and turned to see Draco and Theo snickering and Naruto knew that this had been fixed and it demanded retaliation. They walked to their friends and started to talk about how their vacations were going, they mingled along the crowd and several people tried to suck up to Harry when they found out who he was, and they tried the same when they found out that Naruto was the heir of the Uzumaki house, they saw Anko with Narcissa and Severus most likely talking about potions, or what could Anko do when they moved to Magical Britain. Astoria stayed near her parents, she was nervous, she knew that next year she would be with her big sister, and Naruto would help her become a prank master as himself, but big crowds of older people left her feeling insecure, so she would either stick close to her parents or her sister and her friends. The ball started out with a dinner where Naruto enjoyed himself along with Anko and his friends, then when everybody had their fill of food they moved to the dance floor where Lucius and Narcissa would open the dance. The first dance was something Naruto had ever seen something so amazing, when he saw other couples start to move on to the dance floor he walked to Daphne and asked her to dance, she accepted and they moved to the dance floor while Draco, Theo, Tracy, and Harry laughed a bit at the pair. And the night went on with Daphne and Naruto dancing while Blaze convinced Tracy to dance with him for a bit. The parents decided it was time to leave around 1 o'clock in the morning. At that time Severus who was also invited and waved goodbye to his students and to Anko, who asked him if he was willing to lend him some books on potions so she could practice her brewing, which he agreed and promised to send them over when Naruto returned to school. Draco, Harry, and Naruto stumbled up to their rooms where when their heads touched their pillows they were out like a light, while Lucius moved to his room while Narcissa stayed with Anko for a while just talking about the party. The next day was a chaos with Naruto, Draco and Harry waking up at 8 in the morning dragging a bedraggled Lucius down with them. Narcissa and Anko also came down after hearing the boys shout about their presence. Anko was also excited, this would be hers and Naruto's first Christmas with true friends, normally they would spend the morning inside talking and spending time together and in the afternoon move to train Naruto's body or study. Why don't you open your gifts first Harry, Draco suggested, since he knew this would be Harry's first presence. From both Lucius and Narcissa he received a book on pure blood traditions so he could study, along with a book of his family that Lucius managed to get the Potter's bank account manager to get out of the vault. Draco bought him a wand holster for his wrist knowing that Harry had a penchant to carry it in his pocket, it goes on your wrist, you flick it and the wand comes out, Draco explained. Harry loved Anko's gift, a set of kunais, you will have to practice with them during school, I taught Naruto every trick with this bad boys, the set I got you also comes with a wrist and thigh holsters, Anko told him making Harry smile and nod grateful. He also received a golden necklace from Blaze, and a pendant of a snitch and another of an owl that reminded him of Hedwig from Tracy, the noted stated that they bought it together and it was supposed to be hanging from it. Daphne also sent him a small pendant that when he opened it he saw a picture of all of them that they took after a few weeks from the first game. Hermione sent him a book on cooking which he knew would come in handy later on in his life. Theo sent him a set of wizarding chess with a note to practice his Merlin awful skills at the game. He also received an invisibility cloak with a note that said. Your father entrusted this to me, 
hopefully it will be helpful to you. It didn't have a name but Lucius and Narcissa still decided to check it for some extra charms, when they found none they gave it back to him. And finally Harry received a broom grooming kit and a case from Naruto. Easier to carry it in a case when traveling than risking breaking it or something like that, the kit is for you to clean it and trim the tail. Naruto explained with a smile when Harry smiled and thanked him for the case. Draco your turn, Narcissa said with a loving smile to her son. He leapt to his pile and tore into the one from Tracy and Blaze where he also got a golden necklace and a pendant of an eagle his favorite animal and a snitch. He received a book on muggle history from Hermione telling him to compare it to history of magic. Daphne sent him a book on Quidditch moves for seekers, knowing that next year he would try out for that position. He also got a set of kunais similar to Harry's with the same wrist and thigh holsters, with the same instruction as Harry to practice at school. Naruto got him a case similar to Harry's for when he got his broom. They are made of dragon skin, Naruto told them. His parents got him a set of dress robes and some muggle clothes for when he needed to pass as a muggle. Harry got him a snitch to practice during the summer. From Theo he got a new set of gobblestones since he lost his old set, he suspected that either Crab or Goyle stole for Pansy or something like that. He also got a set of pictures of Eno who also sent him a note wishing him a happy Christmas and that she hoped he would visit her during the summer. Draco put a picture of him and Eno in a small frame that his mother gave him last year for his birthday and put it along with his new pendant on his necklace. Naruto, honey your turn. Narcissa said towards her godson, who smiled and moved to Anko's present first. Let's see. A new Kaiten Jutsu, the next book on sealing from the Gallant Collection from Gigi, more chakra control exercises from Iruka, the Ino Shika Cho trio sent news from the class and they hope to see me soon. Naruto said as he went through the scroll Anko put his gift. Oh more music books, thanks Kakashi Nisan. He also got a golden necklace like Draco and Harry from Blaze and like them he got a quaffle and a snake that reminded him of Randy, who hissed with amusement when Naruto told him about that. Narcissa got him a wand holster for his wrist, while Lucius got him a broom case that had a fox with nine tails which Karama agreed looked like him and was proud of it. Hermione sent him a big package and a note from her and her father explaining that it was a case to carry his guitar so it would not be damaged while traveling. Draco got him a book with moves for chasers from all over the world, where there were several exotic moves that he was dying to try, his next game against Hufflepuff would be a good dummy test. Theo bought him a pendant of a fox making Naruto smile and show it to Kura who started baiting at it playfully. Daphne sent him a photo album of all the time they had spent together making Naruto smile a huge smile at the gift. Anko and Narcissa smiled lovingly at the sun-kissed blonde and they knew the silvery blonde girl was stealing his heart and that he had been stealing hers. Draco and Harry smirked, while Lucius also smiled towards Naruto. Harry got Naruto a potions kit that the store owner said was used in pranks. Narcissa charmed the necklaces that Harry, Draco and Naruto always wore to be unbreakable and made Naruto's extra strong so it would never break even if he was on a fight back in his village, she also charmed them to be portkeys to the mansion. They continued their lessons the rest of the holidays, along with spending time with their friends. Harry and Draco kept on going over information on Cerberus while Naruto was bettering his control. The last week before they were to return everybody except Hermione were out in the grounds while Naruto was strumming mindlessly his guitar in the lowest branch of a tree. Naruto-kun play something. Daphne had taken to call Naruto, kun, while he started to call her, Daphne-chan. Naruto just smiled and thought which song he could play. All right here it goes. Naruto answered with a smile. Play. The light by disturbed like an unsung melody. The truth is waiting there for you to find it it's not a blight, but a remedy. A clear reminder of how it began deep inside your memory. Turned away as you struggled to find it you heard the call as you walked away. A voice of calm from within the silence and for what seemed an eternity. You're waiting, hoping it would call out again you heard the shadow reckoning. Then your fears seemed to keep you blinded you held your guard as you walked away. When you think all is forsaken listen to me now, all is not forsaken. You need never feel broken again sometimes darkness can show you the light. An unforgivable tragedy the answer isn't where you think you'd find it. Prepare yourself for the reckoning for when your world seems to crumble again. Don't be afraid, don't turn away you're the one who can redefine it. Don't let hope become a memory let the shadow permeate your mind and reveal the thoughts that were tucked away so that the door can be opened again. Within your darkest memories lies the answer if you dare to find it. Don't let hope become a memory when you think all is forsaken. Listen to me now, all is not forsaken, you need never feel broken again. Sometimes darkness can show you the light sickening, weakening. Don't let another somber pariah consume your soul you need strengthening, toughening. It takes an inner dark to rekindle the fire burning in you. Ignite the fire within you when you think all is forsaken. Listen to me now, all is not forsaken, you need never feel broken again. Sometimes darkness can show you the light don't ignore, listen to me now, all is not forsaken. You need never feel broken again sometimes darkness. Can show you the light, great song is always Naruto. Tracy said with a smile making everybody smile towards their blonde friend who beamed at them. Come inside it's time to eat, Narcissa shouted from the door making everybody walk to the house where they ate and then spend a bit more time before everybody left to start packing for their return to school. The week went by fast for them, they spent it flying around Naruto practiced his shots while Harry and Draco used a snitch to chase it and see what times they managed to put up. 
They also saw that Harry was a natural at languages when he was more advanced in French than either Naruto or Draco, while Naruto was better at the practical stuff than the theory except at potions where he was a master, while Draco was better at theory and charms while Harry was better at transfiguration. The last night they spent at Malfoy Manor was Narcissa making sure that Draco, Naruto and Harry packed everything and didn't try to sneak something they shouldn't. Um, Narcissa should I take the invisibility cloak? Harry asked when he was done folding his robes. Hum, it would be helpful for you, all right but you must promise to use it only when it is absolutely necessary all right, Narcissa said making Harry nod. Remember to take your kanai knives and to practice, Naruto you have the scroll with the targets right? Anko asked from the door making Naruto nod and Draco and Harry to pack their sets. After they were done they went down to dinner where Lucius and Narcissa gave them last minute advice and to watch out for anything out of the ordinary and warned Naruto that they didn't want a repeat of neither the troll incident or his special shot. The next day the whole manor was up early and had a huge breakfast, they left an hour earlier as they had agreed with the other parents so they could get in a compartment and catch up with Hermione. When they were all at the platform and met up with everybody they waved to their respective parents and went to the compartment while Narcissa parroted Anko back to Konoha so she could get back to interrogation and reporting on how Naruto was doing, and give Iruka Naruto's final exam. So, how was France Hermione? Theo asked the bushy-haired girl who smiled and went on about everything she learned and saw in France. And so the train ride went with them laughing and catching up to Hermione. You found out what? Daphne asked Harry when they were in their room. I found a mirror that showed me my family. Harry answered making everybody stare at him like he was crazy. Harry, where did you found this mirror? Draco asked after a moment's hesitation. In an abandoned classroom in the fourth floor. Harry answered after recalling what he did last night after not being able to sleep and decided to wander around the castle. You do know that what you did was reckless and Aunt Sissy is going to kill you if she finds out right? And force you to leave the cloak in the manor? Naruto answered besides Daphne who just nod her head to her blonde friend. I know, that is why I want you and Draco to come with me tonight and look for it I really need to show it to you guys, Harry said and explained what was his plan. We will talk about this later Harry, for now focus on school, Hermione answered and made her way to the door. Let's go guys we have classes, and she left the room being followed by Theo, Blaze, Tracy and Draco. You should listen to Hermione mate, I'll see you in the classroom you found that mirror at midnight okay? Naruto said in a whisper when he saw that Daphne was waiting for them by the door. How do you plan on sneaking out of your dorm and make it to the fourth floor without being spotted by somebody? Harry whispered back. His answer was a mischievous smile from Naruto who left the room with Daphne telling him something about her sister. That night Harry made his way to the classroom that housed the mirror, he wasn't sure how Naruto planned on getting to the classroom without being spotted. He opened the door and saw Naruto leaning against a wall with his eyes closed and not facing the mirror. He also saw the blonde long hair of Daphne, he swallowed hard at that when he saw Daphne was there also. So did somebody saw you coming? Harry questioned one of his best friends. Naruto just snorted and shook his head, he is lucky that he is able to sneak in anywhere he wants, Daphne said from her place, this better be worthy Harry. I didn't lose my sleep night just for a prank. She said with a glare towards Harry, who looked towards Naruto for help, who was smirking at him. He sighed and moved to step closer to the mirror, and there they were, his parents, or what he thought they would look like if they were alive, James Potter with his messy black hair and glasses just like Harry, with brown eyes was smiling softly at him and had a hand on his shoulder. While Lily Potter had a loving and proud smile on her face, her beautiful long red hair hanging down her back, her emerald green eyes shone with love while she ran her hand through his hair just as a mother should do. He was tempted to stay there all night again, to never leave, he wanted to be with them. He felt a hand on his shoulder and thought that his father was holding his arm, until he was shoved out of the way, he looked shocked from the floor that Naruto had his eyes closed and had his arms stretched out. Genjutsu, illusions, they are not here Harry, they were gone a long time ago, dead, never coming back, waiting for us to grow old, strong, wise, loved. Naruto said while Daphne just moved and hugged him, he turned around and hugged her back letting all his feelings out. W what did you see in the mirror Naruto? Harry whispered while he got up and sat far away from the mirror not daring to look at it again in fear of it ensnaring him again. My mum, my dad, Hokage Gigi, Anko Ne Chan, they were cheering for me while I was being sweared in as Hokage of my village, the strongest shinobi of Konoha. That is my deepest desire, but I know it won't happen, because I found something far better here in the magical world. Naruto answered not noticing that Daphne was still holding him tightly. He was grateful that there was almost no light and that Harry had bad eyesight that his blush went unnoticed. Let's go Naruto-kun we should make our way to the common room now. Good night Harry, Daphne said and tugged Naruto out of the room while Harry threw his father's cloak on and made his way back to the Gryffindor Tower. The next weeks went by as normal as possible for them, no new attempts on Harry, Harry, Hermione and Draco found out what was being hidden in the third floor, thanks to the gamekeeper Hagrid who let it slip when they were having tea and talking about Harry's parents. The Philosopher Stone, created by the alchemist Nicholas Flamel, said to be able to change rocks to precious metals, and create the elixir of life, Hermione told them after she found the correct book about the famous alchemist. Congrats, you figured it out what that Cerberus is guarding now drop it, Naruto said with a serious expression. But Naruto, we have to stop whoever is trying to steal it. Draco argued with his best friend, while Harry and Hermione nodded with him. No we don't Draco, we have to stay out of trouble, this seems like an S-class secret, Naruto argued, making Draco flinch a bit. 
Look that Cerberus is there for a reason to guard the stone that Flamel entrusted to Dumbledore. So just leave it there. Naruto said with a glare trying to convey the seriousness of the matter to his friends. Harry, Draco, and Hermione just nodded their heads while planning on keeping an eye out for the stone. Good, I will see you guys later, I have to go to practice, Naruto said and grabbed his broom and left the room. Tracy, Blaze and Daphne left for the library after saying their goodbyes, while Theo went to practice with the guitar Naruto gave him for Christmas. We are not going to let anybody steal the stone right Harry? Hermione asked while she turned to the black-haired boy. No we won't, I say we go to Hagrid and see what else we can find, and I might sneak into the library tonight and look for more information on Nicholas Flamel and the stone, Harry answered. Draco just shook his head but knew that they would need him, hopefully Naruto didn't kill him, or maybe Naruto wouldn't be too harsh compared to his mother, yeah maybe Naruto was the better option. That afternoon Harry, Hermione, and Draco were visiting Hagrid, who was looking around nervous to the kettle he had on the fire. The three kids tried everything to gleam out of Hagrid what other protections were around the stone, which wasn't easy because Hagrid clammed up after telling them about Fluffy. I'm telling you he is mental Harry, who in the name of Merlin would call a Cerberus, Fluffy, Draco said while they were walking back to the castle for dinner. Well, Hagrid of course, Harry answered with a bit of mirth on his tone. Look we will talk about it later alright, he said and walked towards Katie that was waving him over by the team. The next day at breakfast everybody saw a dramatic points decrease on the Gryffindor glass. Everybody saw that three lions were being avoided like they were the plague. Draco was the first one to point it out when they entered after their morning exercise. Look at the house points, he said pointing to the wall with a smirk. Wonder what happened to make them drop down like that. Daphne and Tracy just shrugged not really being morning persons, while Theo was nursing a bruise that Naruto gave him that morning when he got distracted, while Blaze was also staring at the three lions that were being shunned. Hey Naruto, they heard from down the table to see that Flint was coming down to meet them. Morning little firsties, I got an answer from Professor Snape about your earrings, he said that there was nothing in the rule book about them so you can get them. Flint said and gave Naruto the box where the earrings the Inoshika Cho sent him for his birthday. Thanks Flint, Naruto said taking the box and turned his attention to the head table to see Snape nod his head making Naruto smile and wave the box a bit and nodding. Give them here Naruto, in the night I can pierce your ears if you want. Daphne said with a small smile to the blonde who smiled and gave her the box thanking her. The rest of the day went the same as the first semester, with the exception that they were starting harder charms and transfigurations. In potions Naruto had paired with Daphne while Harry had Draco as his partner, while the shy Neville Longbottom kept on blowing his cauldron thanks by his clumsiness, shyness, and that Ron Weasley was his partner. Dada was still a pain to understand the stuttering professor that smelled like garlic all the time, Harry kept on having headaches in that class. You should go to the infirmary mate, these headaches are not normal, Blaze told Harry after the last period of the day, yet Harry refused saying that it would go away soon. So Harry cared to tell us what happened last night to make you guys lose half of your points, Draco asked wanting details making everybody stop what they were doing and turn to the only Gryffindor in the room. Well, from what Oliver and Katie told me last night Weasley, Finnegan, and Thomas sneaked out of the dorm and went to see Hagrid, who somehow had gotten a dragon egg and hatched it so they sneaked it to the astronomy tower where somebody was waiting for them and took the dragon away. Harry started explaining to his eager friends, he knew that with those points lost they were back in last place for the house cup. They were celebrating when Filch showed up, and busted, Harry explained with a laugh, and took them to McGonagall who gave them a month worth of detentions and 50 points from each he finished and laughed along all his friends. Well they made a stupid move, they should have waited till they were in their common room to celebrate, Naruto said while not moving letting Daphne do her work. They should be grateful that Filch didn't found Snape first or you guys would be in the negatives, he said while Daphne pierced his ears now that Snape said it was fine for him to do so. Have your headaches stopped, Blaze asked looking up from his Dada essay. Uh, and yes, Harry tried and unconsciously rubbed his scar. You really shouldn't try to lie to us Harry, Theo said with a smile. Get up. Naruto said with authority making everybody follow him towards Snape's office. After having Snape do some checkups and giving Harry some potions for his head they left to their respective common rooms. Two weeks went by and Harry was explaining what the idiotic trio were telling about their detention. They had to go to the Forbidden Forest with Hagrid to find what has been killing the unicorns. Harry said, Ron and Dean found a cloaked figure bending over the neck of the poor unicorn drinking its blood, when they screamed the thing glided towards them when it was getting nearer them it seems a centaur saved them and scared the thing away, then it escorted them to the edge of the forest where Hagrid was waiting for them he finished with a sigh. And your scar was hurting during all this? Theo asked with concern. Yeah I don't know why though, Harry confirmed with a nod. Don't worry we will find what is going on with your scar, Daphne said while hugging Harry. During that time Harry, Draco, and Hermione theorized when would Quirrell try to steal the stone. They were alone on the library thankfully the others were busy, Naruto was at practice, Daphne Blaze and Tracy were with him watching while Theo was talking with Professor Snape about a potion he found interesting. He won't try to steal it while Dumbledore is in the school, and hopefully he doesn't try it, Hermione said while she had her nose buried in another obscure book on the stone. He will, the temptation to have such item in his hands will force him to do so, Draco explained to his friends. Don't let anybody hear us out, Harry hissed hoping nobody was listening in their conversation. 
and the weeks came and went, and Naruto proved to be a great chaser helping Slytherin win their last two games, scoring at least ten goals on each game while Harry kept an unbeaten streak as a seeker against Hufflepuff. The cup would be decided after the game between Ravenclaw and Gryffindor. The exams came quickly, for the first time Naruto wasn't worried about them. This was the first year the professors didn't try to sabotage his efforts and he could let his full potential be seen, he was tied in first place with Hermione while Daphne and Tracy were in fourth and fifth place respectively. Draco, Theo, Blaze and Harry were in 10th, 12th, 13th, 14 and 15 respectively. Woo. Finally, free from classes. Naruto was shouting while he and his friends were walking out in the lawn near the Black Lake. Two more weeks and we get to leave. Draco said, where do you guys plan on going for vacations? He asked to his friends. Back to Italy to spend time with my grandfather, Blaze said. Two weeks in France, the rest at home getting ready for the next school year. Hermione said while Theo lead her while she had her eyes on a book. Greece. Tracy said with a smile. Staying at the manor with Astoria while grandmother is over, Daphne said thinking what pranks Astoria would pull this summer. Staying in the manor, while mother gives me extra lessons for social meetings, Draco said with a groan. Back to the Dursley with a lot of chores waiting for me, Harry said a bit depressed. To Konoha, pass the exam and start going out on missions for the village, and start reviewing for next year, and getting ready for my apprentice. Naruto answered with a soft smile thinking of the Inoshika Cho try on his class. Don't worry Harry if the muggles treat you bad send us an owl, we will bust you out of there. I'm sure mother won't mind going to pick you up. Draco said with a smirk while slinging his arm around Harry's shoulder making everybody nod. Thanks guys I will, Harry said with a smile happy that he had found true friends. What are your plans for the summer Theo, Hermione asked the quiet boy. Spend time with mother, avoid father, and practice with the guitar Naruto got me, he said with a smile. We will make sure to pop in every other week to hang out, you better not have long-term missions, Draco said to Naruto who nodded with a smile. Let's go flying. Harry said running to their room with Draco hot on his heels. The rest just followed to a more sedated pace. Evening came and Draco, Harry and Hermione were under Harry's invisibility cloak walking towards the third floor corridor. Damn it. Why did Dumbledore had to leave today? Draco griped quietly until Harry told him to shut up. They made their way to the third floor corridor where they knew Fluffy and the Philosopher's Stone were waiting. When they were standing outside the door to the Philosopher's Stone they could hear Fluffy breathing, they gulped a bit and entered. Those fools. Naruto shouted and threw stuffs around their room. I told them to leave that fucking stone alone. But did they listen? No of course not. Those bakas. He kept on shouting and pacing around the room while muttering things he would do to his friends that were reckless. Naruto. Relax. They are safe, just a bit shaken up about the whole experience. Daphne said while getting up and walking to hug the blonde, making him relax in her arms a bit. Sure they were idiots especially Draco for doing something so Gryffindorish, so, so reckless, but you have to understand they did it for a good cause, you heard Dumbledore and I bet you found a hidden message in his words. Tracy said with a thoughtful look towards Naruto who now paced thinking about the words the headmaster had said in the feast last night. Yeah. Draco beat McGonagall's chest set risking his life thankfully he only suffered from an open skull nothing major. Hermione helped him get out after Harry had crossed Snape's challenge. Naruto explained what he figured from the words of the headmaster. Harry faced Quirrell who somehow was possessed by him, saved the stone and thanks to some weird protection Quirrell was unable to touch Harry without suffering some kind of damage thanks to having him inside him making him leave the body, killing Quirrell in the process. He finished making his friends gasp at what Naruto figured from the vague words the headmaster told the school. Look, the good thing is that they are safe, the stone is safe and we leave this Friday, we may have lost the Quidditch Cup by a few points but we still win the House Cup so relax, Theo said from his spot in the couch. Yeah, yeah you are right Theo, I should relax. Naruto gave in and sat down with his guitar, he started to strum it. Play. Don't give up by Kevin Rudolph I've been high. I've been low, traveled down every single road, I felt love. I felt pain but it's all just a part of the game, and there's people out there get you down cause their cry in the blues. Yeah, just cause they never done this it's got nothing to do with you. So don't give up don't look down cause your time is gonna come around. Don't look back you've come too far, baby you were born to be a star. Whoa, 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 yeah, I've had doubt, I've had faith. But I believe, every day, I've been right, I've been wrong. But you'll remember me when I'm gone, and there's people out there they just doubt what they can't see. Yeah, cause there's a shining star that baby you were born to be. So don't give up don't look down cause your time is gonna come around. Don't look back you've come too far, baby you were born to be a star. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 yeah, so don't give up don't look down cause your time is gonna come around. Don't look back you've come too far, baby you were born. You were born to be a star, don't give up don't look down. Cause your time is gonna come around, don't look back you've come too far. Baby you were born to be a star, whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 so don't give up. Don't look down, cause your time is gonna come around. Yeah, cause your time is gonna come around. The last week of school was crazy, Harry woke up two days after the game against Ravenclaw, thankfully the team didn't hold it against him. On the other hand, his friends were pissed of with them, especially Naruto who ripped into them when they were discharged from the hospital wing for good. 
At the end of the year Feast Dumbledore awarded enough points to Harry, Hermione, Draco and surprisingly to Neville Longbottom who apparently tried to stop Harry from going out after the many times the idiotic trio, sneaked out and lost many doing so Gryffindor managed to pull up a comeback in house points, not so much where they managed to tie with Hufflepuff while Slytherin still won the house cup, much to the pleasure of Professor Snape, who had a smug smirk on his face. The next day they were waiting for the carriages to take them down to the train station. Naruto created clones to carry the trunks, while Theo asked Professor Snape to shrink his guitar case so his father wouldn't found out. Naruto had Randy sink into his skin and Kura was being hugged and carried by Daphne while Harry was getting Hedwig into her cage. We will write you off in Harry, Tracy said with a smile to a grateful Harry. They loaded up into a compartment and spent the train ride playing games, eating sweets and thinking back about their first year in Hogwarts wondering what the next six years in the magical school would bring them. They arrived at the nine and three quarters platform where they could see their parents. Naruto grabbed his trunk along with Daphne's making his friends laugh a bit at the gesture between blondes. They walked for a bit looking for their parents when a blonde missile hit Naruto in the chest. Master. The blonde missile turned out to be Astoria, making everybody chuckle at the smile Naruto and Astoria shared. Tori get off of Naruto, and where are our parents? Daphne said while helping Naruto get under the weight of his and her trunks. They are over there. Astoria said and grabbed her hand and dragged her towards the group of parents. When everybody was hugged by their respective parents or in the case of Harry and Naruto were hugged by the Malfoys. Anko was out of the village on a mission but she will get back to Konoha tomorrow evening. Narcissa answered the unasked question. You will flow to your apartment from the manor okay? Naruto nodded with a smile and said goodbye to his friends. Harry and Hermione made their way together to the muggle side of the platform where Harry's uncle was waiting for him. Get in quickly, Uncle Vernon said while opening the trunk and picking up one side of the trunk. Harry closed the trunk and turned around to wave to Hermione goodbye and got in the car. Thanks for coming uncle, Harry said quietly while his uncle just grunted. You will keep Dudley's second bedroom, do all your chores except cooking breakfast and try to keep your weirdness at a minimum around the neighbors okay, his uncle said with a gruff voice. Harry just nodded and kept quite the rest of the trip. Tracy and her parents apparited to their home smiling, Tracy was telling them all about her school year and classmates. How Blaze was quiet but a history nut, how Hermione was super intelligent. How Daphne was dependable and always tried to keep Naruto in check. Those two will end up married I know, said Marius Davis her father while her mother Ileana nodded her head with a soft smile. How Draco could be a pompous ass sometimes but loyal to his friends. How Theo was cunning enough to never get caught in his pranks with Naruto. How Harry hated all the attention his scar brought him. And how Naruto could be reckless sometimes but was always dependable for anything. It seems you made great friends honey, Ileana said with a smile and hugged Tracy making her daughter smile. Theodore meet me in my studio, Alexis not said with a hardened voice. Theo made his way trying to calm his nerves he knew that he would ask about his year and what allies he made. How was your first year? Straight to the point. Good, no troubles in classes made allies with the Malfoy heir and the Zabini heir, tentative alliance with the Greengrass girl. Theo said and left it at that he knew if he mentioned the name Uzumaki, Potter or Granger he would be beaten. Good houses, purebloods for more than seven generations the Zabini, the Malfoys for more than a decade. Greengrass would be a good ally in the Wizengamot. Alexis not said and dismissed his son with a wave of his hand, he would have to plan accordingly for when his master returned, maybe he should cause a bit of panic with the object he was entrusted and told that could open the fabled chamber of secrets. Sue, made progress trying to get Naruto? Anne asked Daphne with a bit of mirth in her eyes. Mother. Naruto kun is not an object for me to try to get. Daphne said scandalized by what he mother was implying, but then blushed when she laughed along with Astoria. Oh honey I'm just messing with you, besides I know you wouldn't use Naruto and you don't like him for his money. Anne said with a soft smile, you know, her mother once told me that the Uzumakis believed in something called the Red String of Destiny. She said while Astoria and Daphne listened in while Cyrus went to pick his mother, she said that the Uzumakis would find the love of their lives when they were around 11 or 12 years old, and when they did a small red string would be attached between the pinky fingers signifying the bond between the two. Anne finished explaining to her mesmerized daughters. She told me that the couple would feel an increase of power, and normally if the Uzumaki was male then his love would always try to stop his pranking or at least have them somewhat controlled, Anne said with a subtle smirk towards her oldest daughter. Anne knew in her heart that Naruto and Daphne were destined to be together, and she could see the beginning of the red string of destiny. The three greengrass women sat around and talked about school and other projects they had until Cyrus popped in with his mother who smiled at her granddaughters. Blaze and his mother arrived by the flow network to their house in Florence where his grandfather ran the family both in the muggle world and in the magical. Blaze, please come to my studio. Blaze heard his grandfather call him and smiled while he walked towards it. Tell me, how was your first year in Hogwarts? His grandfather Alberti asked with a smile, he liked his daughter's only child, and knew that both would never join the family business she sat for him in the Wizengamot and Blaze wanted to become a master historian. It was great grandfather, made friends and allies, the Uzumaki and Potters have rejoined the magical world and I'm great friends with both, same as I'm good friends with the Malfoy and Knott's heir, met the Greengrass girl and a half-blood named Tracy Davis whose father owns a shop in the junction between Nocturne and Diagon Alley, and a Muggleborn that is by far the smartest witch in our generation. 
Blaze recounted everything that happened in the year by just being friends with either Naruto or Harry. Alberti listened with a smile, he knew that Blaze would become great someday, and he hoped to help him or at least be there for him. Well all your friends are welcome to visit us and if they are ever in need of help we will help, especially the Uzumaki boy, we have ties with them both family and magical. Alberti explained to Blaze that some many years ago Azabini married a Uzumaki before they moved to the elemental nations and were wiped out. So, what you are saying is that Naruto and I are like cousins, thrice removed? Blaze asked his grandfather, that is why he wanted to become a historian to know everything that happened in the past and compare it to how the present was. Actually more close you were like, second cousins, my brother married this Spitfire Uzumaki right after they left Hogwarts. Alberti explained, you can see our family tapestry and look him up. Pablo Zabini. Alberti said and dismissed his grandson so he could focus on the muggle affairs. We will see you in a few weeks, we will have dinner at the Yamanaka so you and Draco will be able to fly for a while in the morning, well if you don't have anything to do. Lucius said with a smile to his godson, who nodded and carried his trunk to the fireplace. Ah, uh, Uncle Luke, how did you manage to hook a fireplace in our apartment and then connect it to the flow network? Naruto asked curiosity gaining the best of him. Easy, I called some favors in the ministry we also hooked one to the Hokage office. Now off you go you are to flow to the Hokage tower, Hiruzen wants to talk to you. Lucius said after giving a rather awkward hug to his godson who smiled and stepped into the roaring fireplace. So Draco, care to explain what was your plan by going after a madman? Lucius asked his trembling son. He knew Narcissa wanted to hear the story too so he made Draco wait and suffer a bit until she was able to do so. Oh uh, we thought that we might be able to take the stone before him. Draco tried when he saw his mother come into the studio. When he saw the glare in both his parents' face he knew he was in deep trouble. Please tell me that the sorting hat made a mistake and you were supposed to be a lion instead of a snake along with Hermione by how reckless you both acted. I mean sure Harry I actually understand it was sheer stupidity and recklessness but from a Ravenclaw and a Slytherin I don't. Narcissa said with a sigh, she should punish Harry too, and see if she could convince Hermione's parents to punish her too. Your lessons will be double now. Lucius said, no flying for two months. Draco was about to protest. Be glad I didn't make it till the rest of the summer you will have two more months to practice. Draco just sighed and nodded. Hopefully you will not go charging in without a plan next time Harry and Hermione drag you into a crazy plan. Lucius said and had to duck when Narcissa took a swing at him with a glare making him chuckle a bit. Go dragon, tomorrow we will have a big day, and we have to go pick the bracelet for Eno. Narcissa said while she took her wand out and started to cast several curses and hexes to her husband who would simply dodge or shield. Fight back Lucius. She snarled while Draco bolted to his room laughing at one of the jinx her mother managed to send through his father's shield making him have a dance tutu. Hermione was telling her parents everything she did even the stone incident and of course they were mad but glad that she was okay. They arrived home and she sat and started organizing her books by subject and then all the ones she got for Christmas by her friends. I have never had friends, but this time, I do and they like me for myself and not just for my brains. She thought to herself and sighed with a smile hoping that they would still like her, and hopefully they would stay friends for a long time. You should rest honey, tomorrow we leave for France, and you can tell us more about your year. Mary told her daughter who just nodded and fell asleep thinking what would the next six years would bring her way. Naruto managed to stop spinning after a while, he was holding tightly to Kura and his trunk while Randy was safely tucked in his arm. Good afternoon Naruto-kun. He heard behind him and saw that his Gigi was sitting in his desk with his pipe on his mouth and signing some paperwork. Hey Gigi, what's up? Naruto said with a smile while letting go of Kura and walking towards the desk where Randy raised from his skin and hissed something towards Naruto who just nodded. Report. The Sandame said with a no-nonsense tone, making Naruto straighten and stand at attention. Hi. First place in the year, no more crazy stunts during games, no more accidents during my time, learned as much as possible. Naruto stated while straightening himself and his familiars stopped making noises and exploring the office. Hiruzen just nodded and took notes. Homework? Professors? Classmates? He asked his favorite blonde. Six inch paper on the property of trolls blood and its uses on potions. Three inches on the possible uses of the jinxes on daily life. Naruto explained while the Hokage just nodded. No troubles with the professors, except with the defense against the dark arts who had a previously death dark lord on the back of his head and was looking for a way to recuperate his body. Harry managed to stop him, thanks to the protection his mother gave him when she sacrificed herself for him. Naruto continued. The professor was found death from what I managed to gather from Headmaster Dumbledore talk, old Coot tried to pass it all of it as accident. He continued making Hiras and nod and smile, Naruto's deductive skills were improving, he was sad that more probably he would leave the village next year. He knew that no matter what happened the villagers would never change their views of Naruto and that him and Anko would leave the village behind, he had already given Anko Naruto's inheritance and had her change all the money to galleons and in a Gringotts safe with the goblins, while the jutsus and sealing books were also in the vault and Anko would retrieve them when they were needed. Classmates were good, nobody tried something stupid the housemates presented in united front against the other houses, while some people from the other houses discriminated us for just the colors we sported, nobody tried to go farther than a prank or hit an insult. Naruto continued with amusement. Pranked a few people from all the houses, never let them catch me. Draco's training improved, Anko made Harry start, she thinks something will happen in the future. Naruto said with a questioning tone. Don't worry about that Naruto. 
Hiruzen stated, just a precaution, I sent her the kanai set for both Draco Kun and Harry Kun. Go home Naruto tomorrow is your exam it is an important day for you. Hiruzen said with a smile and Naruto just nodded and created a couple of clones to carry his trunk towards his and Anko's apartment. He was thankful that it was late and not many people were out and about so he had nobody to glare at him. Well Kurama we are back here, do you think that we will be able to go a week without somebody glaring at me? Naruto asked his tenant. To be honest, I don't think so Kit, but don't worry we are now hooked to the flow network and we can contact your godparents, Kurama said while thinking. Yeah anyways, I should start going over the troll's blood essay. Naruto said when he opened up the door and the clones dropped the trunk while Naruto started to pull a scroll where he kept parchment and quills. Kurama just nodded and tried to help by remembering as Kashina had ever told him about its uses. They spent two hours doing the essay and managed to get three quarters of it, Naruto decided to let it dry and finish it the next day after the exam, and made his way to bed, where he dreamt of flying with his friends. The next day Naruto woke up early and Randy and Kura followed him through his morning rituals, while Kurama was talking to Naruto and questioning him about the notes Hermione had made him take for his exam. After he had a rather small breakfast compared to his mornings at Hogwarts, he made his way to the academy where his Gigi told him to go to his usual classroom to take the exam. He had his nose buried in his homework planner that Hermione got him for his birthday going over the notes he had for his graduation exam. He also had diagrams about the jutsus they would probably ask him to perform to pass. He never saw the glare that was directed at him by the villagers that were up already getting ready for the day. He arrived at the academy and to his classroom quite early and only saw three of his classmates already there. Sasuke Uchiha was sitting next to the window glaring with his hands laced in front of his mouth. He was thinking about the night of the massacre and thinking what he would do to that man when he finally got his hands on him. He heard the door open for the third time since he arrived, and saw a mop of blonde spiked hair. He recognized the hairstyle of that of the Dobi, he thought he finally understood that he was a horrible ninja and would never amount to more that cannon fodder, he just snorted and went back to ignore everybody and everything. Shino Aburame was going over the information he found on this new bug species the other day on his garden compound, when he heard the door open for the second time, he looked up and saw Naruto enter with his nose buried in a book and by the way he was moving his mouth Shino deduced that he was going over something for the exam, after a few seconds of examination to the blonde he went back to his notes and forgot all about the blonde. Hinata Hyuga was dreaming about the day her, Naruto-kun, would come and proclaim his undying love for her and they would marry, she woke up fro her daydreaming when she heard the door open and quickly wiped her nose clean of blood about the dream she had of Naruto and saw her crush walking and not paying any attention with a rather big snake draped over his shoulders hissing in his ear. She smiled and blushed when she saw him, she had been looking for him all the time last year, and even went as far to ask her father about him, when her father told her to forget about him she huffed and decided to spy on his guardian, the psycho snake woman that would pike him from time to time at the academy, she saw her receive a weird bird every two weeks and she figured it must be village information and that she didn't know where her lover was. Naruto walked to the last row of the class and sat down ignoring everybody while focusing all his attention on his notebook. I should get her a history book of Konoha for her birthday. Naruto talked to Kurama and Randy, and a book on the history of the elemental nations for both Blaze and Tracy. What do you think guys? He asked. I think it ISSS a clever idea and they would appreciate the gifts. Randy hissed while he curled up on the table and was looking around the classroom, unlike Kura he would rather be here with Naruto, Kura was scouting hunting grounds for them, and also other threats to either Naruto and Anko or to themselves. They will appreciate that you remember their likes and will be happy to know more about the lands we rule. Kurama roared in Naruto's mind making both him and Randy to chuckle. He waited and saw several of his classmates arrive, Kiba came in with his Ninken Akamaru and proceeded to sit next to Hanada and tried to chat with her and asking if she wanted to go out to eat, and make fun of Naruto, and his clothes. When Kiba pointed this out everybody turned to Naruto and saw that he was wearing some kind of robe with red and white colors, that reached his shins and had a crest with what appeared to be three dragons holding three balls. Oi! Naruto Baka what are you wearing Dobi? Kiba asked while laughing and pointing. Naruto looked up from his notebook and saw that almost everybody was there with the exception of the Inoshika Cho trio and Sakura. The ENQT official robe. Naruto replied simply and went back to his notes. W. What the hell is that Baka? Kiba barked and was about to stand up when they heard the door open on more time and saw Shikamaru and Shoji walk in. Hey Naruto, Randy, how was it? Shikamaru said with a lazy wave of his hands and sat next to Naruto, while Shoji sat on the other side and offered some chips to Naruto. Good. Top of the class next to Hermione, where is Ino-chan? Naruto asked while grabbing some chips. She had an altercation with Sakura, and they raced here, the long way. Choji explained in between bites while Shikamaru started setting up a shogi board and Randy rose a bit to play against the lazy genius. Oh, well after the exams we could go for a bite to eat and I can tell you guys about the school year. Naruto said and had to hold on to the desk when the classroom started to tremble. Everybody turned to the door and saw it blast from its hinges and Ino and Sakura struggling to get through. Ha I won Ino pig. Sakura screeched while she tried to push Ino backwards. In your dreams forehead my toe was in before that huge billboard reached the door. Ino shouted and managed to get into the classroom, well stumbled in and had to straighten her clothes a bit and started scanning the classroom. Oh there you are Naruto, she shouted with glee making Hanada glare at her, when did you get back? Ino asked when she finally made it to his row and pushed Choji away and sat next to the blonde. 
yesterday afternoon, took a little detour to the Malfoy Manor and came back here right after lunch. Naruto explained. And I've been studying the notes Hermione forced me to take since Christmas. I think I did a pretty good job. He said with a grin and showed Ino and Choji who managed to sit his notes on what they had done over the year. She made a pretty good job, Choji said with a grin. Oi, she just advised me I wrote all this. This is my letter. Naruto shouted and glared at a laughing Choji and a giggling Ino. But Naruto-kun this looks like a girl wrote it, Ino continued teasing him. Do you guys know how hard it is to write with quills? No it is a bloody nightmare mates, but Daphne and Hermione forced me and Draco to improve. Naruto said and pulled a letter that Draco wrote for Ino. Draco sends his regards to you boys and his love to you Ino, he is infatuated with you. Naruto said with a smirk when Ino blushed and sighed. Ino pig stop thinking about my Sasuke-kun. They heard a screech from the front of the class where they saw Sakura hugging herself to the emo king as Randy had been calling him while he tried to outsmart Shikamaru. Anyways, thanks for the earrings guys, they mean so much to me. Naruto said with a smile and showed his pierced ears to his best friends. We are glad, troublesome snake, our father said that they have literally adopted you into the clan. Troublesome. Shikamaru said while he tried to trap Randy and beat him. Yeah, I can't have you running around without them because who would be my twin? Ino said and hugged Naruto who smiled a bit. And we will always have your back. Choji said with a smile and munching on his chips. After a few more minutes of waiting Aruka sensei entered the classroom along with his assistant Mizuki, who was glaring at Naruto. Sit down and shut up brats, Aruka shouted making everybody scramble to their sits. Shikamaru please put away your set you can play later with that snake. Aruka said while Mizuki made to grab Randy who hissed angrily at him and was about to lunge when Naruto just hissed and told him to relax. That beast shouldn't be here, Mizuki said with a glare towards Naruto. He is my companion, we have been learning how to fight together. Naruto said with a smirk, it was true Randy, and Kura had been training alongside him to attack when they were least expected. Mizuki just glared and made his way back to front of the class while Aruka explained the graduation exam. They delivered the written exams, Aruka made sure to give Naruto one hoping to avoid sabotage either by the director of the academy or Mizuki. One hour later Naruto was finishing his exam at the same time that Sasuke did, when they reached the desk where Aruka was waiting they glared at each other, and Sasuke tried to push Naruto off so he could be the first one to deliver it, Naruto didn't budge and pushed back making Sasuke stumble a bit and glared at the back of Naruto's head. They turned the exam in and were told by Aruka that they had an hour to relax and that they should wait by the target practice area for the rest of the class. Sasuke just nodded and made his way outside while Naruto smiled to his favorite teacher, and motioned Randy to stop bothering Shikamaru and to go to him. Um Aruka sensei can you tell me how I scored on the test and homework you sent me on my birthday while I was away? Naruto asked while scratching the back of his head. Your scores improved and by what I saw on this exam you will pass I'm sure of that. Aruka said with a grin towards Naruto who smiled and scratched his snake under the jaw. He was still trying to wrap his mind that Naruto could understand any type of snakes, not only the summoned ones. After an hour had come and gone Naruto started to write a couple of letters for his friends, he knew that either he could send them through Draco in the flow, he wasn't sure a messenger hawk would manage to make the whole trip, and they might be needed in this three months he had of break. He was joined by Ino who was rereading the letter Draco sent her and she had a wistful smile. I should do the same as Naruto and talk to my parents about going to live with them before they go back for their fourth year. She thought to herself with a smile she was sure her dad would agree and could find somebody better than her to lead the clan when he wanted to retire. She looked to see Naruto with a new guitar and playing mindlessly not paying attention to anything, while Choji was watching how even Shikamaru and Randy the snake were finishing their shogi game damn that snake was intelligent and good. She felt somebody staring at her so she tried to discreetly locate the source, when she saw Hinata staring at her and Naruto, and sighed when she saw the shy girl glare at her. So Naruto do you think we will be able to meet your friends? Ino asked getting the attention of her three best friends. Ah uh, yeah I guess, Naruto said with a bit of uncertainty on his voice he was hoping they did met but not in the village. Gather round it's time for the accuracy test, Aruka yelled making Naruto seal his guitar and calling Randy to his side. Well let's go guys we still have to do the accuracy test and the three jutsus, Naruto said with a grin making them nod. Congratulations Naruto, your accuracy has improved a lot, so has your strength, 9 out of 10 inches Aruka said while Naruto smiled. Well it helps that Randy would always lounge on my shoulders when I was practicing so he acted in a sort of weights for me, he explained gaining a nod of understanding from Aruka. Yamanaka Ino you're up. Aruka said while Naruto made his way to his friends and when he passed by Ino he smiled and wished her luck. Ino managed to hit 8 out of 10 she knew that Sakura would get the kunoichi of the year because of her test scores but she would be better prepared. She also knew that no matter what Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto would be paired together from what she could glean from her father after the council meetings. They moved to the sparring ring where the students had to last at least two minutes with the sensei. Shikamaru managed to maneuver Aruka into a move that if Shikamaru had a kanai he could have stabbed Aruka in the throat. Choji managed to endure the barrage Mizuki threw at him and hold him off. Shino also managed to endure the assault from Aruka, while Kiba charged in recklessly but managed to survive the two minutes thanks to the help of Akamaru. When it was Sasuke's turn came all the girls except Ino and Hanato went mad and started cheering. Mizuki decided to take the test for both Naruto and Sasuke, so he stepped into the ring and started with some easy punches for Sasuke to dodge. 
After the first minute mark Sasuke went to the offense and beat Mizuki with the use of a spin kick to the midsection and an uppercut. Mizuki praised Sasuke's ability to beat him a seasoned chunin, then he called Naruto in who just walked with Randy slithering by his side. You are not allowed to bring your pet into the ring Naruto. Mizuki said with a smirk trying to find a reason to fail, the Kiyubi brat. I'm afraid that you failed this part of the test, one of the most important parts of the test, and was about to walk out when Aruka intervened. Mizuki, that snake is not just his pet, I bet that the snake is the same as Akamaru as Takiba, so they are allowed to help their partners, Aruka said with a smirk that was mirrored by Naruto. Very well, begin, Mizuki said and launched himself and started to strike Naruto hard, unlike he did with Sasuke, everybody could see that Mizuki was being unfair towards Naruto but only five people were caring. At the one minute mark Naruto decided to stop running, he was standing by the edge of the ring while Randy had slithered up his arm, and was hissing something towards Mizuki who was breathing hard. How is it possible that the damn Kiyubi managed to hold me off for this long, he used to be the worst at taijutsu. Mizuki thought to himself, when that happened Naruto smirked and made like he was throwing something when Randy launched itself from his arm and managed to bite Mizuki in the arm, thankfully he made it a dry bite, when Mizuki saw this he was about to strike the snake with a kanai he pulled to stab Naruto and said blonde appeared in his vision with his fist up and ready to strike, that was the last thing he saw before he blacked out. Congratulations Naruto, the fastest time to beat an instructor, good dodging skills and defensive counters, and the use of your snake as a distractor while you close the distance was marvelous. Aruka said praising the blonde who was smiling and was petting Randy and hissing that they made a great team. After Mizuki was taken to the infirmary to check if no poison entered his system Aruka started calling in students so they could prove they could make the three academy jutsus. Half an hour later just Naruto, Sasuke, and Ino were waiting. Aruka called Sasuke and they left for five minutes, while Naruto was writing a letter to Daphne, telling her what had happened to him since he arrived, while Ino was writing one for Draco that Naruto would send in the afternoon. Naruto it's your turn, Aruka said and waited for Naruto. Good luck Naruto-kun, Ino said with a smile and waited for her turn. Alright Naruto, show me the henge. Aruka asked and Naruto nodded and hanged into his sister figure Anko, and laughed creepily. Making Aruka sweat a bit knowing that Anko did laugh like that. He hated delivering paperwork to the T&I department. Perfect, now the Kawarimi, Aruka said and took a blunted kanai and let it fly towards Naruto who let it hit, a few seconds later a red ball appeared in his place making Aruka smile and nod. Perfect again Naruto, now I just need you to do a bunshin, Aruka said and crossed his finger hoping that Naruto managed to do a successful bunshin no jutsu. Gotcha Aruka sensei. Cage bunshin no jutsu, Naruto said and made two shadow clones of himself. Aruka was stomped he couldn't believe that Naruto managed to perform a jutsu from the forbidden scroll. Naruto where did you learn that jutsu? Aruka asked wondering who would be crazy enough to teach such a jutsu to Naruto. Oh Hokage Gigi let me learn it when I left for the year to Hogwarts, you know my boarding school of magic? Naruto said with a smile. Oh, good, since when are you able to do two clones? Aruka kept on questioning while giving Naruto his hit I ate. Since the second day I learned to do it, which was the second day of school term. Naruto said with a grin. It took me a while to manage to only do two clones, I usually just do ten to save up time, he said and made his way out of the academy where he walked towards the tree with a swing where Shikamaru was waiting with Choji. They laughed and gave Naruto a pat on the back and went back to relax until Ino came a few minutes later sporting her very own hit I ate, the four smirked and were about to walk out to go eat at Yakuniku the restaurant owned by Choji's parents when they heard two women talking a bit loud. Can you believe it? That monster managed to cajole his way into becoming a ninja. Said one of the women who was staring rather blatantly towards Naruto. And he seems to be controlling those three poor kids. Isn't he the, the second woman was about to say when the first one told her to shut up and that they weren't allowed to talk about that. Come on Naruto don't listen to those hags, Shikamaru said while throwing a glare towards the crowd. Damn it. Naruto just cursed and ran away. You should find another hiding spot Naruto-kun. Ino said while she walked and sat by her best friend and twin who was just strumming his guitar sitting on top of the Yandaimi Hokage head. I'm not hiding I'm just thinking, Naruto said with a sad smile. Don't listen to them Oni-chan, she said and laid her head on his shoulder. Naruto just strummed his guitar a bit and started singing. What they didn't know was that from that very spot the whole village could hear the strumming of the guitar, and started looking for the sound of it. Play. Monster by Imagine Dragons, ever since I could remember. Everything inside of me just wanted to fit in, oh 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 oh. I was never one for pretenders everything I tried to be. Just wouldn't settle in, oh 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 oh, if I told you what I was. Would you turn your back on me? And if I seem dangerous? Would you be scared? I get the feeling just because. Everything I touch isn't dark enough if this problem lies in me. I'm only a man with a candle to guide me I'm taking a stand to escape what's inside me. A monster, a monster I've turned into a monster a monster, a monster. And it keeps getting stronger can I clear my conscience? If I'm different from the rest do I have to run and hide? Oh 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 oh. I never said that I want this this burden came to me. And it's made its home inside, oh 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 oh, if I told you what I was. Would you turn your back on me? And if I seem dangerous? Would you be scared? I get the feeling just because. Everything I touch isn't dark enough if this problem lies in me. 
I'm only a man with a candle to guide me I'm taking a stand to escape what's inside me. A monster. A monster I've turned into a monster a monster, a monster. And it keeps getting stronger I'm only a man with a candle to guide me. I'm taking a stand to escape what's inside me a monster, a monster. I've turned into a monster a monster, a monster and it keeps getting stronger. Naruto finished and he felt lighter, Ino walked up to him and hugged him, she knew he would feel a bit better. Better. She asked with a smile and it grew bigger when Naruto just nodded and smiled, one of his true smiles. They walked towards the restaurant where Choji and Shikamaru were waiting for them along with their parents and Anko and Kakashi who arrived from missions earlier than expected. Naruto felt lighter and knew that his letter to Daphne and the ones for the rest of his friends would be long with just the two days he had away. They talked about who would be on which team, and Kakashi confirmed that he asked specifically for him to be his sensei, he was also sure that the last loyal Uchiha would be on his team. Naruto just groaned when he heard this, making everybody chuckle and Anko asked about the summer homework he had and she smiled proudly when Naruto confirmed that he was almost finished with his essay on potions he also needed to start on his transfigurations, charms, and Dada essays. After a few hours they left towards their apartment where Naruto sat and finished his essay for potions, he went to bed dreaming of who would be his third teammate and hopefully the emo king would work with him. Daphne woke up early that morning, last morning her sister and her letters arrived, and after a couple of flow calls to Draco, Theo, Blaze, Tracy and Anko who told them that Naruto was out training for the finals of a very important exam for the village they decided to go early the next morning. Astoria had been bouncing of the walls since she heard that Naruto would be going with them since he was taking a day off training for something important, she had wanted to go visit him when one night he had Flo called Daphne asking her to go over to his apartment. At first her father had been reluctant to let Daphne go so late at night but after a few seconds of seeing that it was quite early in Konoha he agreed, and a few minutes later she appeared in an office where an old man was smoking a pipe, and talking to Anko, a silver-haired man with a slanted headband, a pink-haired girl, is that her natural color? She wondered, a black-haired kid that was brooding with his hair styled as a duck's butt, an older teen with long black hair with the most feminine looks one could have, an older man with short black spiky hair with bandages covering from his nose to his neck and the biggest sword she had ever seen, and Naruto who was staring down at a set of twin swords she remembered seeing in one of his books he got for Christmas. Naruto-kun are you okay? She asked when she finally reached his side. Huh? Daphne? Yeah, yeah I'm okay, he said with a laugh and rubbing his neck. Ah Daphne so good to see you again how have you been? Anko asked with a smile to the blonde haired girl that was hugging Naruto. I've been good thanks and you? Daphne asked with a smile, she liked Anko's personality. Been good, interrogating and all that. Let me introduce to you to Hokage-sama, Anko said with a grin and waved to the old man in the room. A pleasure to meet you Daphne-chan, Naruto-kun always talk about you. I am Hiruzen Serutobi, the Sandame Hokage of Konoha and Naruto-kun's adoptive grandfather. Hiruzen said with a smile and laughed when Daphne paled a bit and hastily bowed like Draco had told her if she ever met the Hokage. An honor to meet you sir. Daphne said not looking up until Naruto and Anko started cackling. Come on Daphne-chan he is an old man. Naruto said laughing until he cried, or he would have if Daphne hadn't slapped him on the back of his head. Show respect to him Naruto-kun we have read about him on the books you had to study from so we all know how powerful he is. Daphne was shouting and shaking Naruto like a ragdoll. It is okay Daphne-chan. Naruto always calls me, old man, as a nickname and it is good for me not to always hear honorifics from everybody. Hiruzen said with a soft smile at the interactions between blondes. And this pervert here is Kakashi, he is Naruto's sensei and adoptive brother. Anko said while pointing at the porn reader who just waved a hand. Randy suddenly rose from Naruto's skin making Sakura and Sasuke shiver at the huge snake while Anko cooed at it. Kakashi eyes smiled while the other two people in the room stared with wide eyes at the snake. Naruto-kun are you sure it is safe for you to have such a poisonous snake near you? The boy said with a cautious voice of tone trying to make no sudden movements so the snake wouldn't strike at them. Huh? Oh, no there is no problem Haku, Randy is my familiar, and I'm immune to pretty much any poisons. Naruto explained while letting Daphne have Randy perch on her shoulders. Daphne let me introduce Sabuza Momochi, former Mist Ninja and his daughter Haku Momochi. Naruto said with a smile. Daughter? Daphne asked while cooing and scratching Randy under the jaw while Kura slept at her feet. Yes, I am a girl, I just bind my chest when I fight, and pretty much all the time so I don't have boys chasing me all the time. Haku explained with a smile making Daphne smile. I'm Daphne Greengrass, heir presumptive to the noble house of Greengrass, classmate and housemate of Naruto at school. Daphne said with a smile and extended her hand for a shake, and softly whispered into Haku's ear, and Naruto is mine, I already staked my claim over him back at school, and then smiled sweetly at Haku who laughed. I don't like Naruto like that, he has offered us a place in his house, he would adopt us into his clan. Haku said with a smile at the glare she received from Daphne. Naruto-kun give Daphne a tour of the village you have three days of break before we restart your training on the black leg style. Kakashi said and left with Zabuza to a training ground. Sasuke and Sakura just left while Anko took Haku back to their apartment so she could leave her bags and possessions. Come Daphne, I want you to meet my oldest friends and Draco's fiancé, Naruto said with a smile and grabbed Daphne's hand in his. After walking around, a bit Daphne saw the glares Naruto received from the people and remembered how he told her of the Kyubi and how they hated him for it. 
She was about to say something when a brown blur crashed into Naruto. Naruto, hide me, the blur shouted before hiding behind a startled Daphne. Shoji, what the hell man? Why did you crash into me? Naruto shouted while Daphne got a good look at the chubby kid that crashed into Naruto. He had swirls in his cheeks and a headband like the one Naruto now sported all the time. Ino is chasing me. The kid shouted again trying to become smaller to hide better behind Daphne. By the way I didn't know you had such a slender hip, like a girl. He said while he patted Daphne's hips. Her face suddenly went beet red and turned around to slap the kid, who was taken aback when he was slapped. There you are. Another blur shouted in bold over the kid surprising Daphne even more. Sorry about them Daph, that is Eno, Draco's fiancé, and Choji a friend of mine. Naruto said laughing a bit. Oi, Eno chan Let poor Choji get up and apologize. Naruto shouted to the dust cloud. When the cloud settled, Daphne could identify the blonde girl as the one Draco always talked about whenever he got a letter. Huh. What is he apologizing to you for? The blonde girl said while dragging an unconscious Choji by the scruff of his neck. He was trying to hide from you and ended up hiding behind Daphne, he grabbed her hips thinking it was me. Naruto explained with a laugh. Daphne? Ino and a now conscious Choji said at the same time. Naruto just laughed and grabbed Daphne's hand in his. Yeah, this is Daphne a friend from school, he said with a huge smile. Daphne just waved a bit embarrassed by the way Naruto was holding her hand, she liked the way their hands molded into each other. You are the famous Daphne this blonde baka won't stop talking about, the blonde said with a twinkle in her eyes. I'm Ino, a pleasure to meet you finally, we thought we would have to wait until we were 16 to meet you, Ino said and shook Daphne's hands and pulled her closely to whisper in her ear. If you ever hurt him I will hunt you down and break your mind, clear? Ino finished with a smile making Daphne nod a bit. And this here is Choji, he is one of our best friends, and well Shika is at his house playing shogi with his dad. Ino said while Choji was bowing low on the ground in front of Daphne. I'm so so sorry for grabbing you like that. Choji said with tears in his eyes while Ino stood on top of him with a victorious smile. It is okay Choji san no harm done. Daphne answered with all the poise that her heritage demanded. Ah please don't refer to us in such formal ways. Choji said with a smile. We are clan heirs, well Ino has decided to let her cousin take over instead of her. Besides a friend of Naruto is a friend of ours. Choji said while he pulled a bag of sour onion chips and opened it. Want some? He offered Daphne who smiled and accepted the chip. Oh where are we going now Naruto-kun? Daphne asked while the scenery changed from the market they met his closest friends to a more residential area. We are eating at Shikamaru's place today. Ino answered with a smile. Besides Naruto is teaching me a bit of herbology, I don't plan on being a stay-in housewife, I will open a greenhouse or an apothecary. She answered with a glint in her eyes. They arrived at a huge complex where several houses stood while deer grazed around or slept next to snoozing men. They walked to the biggest house and just walked around the back where a scarred man was playing shogi with a kid with his black hair in a pineapple tail. When they sat around the table she saw the laziness Naruto always talked about shine in both players' eyes. Why do they look so bored? Daphne asked Ino who was going through Naruto's textbook. They always have that look, but right now I think Shika has planned at least four moves ahead of his dad, which all moves will be countered by him. She explained with a laugh. Shika has the highest IQ of our class and generation, but is also the laziest one. I see, Naruto tried to teach us how to play Shogi and Go, Draco and Blaze picked it up almost instantly but, it took me a while to be able to play it. Daphne said with a nod. Why were you chasing Choji by the way? She asked remembering the incident. He grabbed a letter from Draco and read it out loud. Ino said simply making Daphne chuckle. By the way did your little sister like the kit we put together? She asked her blonde friend. You four put it together. Daphne asked surprised. She loves it, especially the smoke bombs, she grumbled bitterly. Haha the smoke bombs were Shika's idea, the paint ones are from Naruto while the paints are from Choji, I sent her the powders and all that. Ino answered laughing. The rest of the day was spent with Team 10 talking and knowing each other. Daphne finished getting ready and put the necklace Naruto gave her for her birthday, a beautiful ruby. She heard Astoria running around the house shouting that one of her shoes was missing and her mom shouting that she should look under her bed. Daphne just sighed when they arrived at the leaky cauldron and she saw all her friends there, she saw Tracy, Blaze and Hermione pouring over what looked like a familial tree book. Theo was jibbing Draco about some Quidditch move that Harry could do and not him while Harry just laughed about it. She looked around and could see a fat man and a horsey looking woman talking to the Malfoys, along with a family of four that most definitely didn't belong in England were talking with the Davis, and her parents. A few moments later Anko came bounding out of the fireplace, her trench coat via blowing around her like Professor Snape's did, and then Naruto along with the man she recognized as Zabuza came out, or fell out of it arguing about something. It was your fault. I did the correct signs. Naruto was shouting while the man lowered his bandages and let everybody see his shark-like teeth. No, you blonde baka. You did Saru instead of Ryu, and Tora instead of Umi. The man shouted while a hand rested on the hilt of his huge sword while Naruto had his hands curled on the hilts of his. Daphne slowly walked up to Naruto and slapped him on the back of the head making him whine. Daphne Chan, that hurt. He said and picked himself up while he hugged Daphne tightly. She smiled and hugged him back, until she felt her sister burrowing in between them and shouting thanks to Naruto for the prank kit. She sighed when his attention was diverted to her sister. 
After Naruto had finally said hello to everybody she saw the two new families walk up to them, she saw that the foreign family had a girl the same age as Astoria and an older girl of 15, while the fat man and the horsey looking woman were dragging a whining fat kid towards them. Daphne this are the Delacour, from France, D'Artagnan and Constance Delacour, and their daughters Fleur and Gabrielle, and the Dursleys Vernon, Petunia and their son Dudley, they are Harry's cousin. And Vernon here is trying to get a contract with our company, her father explained while Vernon smiled and tried to bow. Astoria giggled a bit at his gesture obviously uncomfortable with it but trying it nonetheless. Petunia was fussing over Harry's hair and saying he should either shave it or grow it out while Dudley, or the fat whale, complained about hunger. The group saw how Gabrielle seemed to look to be near Harry but not in a fangirlish way just like a girlfriend would see her boyfriend. I've got tickets to the finals where Naruto is fighting. Anko said and produced several tickets which she gave to the parents. It's the last exam that I am proctoring and his first and last exam for Naruto. Things haven't improved for us. Anko said and Narcissa hugged the younger woman. Well, let us go. Astoria and Gabrielle will go with Anne and those who need new robes, that means you Harry and you Naruto. Narcissa said getting nods from the group she pointed out. Cyrus you have the potion kits, Naruto if you need extra ingredients write them down so he can get them for you. She continued and saw Naruto hand Cyrus a list that went for five feet of parchment. Lucius and I won't join you unfortunately, we have an appointment today. Narcissa explained to Draco who nodded and moved towards his friends. Geneva would you mind taking the boys to quality quidditch shop, we need you to pick this order, and Harry, Draco, and Naruto might need new padding. Lucius said and handed the order to Geneva Knott who grinned at being able to go to her favorite shop. Maria you and Constance please get the books, and yes Hermione you may go there with them, you only need that according to your parents. Narcissa finished with a smile when she saw the group separate with Daphne going with Naruto, her sister, Harry and the youngest Delacour. Tracy with Blaze, Hermione and the oldest Delacour, while Theodore and Draco went with Geneva who smiled softly at them. We have to go to Gringotts, I have Ryo's to change, Naruto said pulling a scroll from his pocket. Damn it Gaki, stop stealing that scroll. That's my clothes scroll. Anko shouted and started choking Naruto who was blushing, while Zabuza laughed in the background and moved towards the group who were going to the bookstore, he had a list of books that Haku wanted on medicine. I thought I grabbed the Ryo one. Why do you keep your clothes and Ryo in the same pocket and in scrolls with the same color band? Naruto shouted not noticing the laughter his friends and the adults had while they saw him and Anko shout and fight. In case sticky fingers try to take our money you baka. Anko shouted getting Naruto to nod his head along. Clever little trick don't you think? Naruto asked Daphne who smiled and grabbed his hand and tugged him towards the entrance of Diagon Alley. Let's go. We will take care of these twelve children, Maria said with a grin. Wait. Anko made a headcount and turned to Maria, there are only eleven brats, she said with a confused look at the woman who simply pointed at her. You are a child, my dear so with you that makes twelve, ah uh, what was the word she used? Maria asked the parents that remained. Annoying kids, Geneva said with a smile, while Maria shook her head no. Childish brats. Constance said with a laugh along with her husband, again Maria denied it. Children with particular skills to annoy. Cyrus said while Anne laughed at the indignant faces the kids were making, Maria laughed harder but still shook her head. Gaki's Zabuza grumbled behind his bandages, when Maria snapped her fingers. Yes, that is the word. We, Maria pointed at herself, Cyrus, Geneva, Constance D'Artagnan, Anne and Zabuza. As adults must take care of, she pointed towards them and said, you twelve Gaki's, and turned around with a laughing Zabuza following her. Lucius and Narcissa smiled and left. They had an appointment in Azkaban. Narcissa was suspicious that Sirius had been wrongly accused, and after Lucius confirmed that Sirius never received a trial they planned on having him take some Veritaserum especially made by Severus, who had thought that having Naruto see him brew the truth serum was a good hobby. Amelia and Cornelius will meet us there, Lucius said when they appeared at the Azkaban docks. They were greeted by a pudgy looking man that had a bowler hat on his hands and a tall slender woman with red hair and a monocle in her left eye, and four people with their faces covered with the grey robes that identified them as unspeakables. The four just nodded and made their way towards the boat that was waiting for them, the trip to the island prison was made in silence, apart from the whimpering of the pudgy man. When they finally entered the prison, and made their way to where Sirius was being held, right next to a cell where Bellatrix Lestrange was. Wake up Siri. Narcissa whispered towards the darkened cell when movement caught their eye, and a man walked towards the door. Lucius decided to do something brash at that moment that made Narcissa, and the rest of the people gathered there, think he was a Gryffindor. He pulled his wand out and rolled his left sleeve up showing unblemished skin. I, Lucius Abraxas Malfoy swear on my magic that I was never, or not, never will be a Death Eater. So, mote be, he stated making everybody widen their eyes. When the magic accepted the promise Lucius casted a simple Loomis which showed that he was being truthful. Well, I never expected that. Sirius said with a dry chuckle. What are you doing here Malfoy? He sneered a bit. We came for answers on what happened on Halloween 1981. Amelia said and pulled a quill and parchment from her robes to take notes. Narcissa pulled the Veritaserum and handed it to one of the unspeakable who confirmed that it was the truth serum, and then got near the cell where Sirius literally yanked the vial and downed three drops quickly. And so, the truth came out that day, the interrogation was recorded by three unspeakables experts in the mind arts. Mr. Black, I have to ask, do you know where Pettigrew ran off to? Cornelius asked, 
he was planning to demote Barty Crouch for the unlawful imprisonment of Sirius Black. He is a rat animagus. We were all animagus so we could keep Remus company during the full moon. Sirius confessed after he had been given the antidote to the truth serum. You think you could track him down? Amelia asked, but sighed when Sirius shook his head no. Mr. Sirius Black for the information you have provided, along with the wrongful imprisonment I hereby grant you your freedom along with two million galleons for each of the twelve years you have spent here, although I should probably fine you for the illegal animagus part, I think you have already paid, only have it registered later. Cornelius said, he knew that listening to Lucius' advice could be a double-edged sword, he could come out like the hero or a fool, this time he was the hero. Amelia let Sirius out of the cell and Narcissa embraced her cousin who was crying and asking about Harry. Narcissa smiled and told him everything that Harry had done. Sissa. They heard Bellatrix shout when they were leaving, will you not question me, please? Bellatrix said with a broken sob. Narcissa looked towards Cornelius and Amelia who shrugged. It could give us information on safe houses or who else was a Death Eater. Amelia said to Cornelius who nodded and motioned for them to go back. Do we have more Verita serum? Cornelius asked Lucius who simply pulled another vial from his pocket. At his wife's raised eyebrow he elaborated. What? I thought he would break the first one so I had Severus fill a second one. He answered with a shrug making Narcissa sigh. Again, the unspeakable checked the vial and confirmed that it was the truth serum, and the second interrogation began, and proved useful. Bellatrix explained that the Dark Lord created anchors in case his body ever failed. She admitted that it had been her husband, brother-in-law and Bart Crouch Jr. who tortured the Longbottom, since she had been incapacitated by her fighting off a potion. She explained that she had an anchor of the Dark Lord in her vault at Gringotts, the cup of Helga Hufflepuff, getting gasps from those gathered around her cell. She also explained that Rodolphus, her husband, had fed her loyalty potions keyed to both him and the Dark Lord. She speaks the truth, she was fed loyalty potions by my brother when Bella showed no wish to do as he ordered. Rabiston Lestrange whispered getting the attention of Amelia who turned towards him and listened, she knew Rabiston had no need to lie to her, since Bella had already told them everything. So he was ordered by the Dark Lord to feed her potions specially brewed by him to make them stronger. My foolish brother did, that is how Bella became so bloodthirsty. Rabiston confessed in a hollowed voice. Amelia and Cornelius debated on letting Bellatrix out, until Lucius spoke up. It could be dangerous to let her out for her in the magical world. Lucius mused quietly to his wife who simply nodded. Didn't the Granger said they knew a Medi wizard that specialized in the mind? Narcissa asked getting the attention of Cornelius. Are you saying that a muggle healer works specifically on the mind? Cornelius asked surprised at the muggle's advancement. You could have Bellatrix go to see if she can be cured? Amelia asked to the Malfoys. She would have to stay with us, to monitor her, and make sure she goes to all her appointments. Lucius started pacing while Sirius and Narcissus' gaze was fixed on him. And maybe it won't be necessary, the simple fact of being away from the Dementors and on a relaxing, loving environment would help, along with three good meals every day, along with Sirius, both need the food to get back their strength and to practice their magic. Lucius said while looking towards his wife for counseling. Narcissa simply smiled and nodded her head at the idea. Amelia nodded and let Bellatrix out of her cell, and was immediately engulfed in a hug from both Sirius and Narcissa, the three sank to their knees crying and apologizing repeatedly. They walked away from the prison, and apparited away to Malfoy Manor where they would stay, much to Sirius' dismay. Cornelius left for his office where he wrote in the file of both Sirius and Bellatrix what happened today along with an official transcript of both interrogations, now he just needed to think about Barty Crouch Sr. He was sure to get hell from Dumbledore for giving Sirius and Bellatrix have a trial without telling him but he didn't care. Amelia assured him she would be the one to take the blame for the interrogations and subsequent trial, and since the minister decided to pardon both Sirius and Bellatrix, Dumbledore couldn't do anything to force them back to Azkaban without a trial. Harry sat down tired, he had never experienced what it was to buy clothes with a woman, his legs were sore from just standing while Daphne, Gabrielle, Astoria, and Anne played dress up with him and Naruto who seemed to not even be bothered by it. He sat pondering about the little French girl, whenever she would talk to him she would stare straight into his eyes, there was something that drew him towards the small blonde, but he couldn't put his finger on it, so he simply forgot about it. How do you do it? Harry asked Naruto who was standing next to him practicing his hand speed. Do what? Naruto asked not breaking his focus, not be sore after all this time standing up, and being used as a dress up doll by them. Harry asked with a chuckle at his friend's attitude. A lot of practice mate, Eno, my twin, is crazy about shopping and she drags me, Choji, and Shika, on her shopping sprees so we learned how to endure being used as pack mules, and dress up dolls, and all my training, I could wait for a target for about a day with no sleep. Naruto said getting a wide eye reaction from Harry who just nodded and kept on massaging his thighs. Even if the Dursley had gotten better and gave him little chores around the house, Dudley and his gang would still try to beat him up, even if he could now fight back he would get outnumbered. Let us go to the bookstore. Anne said with a smile at the two boys, while letting go of the levitation charm she had on the bags. And Naruto just pulled a ceiling scroll and unfurled it. A few seconds later Astoria was going over a ceiling while Naruto explained to Harry, and Gabrielle that ceiling was an advanced form of runes that his clan had developed. Daphne just smiled at the way Naruto's eyes would glow when he either spoke of his seals, Quidditch, or a jutsu he learned, had she looked at him that moment she would have seen that his eyes shined when he just stared at her. Sue, what can you tell me about Harry Potter? 
Fleur asked the three younger kids, Tracy and Blaze just smiled a bit while Hermione looked confused. Got a crush on our friend? Blaze said with a smirk that was mimicked by Tracy. Fleur glared playfully at the witty Italian. Non, my sister and him are set to be married when she turns 15 by way of a marriage contract, she dropped the bomb on them without care. Hermione looked trouble at the thought of a marriage contract while Tracy was surprised that Lily Potter had agreed to said contract. That explains the looks she gave Harry in her trying to get close but not invading his space behavior. Blaze said while extending his hand towards Hermione who glared and gave him a sack of money. Damn Naruto, that swordsman has trained him even harder. He gripped while Tracy patted his back. At the incredulous look Fleur was giving the pair Hermione decided to explain, Blaze here is the official gambling spot for the Slytherin house. She said while showing the sack of gold she had, and apparently, I am his lovely assistant who keeps the money because I don't wager. Our friends had a bet going about the why you and your family was here, Naruto being the observant guy he has said that it most likely had to do with a marriage contract either you and him or your little sister. Hermione said getting a laugh from Fleur. Draco and Theo said that it was just because she was going to attend this year with us. She said showing the book Blaze had given her so they could keep track of the bets. Daphne and Tracy put money on her wanting to meet the boy who lived and Blaze was sure it was you he was getting married to. Hermione finished explaining while giving the books to Blaze to hold while Tracy came running towards them. We have to get out of here, she shouted nervously. Hermione and Fleur were surprised at her outburst while Blaze looked questioningly at her. Gilderoy Lockhart is here signing his new book, at that Blaze ran with all the extra books that he had been told to buy for his friends, unfortunately Naruto and Hermione had picked the heaviest books so he almost fell arriving at the counter. Why? I have read his books, and we also have to get a copy of all his books for Dada, and he is handsome and an adventurer, Hermione said and made her way to where she could see Lockhart setting up. Fleur just rolled her eyes and followed her since she was the oldest in the group. Blaze and Tracy managed to get out of the shop before all the women and girls barged in to get a look at the guy, when they saw the rest of their group walking towards them, they could see both Astoria and the little Delacour waving their new wanda around, Astoria kept on pestering Daphne and Naruto to teach her some spells while Gabrielle and Harry talked about something. Uh Blaze, where is my own, and the French flower? Daphne asked when Astoria tried to get into Naruto's hip pouch. We were too late, too slow. Blaze whispered lowly while Tracy patted his back while his mother laughed. W what? Daphne asked while Draco and Theo stopped horsing around with Naruto showing him the package they had from QQS. They are trapped in there, no salvation, Hermione became a LFG. Blaze wailed for his friend and the one that helped him with the bets. LFG were the first words that Gabrielle Delacour spoke to the whole group that her fiancé was friends with. When seven heads turned in her direction she blushed a bit, until Harry started chuckling. LFG is the Lockhart fangirls, they range from 14 to 40 year old women and housewives, Naruto said while they walked inside flourish and blocks, he immediately went to the potions section after seeing that Blaze did got his book. Gabrielle followed him along with Astoria and Daphne. I for one think that they are a bit stupid, he would have said more had it not been for a red haired boy shouting at him. My mum is not stupid you jerk. The red haired kid now identified as Ron Weasley said with a glare. I know, to be able to raise all of your siblings is amazing. Naruto answered simply, from what Gred and Forge have told me your eldest. Brother is a curse breaker for Gringotts, the second eldest a dragon handler, Percy is prefect and has gotten several owls, no explanation for your brother's talent in potions and transfiguration, you are quite the chess master. Naruto said getting a surprised look from Ron while the young redhead girl looked away when Naruto's eyes turned in her direction. I unfortunately don't know about your younger sister but she must have a secret talent. Come on Astoria we have to get you your own potions log if you were to be my apprentice. Naruto said and started handing Astoria several books. Daphne sighed when she saw the looks the youngest Weasley sent Naruto but let it slide since Gabrielle had dragged her after Naruto for more information. A few minutes later, one commotion where Hagrid had to step in to stop Lord Parkinson and Arthur Weasley from going at it. I hope all those raids paid you extra Weasley, your family certainly needs it, Lord Parkinson sneered at the Weasley patriarch and turned around when he spotted Lucius after returning the books he took from Guinea's cauldron. Naruto dragged his friends out of the bookstore when he heard this, thankfully no more incidents happened for the rest of the trip. The Slytherin students, the lone Ravenclaw, and the lone Gryffindor sat in a table at Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor. So Naruto tell us about the wave mission, Harry said turning to see the blonde eat his ice cream. The rest of Naruto's friends smiled and asked him the same. Naruto simply sighed and sat straight in his chair. Well, after begging the old man for a better mission and getting to know the drunkard Tizuna we left the village. Nothing interesting happened for the first part of the trip until we came in contact with the Demon Brothers of Mist. Naruto started with the tale. After Kakashi had been taken out by the Demon Brothers, Naruto jumped into action along with Sasuke, with Naruto acting as a distraction. Sasuke threw a combination of shuriken and kanai to pin the chain Gozu and Maizu were connected to when they tried to wrap it around Naruto. Seeing this Gozu broke off his part of the chain and sprinted towards Sakura and Tazuna who were shaking in the spot. Gozu smirked when he was about to kill the little girl and the old man when his world went black suddenly, with Kakashi standing in front of him with his arm extended in a lariat position. You okay Sakura? Tazuna. The one-eyed sensei asked his student in charge who simply nodded in fear. With his infamous eye smile, Kakashi looked towards his to other students who were dealing with Maizu as best as they could, 
He was surprised when Naruto made Sasuke spin out of the way of the claw while taking the hit. Sasuke went with the movement and slammed the ring of his kanai into the temple of the surprised missing nin. Kakashi smiled at the teamwork the last two heirs of their clans. That smile shattered when Sasuke rounded on the blonde Jinchuriki and shouted. I had him you dope. I was about to take him down when you spun me around. Sasuke shouted. Naruto simply scoffed and turned to his wound. He could feel poison going through his veins, he was not afraid because of his bond with Randy who rose out of his skin and slithered menacingly towards the unconscious nin. Are you going to bleed the wound Naruto? Kakashi asked to his student. Nah there is no need, thanks to Randy's poison running through my veins, along with Kurama only a basilisk venom could kill me. Thankfully these guys can't get their hands on something so potent such as basilisk venom around this parts. Naruto said and walked towards Maizu who had woken up to see a huge snake sitting on top of him. Make no sudden moves, Randy might be young but his is faster and his venom even strong than normal vipers. Naruto said and hissed to Randy to let the man move towards a tree. Kakashi knew of the things Anko taught Naruto when he was a kid and now that they only had the school vacations to work with. Thankfully for his genin team and the client Naruto simply had Randy hovering over his shoulder menacingly while probably using the QB's red eyes to scare the info out of them. He turned around and questioned the old man who spilled his guts to the shinobi and asking for help and forgiveness. Sakura looked like she wanted to turn back to Konoha, while Sasuke was eager to continue knowing that he would fight a stronger opponent, so Kakashi turned to his last students. What do you think we should do Naruto? He asked the blonde who sighed and cursed. We should go forwards and help them, they need us, damn now I'm sounding like a bloody Gryffindor, what would Daphne Chan think of this? Naruto said with a sigh making Kakashi nod and turn towards Tazuna who was on his knees thanking them profusely. They kept moving forwards with Sasuke and Sakura on either side of Tazuna while Naruto and Kakashi in front and back respectively. They managed to arrive at the frontier where the bridge is supposed to end where a small boat was waiting for them. Good you are here Tazuna, we better make haste before any of the patrol boats start making their rounds. The man said while Tazuna nodded and climbed in followed by Sakura, then Sasuke, Naruto and Kakashi climbed in last with the rower. After two hours of slowly travers the water separating the mainland and the little island nation through the fog they could see the almost finished bridge where Sakura exclaimed in surprise at the sheer size of it. Sasuke took the lead with Sakura while Naruto fingered a kanai and his wand to feel armed, he never noticed that Kakashi kept on looking around wary of any movement and sound. The blonde and the silver-haired man tensed when they felt something in the underbush, Naruto reacted without thinking and threw his kanai, startling the group, ignoring the shouts from the pink head girl or the nod from his sensei. He slowly walked towards the tree his knife was embedded and peered to see a frightened snow white bunny. Just a snow hare. Naruto said while holding the small creature to his chest, he narrowed his eyes and nodded to his sensei who did the same. Naruto moved to get back in formation until his eyes widened when his sensei yelled to them to get down, while tackling Tazuna to the ground, he made the same with Sakura who was standing in the direct path of the huge sword. Naruto felt the sword fly by the spot Sakura was standing and he looked up to see the sword embedded in the tree with a huge man standing on its handle glaring at the Konoha shinobis. So Shiringa no Kakashi, is the one protecting the old bridge builder, and he has a team of brats, the man said with mirth in his voice. Zabuza Momochi, the demon of the bloody mist, should have known it was you when we encountered the demon brothers. Kakashi answered while getting up from the ground. Get in the manji formation, protect Tazuna at all cost, Naruto lead them away if you see me in trouble, top priority is getting Tazuna to safety, he said while pulling his headband of his eye and glaring at Zabuza who simply chuckled and leapt to the lake nearby, doing a hand sign creating mist to appear. Let us fight Kirigakir no Jutsu, the end.